Maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman. Yun lang po. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Secretary Ed Anya. Yes, uh, Senator Risa Antiveros, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a very brief comment. Speaking as a mother, and speaking as a longtime peace advocate as well since the past three decades, but mostly speaking as a mother, tama po ba talaga, Mr. Chairman, na magpakita tayo ng ganyang mga video tungkol sa mga bata, mga anak ng mga kapwa magulang natin who are now dead and cannot speak for themselves? May I just make that of record, Mr. Chairman, at salamat po. Yes, uh, Senator Antiveros, thank you. This part of the discussion, this part of the red tagging uh, issue raised uh, against the armed forces of the Philippines, and they're here to present their side uh, of the issue. So with that, uh, Director General Monteagudo, you're not recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Senate President, uh, Senator Vicente Salta III, the Chairman, uh, Senator Pantilo Luxon, sir. The members of the Senate Committee on National Defense, Peace, Unification, Reconciliation. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Chairman, would I be allowed to remove for the presentation? Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. In the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32, the Lord Jesus said, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Uh, slides, please. As the Director General of the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency and the Head of the Situational Awareness and Knowledge Management Cluster of the National Task Force to End the Local Communist Armed Conflict, I am here, Mr. Chairman, to present the truth and nothing but the validated truth about the 52-year plague that is the CPP, NPA, and DF. How it has infiltrated the bureaucracy and the society and how it threatens the hope and future of our country by recruiting, radicalizing, and exploiting the children and the youth. We thank the chairman for calling for this public hearing and for inviting us so that we can finally reveal the truth to the people. For several months now, an NPF LCAC has been accused of red tagging by no less than party list representatives of Bayan Luna, Congressman Carlos Sagani Sarate, Act Teachers Party List Congresswoman Franz Castro, Gabriela Party List Congresswoman Arlene Rosas, and Kapataan Party List Congresswoman Sara Jane Ilago. They claim that the NPF LCA, chaired by no less than the President of the Republic, has been fomenting lies and accusing the NPF of red tagging and purveyor of false information. They accused the task force that all the information revealing their connection to the CPP and the FNPA or the communist terrorist group is just a figment of, their imag of our imagination. They even tried to silence us by bullying us, threatening, threatening us with cases, and even to the extent of blocking our budget. Mr. Chairman, the issue is red tagging. But what is red tagging? In this dissenting opinion, in one case, Supreme Court Associate Justice Marvi Cleonen cited a 2011 journal article that defined red tagging or red baiting as the act of labeling, branding, naming, and accusing individuals and or organizations of being left-leaning, subversives, communists, or terrorists, used as a strategy by, the, by state agents, particularly law enforcement agencies and the military, against those perceived to be threats or enemies of the state. Note, however, that this is not a legal and binding definition, nor is it considered a crime. 
We are aware that the CTG proxies want to make this act as a crime so that they can continue to repress any dissent or opposition to their plot of overthrowing our government through violent means and establishing a godless communist system. Out the, out, at the outset, therefore, we at the NTF LCA admit that we are exposing individuals and organizations which we have validated as CPP, NDF, NPA members, and front organizations. We therefore plead guilty, not to red tagging, but to truth tagging. We have to tell the people who the CPP, NDF, NPA members, or front organizations really are, not because we want to curtail their rights, but more importantly, to protect the rights of the general public, the Filipino children and their families, the indigenous people and their communities from the veiled lies, deception, and exploitation by the CTGs. All the information we have revealed about the CPP, NDF, NPA, and their connection with the groups such as the Makabayan Bloc are standing on solid ground. They underwent a rigorous process of evaluation and have been vetted through the revelation of surrendered, arrested, and captured communist terrorist group personalities, as well as documents and videos. Also used as references are published books by former members of the CPP, NPA, NDF, such as the book Debunked, written by Roberto Tiglao, Rigoberto Tiglao, and The Wars Within, based on the life of alias Eric Almendras. At the outset, it is imperative that we all understand that the communist terrorist organization in the Philippines is a single entity, which over the years has successfully convinced everyone that it is three distinct organizations the CPP, NPA, and the NDF. The truth is, as far as their own organizational structure will show, it is just one single organization. The CPP with two main branches, its army, which is the NPA, and its united front, the NDF. In the interest of trying to forge peace with the CPP, even the Philippine government has accepted the CPP scheme that the NDF is separate and distinct from the CPP. My presentation and the presentation of the other resource persons of the NTF will show, however, that the NDF is an integral part of the CPP, and top NDF members are CPP members. In this connection, please allow us to show a video of CPP, CPP Chairman Jose Maria Season himself, taken in 1987 or 30 years ago, when he boastfully identified the front organizations like Bagong Alianza ng Makabayan or Bayan, the Kilusang Magbubukid ng Pilipinas or KMP, the General Assembly of Finding Women for Reform, Integrity, Equality, Leadership, and Action, Gabriela, the League of Filipino Students and Alliance of Concerned Teachers, and several others as integral part of their network in advancing the interest of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Please watch this video. out, please. Sound uh, map.
Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Senate President. Maybe we have this restarted because uh, we're missing a few minutes already of the presentation. There's something wrong with your video, video file. Uh, yes, again, if you have uh, another source. Uh, this is actually very important video, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to really show this. This is the premise of our... Yeah, while waiting for the, uh, for the video, no? Gusto ko lang ipagbigay alam kay Senator Isang Teveros na naintindihan ng, uh, ng chair yung pinaghuhugutan niya kanina, yung, yung kanyang pag-alala bilang isang ina. Pero sa, sa kabilang dako, mainam na rin napapaalalahanan yung mga magulang, lalo na mga ina, na tingnan nilang ang kapakanan ng kanilang mga anak. Na wag nilang pabayaan na ma-expose sa kung totoo man yung mga video na pinakita, no? ng, uh, ng uh, defense sector. It's just unfortunate and it's sad that the militant groups are not present here this morning so they can easily or uh, rebut uh, immediately what uh, is being presented by the security sector. Yun lang yung uh, nakakalungkot dito kasi wala sila rito except of course the one uh, representing them uh, attorney uh, Sarsa no? na nagre-represent sa Makabayan DAP. So, ano, ready na ba yung video niya? Yes, sir. I will uh, play the, the sound here, sir. Yeah. My microphone. Okay. Uh, simultaneously with Please the video, proceed. sir. Please uh, play the video. Please play the video. Ako nang bahala sa sound. Start. Sa umpisa. Okay, please. Three processes by which the Philippine Revolution is to be advanced. These include the building of the Communist Party of the Philippines, the building of uh, the new People's Army, and the building of uh, the National Democratic Front. The Communist Party of the Philippines was established on December 6, 1968 as the Marxist-Leninist vanguard party of the working class. This party is supposed to be the standard bearer of the working class, which is that class that is the most progressive, productive, and political force in the Philippines. It is true that a minority class, especially only the party which represents it, cannot win the, the Philippine Revolution all by itself. At any rate, even while there are the forces of armed revolution, there are the legal democratic forces in the Philippines. The biggest of these is Bagong Aliansang Makabayan, or Bayan in short. It has a membership of more than 2 million members in more than 1,000 member organizations. Its uh, biggest Component organizations are Kilusang Mayo Uno, which is the labor center, the Pambansang Kilusang Magbubukid, which is the, or the Kilusang Magbubukid ng Pilipinas, or KMP, Gabriela 
the Women's Alliance, League of Filipino Students, Alliance of Concerned Teachers, Canet, Cadena, and so on. As I have earlier pointed out, Partido ng Bayan, Uh, may I continue, Mr. Chairman? Please, please continue. You would also like to submit documents that show that the European Union, the United States, United Kingdom, and Canada all declared the CPPNPA and CISM as terrorists. A regional trial court has also issued a warrant of arrest for CISM for its involvement in the Inupakan Leyte massacre where hundreds of the CTG members were murdered to purge their ranks of suspected informers. Since 1987, the Philippine government has been engaged in several peace talks with the CTG, hoping that this will be the shortcut to bringing peace to our land. But while the Philippine government was hoping to reach a final agreement, the CPP saw this as an opportunity to undermine the government. They made demands that were short of the Philippine government surrendering to the CPP. All the while, the military, police, and security sector's hands were tied behind their backs, lest they be accused as spoilers of peace. The CPP and the FNPA even have its established peace talks advocates, religious groups, academe, and politicians from the legislative branch to pressure the government to engage in peace talks. Despite the absence of any progress, the different administrations engage in, engage in peace talks in the hope that this will be the solution to the decades-long problem of communist insurgency. But as it has always turned out, the CPP NPA does not want peace. It wants to seize power. Mr. Chairman, allow us to prove this through the statement of Luis Salandoni, a disillusioned former Catholic priest turned atheist, who was the chairman of the NDF negotiating panel and a CPP Central Committee member based in Europe. In this video, Alandoni explicitly stated that their real intention to the peace talks is to support their so-called revolutionary struggle, a euphemism for violently overthrowing the government. To them, peace talks is just one of the means to an end. Please watch this video. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, Paki ulit. Kaya sa sabay ko lang dito. Wala uling sound. Another form of legal struggle, which is possible to be used by the revolutionary forces in order to advance the revolutionary armed struggle and the revolutionary mass movement. This other form of legal struggle, the peace negotiation, does not replace the revolutionary armed struggle, nor the revolutionary mass movement. In fact, it should advance, it should support this uh, revolutionary armed struggle as the main form of struggle, and the revolutionary mass movement, which is a more important struggle than the peace negotiation. But what has this got to do with the issue on red tagging? We show the video because this strategy clearly demonstrates the duplicitous nature of the CTG, employing what they call as dual tactics. They engage in peace talks so that they will earn the support of civil society personalities and organizations who are peace advocates. They use rogue priests to represent the CPP NPA in the NDF so that they will appear righteous, maybe even holy, which works for the Filipino public who are generally religious. Ito po ang tunay na anyo ng CPP NPA NDF. Sa madaling salita, sila ay doble cara, a two-faced monster. One face looks like an angel, righteous and morally upright, while the other face is a deceiver.
Middle East. The dream is to have a permanent and lasting peace in our land. But typical of the CPP and the FNPA dual tactics, they demanded power sharing from the president, who said that this is not for him to give. They then launched simultaneous attacks all over the country while the government security forces were in stand down. The CTG attacks forced the president to terminate the talks and in December 2017 de declared them as terrorists. Meantime, in order to attain an inclusive and sustainable peace and adopt a national peace framework, the president in 2018 signed Executive Order 70, creating the National Task Force to End the Local Communist Armed Conflict or NTF LCAP with himself as, at the helm. The NTF LCAP is guided by the principle of good governance that adopts a whole of government and a whole of nation approach. As such, the situational awareness and knowledge management cluster headed by the NICA not only provides information to the NTF leadership and regular members, but also to the different agencies of government and various sectors of our society so that they will be made aware and enlist their support to end the communist terrorist scourge. Dumating na ang oras upang wakasan ang pandolokon at karasan ng CPP and the FNPA. Lahat po tayo mga Pilipino ay kasali sa adikain ito. It is for this reason that the NTF needs to inform our people, everyone, and educate them about this 52-year-old problem. Because the only way we can resolve the CTG problem is to harness the support of the people. It may sound cliché, but in our fight against the CTG, the battle is not anywhere else but in the hearts and minds of our people. Whoever wins the people wins the war. That is the only way we can end the local communist armed conflict. But how can we win the minds of our people if we do not inform them of the truth? If we do not speak out, who will deliver the message of truth? During the State of the Nation address in 2018, the president, in exasperation, said, I have met the enemy face to face, and sadly, the enemy is us. We are our worst enemy. Oftentimes, our apathy and indifference prevents us from solving our problems. But many of our people are apathetic to the CPG problem because they are unaware of what the problem is and who the enemies are. Indeed, how can parents protect their children from CTG recruitment if they do not know that an ACT member is teaching and radicalizing their children inside their classrooms? If they do not know that the books being used in schools have portions that teach their children to hate everything about their government? How can our innocent children and the youth discern what CPP front organizations they need to stay away from if we do not warn them and identify the CPP and the FNPA front organizations. Who will protect our children? Honorable members of this committee, we wish to inform you that based on the five-year program of the CPP, a copy of which we are submitting, the Central Committee has directed the lower organs to recruit children less than 15 years old. So now we have seen an increased number of child combatants from the NPA, whom the NPA started to train as early as eight and 10 years old. Former indigenous people, child warrior, Dato Awing and by, 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 by Magdal, Magdalena, both from Mintanao, can attest to this child warrior program of the NPA. A comics about their story printed with the help of NGOs is also submitted to this committee. To note, the CTG brought indigenous people or so-called Lumads housed at the UCCP Haran Center in Davao City to Metro Manila through a Lakbayan to participate in CTG-led anti-ASEAN protests in 2017. Since some, some, some of them were minors, they were housed at UP Diliman in Quezon City where they stayed for several months, even after the culmination of the ASEAN summit and related summits in November of that year. How can we then empower our people if they do not know the truth? 
plus the need to inform them the truth about the extent of the problem. Because uninformed people is an empowered people. The great general and strategist Song Chu said, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. Allow us therefore, Mr. Chairman, to explain how extensive our problem in the CTG is, who this enemy really is, and how they have mastered the art of deception for 52 years. The three powerful arms of the revolution. The CTG adopted so-called three power full arms of the communist terrorist revolution in this framework. The CTG uses three weapons. The party, personified by the CPP, provides a direction and political leadership, and that means the general line and direction of the group. The army, represented by the NPA, serves as the military arm of the communist movement, generally assists the party in creating atmosphere of instability by waging the protracted people's war to overthrow the government through violent means. The United Front, represented by the NDF, the umbrella organization consisted of several above ground and underground mass organizations that represent various sectors such as the peasants, workers, women, students, youth, religious, indigenous people, government employees, health workers, teachers, artists, journalists, and other professionals. How do they indoctrinate and deceive the different sectors of society? They do this through a process called arouse, organize, and mobilize. It starts with a statement, Mayaman ng Pilipinas, pero nakihirap ang sambayan ng Pilipino. They then cite poverty as the main reason why there is insurgency. This narrative is so easy to sell because it is close to the heart of the people and the refused have no way of refuting this assumption or statement. How can an ordinary farmer or a child know that there are many other countries which have higher poverty index in the film than the Philippines, but have no communist insurgency. That even the US and China and Japan have poverty incidents. How can an ordinary fisherman argue with a UP student cater and say communism is obsolete? The United Front efforts of the CTG is generally the root cause of this red tagging issue as it is in these United Front efforts that they put to full force, full use, their dual tactics. The United Front work is being orchestrated by the CPP's National United Front Commission. It includes the mobilization of the various CTG-affiliated left-leaning organizations and establishments of alliances with other anti-government groups and unsuspecting advocacy groups. Based on their own manuals and publications, the principal function of the NUFC is to raise the ideological consciousness of the target groups, forge a broad united front against the government, and pave the way for the so-called People's Democratic Revolution. The NUFC operates at the regional and provincial committee levels through the regional united or urban front committees and provincial united urban front committees. The importance of the United Front building was highlighted in the new CPP constitution published by the party in June of 2018. A new article, Article 10, was dedicated solely to the role of the party in the United Front. According to the updated CPP constitution, the CPP serves as the advanced detachment of the National Democratic Revolution. To quote, the comprehensive leader and center of the Philippine Revolution in both national democratic and socialist stages. It leads the armed struggle, the United Front, mass movement, the local organs of political power, and eventually the People's Democratic Republic of the Philippines. It is the United Front building of the CTG that fully applies its dual tactics. Regular members of the party assuming legitimate personalities as advocates of human rights or women's rights. However, as regular members, they only use their legal advocacy as cover to continue to plot and undermine the government. And that is because their ultimate objective is to violently overthrow the government. The echelon of alliances. The National United Front is continuously being built by the CPG through the so-called echelon of alliances. The echelon of alliances has four levels, the basic alliance, the progressive alliance, the patriotic alliance, and the broad united front. 
the first level of alliance, the basic alliance of the masses of workers, of laborers, of peasants, or farmers, provides leadership and manpower to the CPP, where workers of so called proletariats are leading force. But the peasantry is the backbone of the revolution. The second level alliance, the progressive alliance of the toiling masses and the urban middle class forms the bulk of the United Front. It is also responsible for shaping the public opinion to propaganda. This alliance is where some of the complaints on red tagging emanate from. The third level alliance, the patriotic alliance of the progressive forces and the national bourgeoisie is used to weaken the political system. This is where the Maccabayan bloc and the CPP proxies actively undermine the government with the use of their clout and power. Lastly, the fourth alliance, the broad united front and the patriotic forces and sections of the reactionary classes is an alliance aligned against the core reactionaries of the government. The alliance is only temporary and can be dissolved once the CPP gains the upper hand in the revolution. This is where the CPP will force alliances with groups such as opposition political parties to generate the number and support. The idea of the creation of a broad united front led the CPG to create Bayan, or Bagong Alyansang Makabayan. Bayan serves as the umbrella organization of all CTG linked organizations representing various sectors of society, workers, peasants. The CPP's revolutionary dual tactics. According to alias Ka Eric Almendras, who is here present, as stated in the book, The Wars Within, the CPP tries to win the hearts and minds of the people. They are also work in the social political sphere where the above ground organization as part of the so-called white or urban area operations, while continuing underground subversive activities in red or rural areas. Alias Ka Eric added, in the book that the CPP has long operated in the legal spectrum by being part of a progressive party list in Congress, such as those of the Maccabayan bloc or other progressive sector organizations. But while they may be working with the bureaucratic institutions of the government, they are never detached from the entire communist movement. Instead, they are part of a parcel of a communist movement which advocates the primacy of armed struggle and the violent overthrow of the duly constituted government. Though they are now seen as part of the legal and above ground organizations, they could not and never will openly denounce the violent and armed struggle embraced by the CPP. This is why, despite calls for the Maccabayan bloc to denounce the CPP and the atrocities, they never once ceded the call. The CTG puts emphasis on infiltration and united front building in pursuing the objectives of overthrowing the government. For the CPP, the infiltration of various sectors, sectorial groups along with united front efforts and the conduct of vegetation propaganda in the urban centers complement the CPG's trust in the countryside. For the CPP, NPA, NBF, the government sector is an invaluable part of their overall objective because just like the youth the public sector is a lucrative source of recruits to support its united front activities. As Sison stated during the you know, weekly interview on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of Courage, unquote, I quote, Mahalaga ang papel na ginagampanan at dapat gampanan na makawani ng pamahalaan. Sila ang nag-uugnay sa mga mamamayan upang tutulan ang mga patakaran official at kilos ng gobyerno. The CTG front organization that undertake infiltration of the government include the Confederation for Unity, Recognition, and Advancement of Government Employees or Courage, the Alliance of Concerned Teachers or ACT, the Alliance of Health Workers or AHW. These groups form part of Bayan, which as you have seen in the video, is the CPP, NPA, NDF's biggest umbrella organization. The infiltration of the government is undertaken by the Makabayang Kawaning Filipino, an underground organization under the National Government Employees Bureau of the CPP, National United Front Commission. 
Courage claims to have a total of 200 unions, associations, federations, and regional formations affiliated with a mass base of around 300,000 workers from the national government agencies, local government units, state colleges, universities, and government owned and controlled corporations. The youth and student sector, our youth and our children are under siege. Season pointed out the importance of recruiting the youth in his book, The Philippine Society and Revolution. It is the first book that a new recruit is made to read or is indoctrinated on. To quote, Jomo Season said, the majority of party cadres and regular NPA members are, as a matter of course, from the youth. The mobilization of the youth ensures the continuous flow of successors in the revolutionary movement. Season emphasized that if the youth will not be organized, the CPP and its goals will slowly diminish as its leaders grow old. In the book, Wars Within, Karek explained why the CPP targets the youth for recruitment. The CPP targets the recruitment of the youth because they have more capacity for ideological formation and organizing. It takes very hard for the CPP to develop caters from peasants and workers because it will take five to 10 years. But for the youth, it would only take two to three years to develop a cater. Shown in this screen is the typical CPP youth recruitment process. Among the groups that undertake recruitment of the youth and students are the League of Filipino Students, Anakbayan, the Kapataan Party List, the College Editors Guild of the Philippines, the Student Christian Movement of the Philippines, and the National Union of Students of the Philippines. These groups operate under the CPP underground organization called Kabataang Makabayan. According to Ka Eric, the KM is a backbone on underground movement in the youth sector. It is where the armed struggle starts to be introduced to the youth recruits. A seized CPP document shows the objective of the KM, most salient of which is its role in strengthening of the NDF and the NPA, which is stated in Filipino to quote. Lumahok sa armadong pakikibaka at sumabi sa bagong hukbong bayan at tumulong sa pagpapalakas ng National Democratic Front. Pero paano nga ba nila nirecruit ang mga kabataan? Sa una, yung mga front organizations katulad ng LFS, kabataan, CGP ay nakikipagkaibigan at sasali sa study or social groups. Ito ang una pang kung saan sila ay nag i na mga pwede nilang ma-recruit. Prospective recruits are later invited to symposia, fora, and lectures, as well as educational discussions and simple teachings. During discussion, the CPP and PA recruits will insert hints of socialism and communism. The indoctrination of the communist ideology technically begins here. In the course of their engagement with these prospective recruits, tuturuan sila na maging critical sa mga nangyayari sa ating lipunan. Ang unang kataga ay tatanong sa kanilang isip, mayaman ang Pilipinas pero naghihirap ang sambayan ng Pilipinas. Napakaloob ito doon sa tinatawag na General Mass Course, isa sa unang hakbang na pagbe-brainwash nila sa mga kabataan. Once the CPP and the FNPA recruiters get the sympathy and support of their targets for recruitment, the victims are invited to join in more discussions and participate in anti-government demonstrations until they are exposed to other CPP and PA front organizations such as Buy and Courage Act and many others. The CTG recruiters also conduct courses designed by their academy, underground organization called Pambansang Demokratikong Paralan, which is embedded in schools or PADEPA. Once the student becomes a hardcore member of the organization, the recruit will undertake revolutionary courses. The following are some of the manuals and courses they have produced to indoctrinate and brainwash the recruit. Especial na kursong maso, eskong, araling aktivista, arak, na ikling kurso sa lipuna at revolusyon Pilipino, MKLRP. After undergoing these basic courses, the students are asked if they are willing to make a pledge of allegiance. This could be to the LFS, KM, or just CEGP. But by doing so, they move closer and closer to pledging allegiance to the CPP. If you look at their manuals, they do not mention revolution, but they plant ideology and seeds of hatred, to hate everything about the government, 
being a puppet of U.S. imperialism, about society, that we are a semi-feudal system, and about you who are in Congress. They claim that being owners of vast properties, people in Congress will perpetuate feudalism. And they are bureaucratic capitalists who will only pass laws that benefit their business interests. Even worse, they indoctrinate these children to hate their families, brainwashing them to question the authorities of their parents over them, making them believe they are not of their parents, but they are child of the revolution, which is a romanticized term for a communist terrorist. These are taught in the courses they teach children and women, courses so expertly designed that after I personally read one 35 years ago, I almost got converted myself. Sabi ng CPP and the FNPA, Activismo lang daw ito, freedom of expression. Subalit, bakit pagkatapos nilang magig miyembro ng grupo ito, many of them turn out as NPA members. The national spokesperson of LFS, Kara Taga Tagawa, has admitted and even proud, proud that many of their members have become NPA. Please watch this video. If these children are mere activists exercising their rights and freedom of expression, why do many of them turn out to be NPA members who were either arrested or killed during encounters with military elements, such as Josephine Ann Lapira, Gabriela, youth member. Josephine was a doctor as parent of UP who joined the NPA believing that taking arms instead of being a doctor is the way to help the people. Josephine was killed during encounter with <laughs> Josephine was killed during an encounter with military forces in Subu, Batangas on November 28, 2017. Giancarlo Alberto Capistrano, an Akbayan youth member, he was a veterinary medicine student of the UP Los Baños killed on 14 February 2019 during an encounter in Louisiana, Laguna. Malvin Christian Cruz, LFS member, he was killed on June 29, 2020 during an encounter with military elements in Miyagao, Iloilo. Kimberly Jewel Luna, LFS member, she was killed on December 15, 2009 during an encounter in Concepcion, Bukidnon. Rendell Raya Kaguda, LFS member, he was killed on November 14, 2014, during an encounter in Maasim, Sarangani Province. Remy Beraye, LFS member. He was killed on November 7, 2017, in San Antonio, Cuartero, Capiz. Justin Ella Vargas, Gabriela member. She was killed on September 14, 2020, during an encounter in Magsaysay, Occidental, Mindoro. Ren Manalo, Gabriela member. She was killed on September 3, 2020, during an encounter in Palawan. These are some of the youths who have been deceived by the CTG. They started as so-called activists, but ended up dead in a place so far away from home. Some, on the other hand, are now languishing in jail, while others remain missing. Their whereabouts unknown, just like the children of the parents from the hands of our children. The objective of the indoctrination of the youth and the children is to brainwash them 
and make them hate everything about the government, hate everything about the society, hate the authorities and teachers who do not agree with their ideology, and hate even their own parents. Once they are detached from these social orders, they become puppets of the communist terrorists, willing to do anything for the CPP, to kill and even give up their lives. Under Secretary Joel Egkoff, the PCOO, narrated to me that he was once a member of a CTG front organization. And when his father tried to stop him, he threatened to kill his own father, arguing that he is no longer his father's son, as he is now a child of the revolution. For the teacher sector, the CTG sees the teachers, educators, as the people who can deliver revolutionary propaganda to the students. The party also sees the potential of the teachers to shape the mindset of the future generation and advance the cultural revolution. The legal organization that coordinates the infiltration of the teacher sector is the Alliance of Concerned Teachers, or ACT, which now has a party list, the ACT Teachers under the Makabayan Bloc. The National Federation of Teachers and Employees Union and the Congress of Teachers and Educators for Nationalism and Democracy are content. There are two ways on how the CTG infiltrates the teacher sector with regards to the school where they teach, namely ideological infiltration through the creation of discontentment through propaganda, agitating teachers to push for reforms and introduce revolutionary ideas, or physical infiltration by serving as faculty, school workers, or administrators to exploit school publications and other forms of influencing the student body through academic instruction. For the women sector, the CTG does not define women as a gender, but rather in their role as a class in the advancement of their rights in society and the attainment of their struggle in the revolutionary movement. The party taps into issues such as inequality against women and violence against women, among others. Women who seek empowerment and see the communist movement as a key to catalyst in achieving their goals are thus exploited. The party looks into social problems encountered by women, such as social violence, poverty, discrimination, and patriarchy as motivation for the women's sector to embrace communism as a way of life to abolish sexism and gender discrimination. Moreover, since women possess unique qualities, resources, and linkages, they are exploited for armed and legal struggle by filling up their ranks through mobilization and for espionage and security operations. The Gabriela Women's Party, headed by Congresswoman Arlene Brosas, serves as the primary front organization responsible for organizing the CPG in the women's sector. This is how the CPP and the FNPA infiltrates the various sectors of our society. Shown on the screen is the organizational structure of the CPP and the FNPA, detailing the relationships between and among its functional units including the above ground and underground organizations serving as fronts for this terrorist group. Mr. Chairman, as you have seen, the CPP and the FNPA has infiltrated almost all sectors of our society. They are in our schools, in the church, and certainly in the halls of Congress. The CTG and its front organizations claiming to champion the rights of our people are actually the biggest human rights violators of all. They hide under the cloak of legality, but are actually two-faced liars that have deceived the Filipino people, brought pain to the hearts of many grieving parents, and robbed us of the peaceful and prosperous life we all dream of. Ruben Guevara, who once served as the head of the CPP military commission in the 60s and 70s, aptly explained why the Filipino rejects the CPG and why the God-fearing, family-oriented Filipinos will never embrace a godless communist ideology. Please watch this. Nakita ko na hindi ito ang kalutasan. Meron nga kay Idoloy eh. Yung ideology ang Pilipino. Likas na ideology na naniniwala tayo sa Diyos at tayo ay makatao, may pagpapahalaga tayo sa buhay. 
may pangunahin natin na abasi tayo sa pamilya. No? Ito'y wasak ulat sa komunista eh. Kung natay patangay din sa sinasabi ng mga komunista, limang puntaw na ito, may ka. Perpetual war na ito. At kung ito talagang kasagutan nung pa, ang sabi nga ni Mark, kung pinakitinggan pala si Mars eh, ang sabi, ito'y pakidigman nung mama yan, na magtatagumpay lamang kung lalaupan at susuportahan ng mama yan. In 50 years na hindi ito nagtagumpay, ibig sabihin, ayaw ito ng mama yan. Itigil na natin. At ang kawawa ay susunod na lang yung Pilipino. Ruben Guevara is actually right. The Filipinos will never accept this godless ideology built on violence and deception. Results of an independent survey showed how the Filipinos perceived the CPP, NPA, and Jose Maria season, indicating that our people have already rejected this foreign ideology imposed to us by the CPG. On the CPP, NPA, there was a negative 31% trust rating, which means that the respondents do not trust the CPG. On CISON, there was a negative 21% trust rating, which means that most of the respondents do not trust him. And about half of the respondents, or 51%, are angry and scared of the CPP NPA because they are perceived as violent criminals and terrorists. Our conclusion. Conclusion, Mr. Chairman. would like to reiterate three points to summarize our narrative. And these are the following. First, reiterate that we stand by our statement that the party list groups under the Makabayan Bloc, Bayanhuna, Act, Teachers, Carpella, and Kabataan, are all CPP, NDF, NPA member organizations. And all their representatives are CPP members. Alias Ka Eric, or alias Pek Victor, explained this when he revealed that the CPP has nevertheless been successful in installing its members in seats of power, particularly in the halls of the legislative body of Congress. As we have earlier shown, and as will be explained further by Kai Eric and other resource persons, the party policy is that no one No one gets a post to represent the CPP unless he or she is a former member or a cater of the party. And that is because this is all part of the party's revolutionary dual tactics that allows them to openly and legally mobilize the supporters and allies to serve their true intent to advance the CPP and the FNPA's objective to undermine and topple the government in the guise of parliamentary exercise. These partyist groups under the Makabayan Bloc, which are represented by Congressman Carlos Isagani Zarape, Congresswoman Eufenia Kuryamat, Congressman Ferdinand Gaite, Congresswoman Franz Castro, Congresswoman Arlene Broses, and Congresswoman Sara Jane Milago, are all now crying that we have red tagged them, have been cited multiple times in testimonies of former rebels and documents and publications on the CTG. No matter how much they try to deny it, or use euphemistic terms in trying to justify their involvement in these terrorist groups, the fact remains that their prints are over There's these overwhelming evidence, which we are now respectfully submitting for consideration to this honorable committee. Second, we would like to express our unequivocal support to our two brave spokespersons, Lieutenant General Antonio G. Parnadi, Jr. and Yusek Lorraine Ibador. The NTF alca is committed to unmasking the CPP members who are leaders of front organizations. The statement of these two officers of the NTF, that representatives of the Makabayan Bloc party list are CPP members, is not only sanctioned by the task force, but it is supported by evidence and testimonies of former caters of the CPP and the FNPA. The statements are standing on a mountain of evidence. Lastly, Mr. Chairman, we would like to emphasize, emphasize that the NTF LCAC is committed to finally end this 52-year-old problem. That has stunted our growth and threatens the security of our families. The NTF has taken cognizance of the factors that contributed to the insurgency, insurgency problem. And under the platform of good governance, all the 12 clusters of the NTF 
are working together to ensure that government services will be provided to our people. But more than anything, the NPF is committed to inform our people of the truth and expose the true color of these terrorist groups. To accomplish this, it is imperative that we unmask all CPP front organizations that deceive and exploit our children, our women, our indigenous people, and even our democratic institutions. When we expose these front organizations, our intention is to warn and inform our people to ensure the protection of the rights of our children and, as enshrined in our constitution, to preserve and protect the family as the basic unit of society. Therefore, when we expose these threats to our children and families, we are actually performing a sacred duty, a duty that every Filipino is mandated to perform. Like most of us, I too am a father, and I know that every self-respecting parent would do everything in his power to defend and protect his children. Mr. Chairman, honorable members of this committee, the threat of the CPP and the FNPA is real. We therefore call on all the members of the bureaucracy, the legislative, the judiciary, and most especially our people to join us. It's about time that we stand up and speak up against these terrorist groups. Help us end the local communist armed conflict. Thank you for your attention and your patience. May God bless us all. Thank you, Director General Agudo. Anybody else? Sir, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Senator Kiko, Pangilina is recognized. Yes, yes just a, with the permission of the chair, just a very quick manifestation. Um, I'm very concerned about some of the video material presented, particularly the matter of student activists eventually, well, it may be, it may be true to a certain extent, student activists ending up being killed uh, because they have uh, participated or they have become the NPA or part of the NPA. Uh, that may be partly true, but that is not the whole truth, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. Senators Risa Ontiveres and myself, we were both student activists. We were both student leaders during the Marcos regime. We are both senators today. So I, I, I you know, the, the simplistic sweeping generalization, Mr. President, uh, I, I feel is, is a, uh, you know, is, is a presenting half truths up to a certain extent. It is true, yes, perhaps in these cases, the LFS, they joined the NPA and they were killed. That is, that is, yes, partly true. That is true. But it is also true that not all student activists become NPA. Just for the record, Mr. President, and, and Senator Risa and myself, we were student activists. Uh, we are in the Senate now. For the record, uh, Mr. Pres Mr. Chairman, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Yes, Chairman. The Senate President is recognized. Uh, in as much as um, earlier there was a manifestation by Senator Andeveros and now Senator Pagrino, and I would like to make a manifestation also. Uh, uh, just as a reminder, reminder to not only our colleagues, but uh, the people watching, listening, the media more particularly, uh, the views and opinions and actions expressed by some of our colleagues or each senator, do not in any way reflect and represent the views of the entire Senate. I just want to place that on record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Senate President. We will now hear from Mr. Attorney Chairman. Monica Asistol. Yes, Senator Ruiz Antiveros. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, for the record also, uh, Yes, I am a proud uh, former student leader of the social democratic movement. Secondly, Mr. Chairman, I would like to make it of record that I have always appreciated uh, the Senate presidents uh, standing up for the independence of our house, the Senate, uh, and also the many times that he has done so on behalf of each and every member of the Senate. And third and last for this point, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, though I have had many 
political disagreements with some of the legislators mentioned in the previous uh, presentations over the past several decades. I do wish to make of record that I take exception to the numerous times they have been mentioned in those presentations, given that they are not present here, although as the chairman clearly said, the chair invited them, they are not here, but they are represented by their lawyer. Yes, in the same I, principle I may, of I, parliamentary I, uh, principles. Yes, Mr. Have chairman, been. of course. Extraordinary efforts were exerted by the committee secretary in fairness to her to reach out to these people as early as October 30. And they sent the legal counsel of the Alliance of Concerned Teachers, who I was told will represent the whole Makabayan block of the House of Representatives. So just for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I submit. I to understand and appreciate the extraordinary efforts of the committee secretariat um, in that regard. I just wish to make it of record that under the same parliamentary principles that the chair uh, very well highlighted for the committee at the beginning of our hearing, I do take exception to the many times that our counterparts in the other house have been mentioned um, derogatorily in the presentations, despite my many disagreements with them in the past years, um, in the same way that their speaker has uh, spoken up uh, for them. And as I mentioned earlier, Mr. Chairman, in the same way that I appreciate the many times that our own leader of the Senate, the Senate President, has spoken uh, for the individual members of our House and for the Senate. Uh, as an institution. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Attorney Manika, as he's told, Sarza is now recognized. Good morning, Good morning, po, uh, Ginoong uh, Chair, and good morning, Mr. Senate President. Ako po si Attorney Manika, as he's told, Sarza. Ako po ang legal counsel ng buong makabayan uh, para sa hearing na ito. Um, kung papahintulutan po, mag, uh, babasahin ko po ang uh, um, pahayag ng ating anim po na um, legislators from the under the Makabayan. Please proceed. You have all the time. Thank you po, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, ikotlo ng, ikotlong araw ng Nobyembre 2020, Committee on National Defense and Security, Peace, Unification and Reconciliation, Senado ng Republika ng Pilipinas. Senador Panfilo Lacson at mga inaabot ng mga ng mamamayan o makabayang block na hindi kami makadadalo sa pinatawag na pagdinig ng komiting ito. Ang koalisyong makabayan at mga party list sa ilalim nito ay may, mahahab, ay, mahabang track, ay may mahabang track record ng paglaban para sa mga pangangailangan at interes ng mamamayan. Ang kawalan ng nakabubuhay na sahod at di makataong kondisyon sa paggawa ng mga magdagawa kawalan ng lupa ng mga magsasaka, pangaapi at diskriminasyon laban sa mga pambansang minorya at, iba, at iba't ibang muka ng abuso laban sa kababaihan, bata, maralita at, iba pang, at, iba, at iba't ibang sektor. Simula nang pumasok ang makabayan sa Kongreso, pinaglaban at pinagwagi nito ang mga konkretong tagumpay na nagpabuti sa buhay ng milyong mga Pilipino gaya ng pagtaas ng sahod, pensyon at benepisyo, libreng edukasyon, at mas mababang singil sa tubig at kuryente at iba pa. Naninindigan kami na hindi mariyuyurakan ng anumang bintang at kasinungalingan ang kredibilidad ng makabayan. Hindi kailanman mapapawi ng anumang red tagging ang track record ng mga militanting organisasyon ng mamamayan. Umaasa kami na hindi ninyo pahihintulutang magamit ang inyong komite at ang Senado bilang lunsaran ng red tagging or terrorist tagging, bilang polisiya na makailang beses nang napatunayan ng United Nations Special Rapporteurs na nagbibigay daan sa politikal na pamamaslang sa pamamagitan ng extrajudicial killing or EJK, sa gagawang kaso at iba pang paglabag sa karapatang pata. Hindi dapat magamit ang Senado sa paninirang puri na sa kabuuan ay nagsasapanganib sa buhay at kaligtasan ng mga lider 
at membro ng mga progresibong organisasyon. Hindi dapat maulit ang mga nangyari ng, iniimbes ng inimbestigahan ng Senado ang isyu ng missing minors kung saan itinanghal ang mga walang ebidensyang akusasyon at nagresulta sa pagsampa ng gawagawang kaso laban sa isang kinatawan at ilang episyal at membro ng makabayan. Kasong kamakailan lamang ay binasura ng DOJ dahil sa kawalan ng batayan at ebidensya. Sa kalagitnaan ng pagragasa ng krisis pangkalusugan at sa ekonomiya dulot ng pandemya ng COVID-19, sinalanta pa ng superbagyong roli ang rehiyon ng Bicol at marami pang rehiyon ng bat sa batsa. Nararapat na ituon nating lahat ang atensyon sa pagtugon sa mga kagyat na pangangailangan ng ating mga kababayang biktima ng pandemya at kalamidad, hipi sa politikal na pananakot at pagpapalaganap ng kasinungalingan. Sumasa inyo, Rep. Carlos Isaganis Darate, Bayan Muna Party List, Rep. Eufemia Ka, Femia Kulyamat, Bayan Muna Party List, Rep. Ferdinand Gaite, Bayan Muna Party List, Rep. Arlene Brosas, Gabriela Women's Party, Rep. Franz Castro, Act Teachers Party List, at Rep. Sarah Jane Elago, Kabataan Party List. Uh, yun lang po ang uh, the statement ends there, Mr. Chair and Mr. President. Um, pinaaabot po na hindi ngayon sa, ma, sa date na ito makaka-attend ang ating mga congressmen and congresswomen. Um, they are on a separate um, uh, relief missions preparing for separate re se re relief missions separate. Are you done, uh, attorney? Tapos That's na po all. Kayo. Iyon na po. Um, thank you po. Uh, may gusto lang tanong si Senate President po sa inyo, attorney. Attorney, uh, um, saan po magaling yung term na red tagging? Kasi I overheard earlier uh, General Esperon saying that not nowhere in their policies, nowhere in their documents, uh, they use the word red tagging. Uh, saan galing ba yung pagtawag ng red tag o yung, yung term na red tagging sa pagkakaalam ninyo? Uh, good morning po, Ginoong Senate President. Ang red tagging po na termino ay matatagpuan sa international humanitarian law and international human rights law. At um, ito po ay yung practice at pulisiya ng state um, uh, ng ilang gobyerno at ilang state um, agents na pag-label uh, o pagbabrand sa ilang uh, um, organisasyon at um, in, uh, individual na sa tingin nila ay um, left-leaning or uh, maka um, ay konektado sa mga tinuturing nilang pula or um, kabilang o membro sa ng uh, armed uh, forces na kalaban ng gobyerno sa um, domestic jurisprudence po sa ating uh, ibig sabihin po sa ating uh, case law sa Pilipinas um, nakikita po ang ilang kailang beses na po lumabas ang terminong red tagging um, adopt, adopting the definition of the, the uh, practice as I have described. So, um, gamit po ang... Uh, so, yeah. In other words, um, sa, uh, uh, sa sinasabi po ninyo, uh, hindi po nanggaling sa gobyerno natin yung term na yun. Tinatanong kung saan galing. Sabi nyo, galing sa international uh, documents or uh, pagkakabong Di ba? Sa Human Rights uh, uh, Commission ba or ng, ng international community or something to that effect? Hindi galing sa gobyerno natin yung term na yun. Uh, bilang kasagutan po, uh, yung termino po na red tagging, ay mat ang basihan for that ay makatagpuan doon sa mga sinabi ko. Adopting those definitions po, um, sa, kumbaga sa ano ay, um, yun po ay kita... Kung titingnan po natin yung pack practice at polisiya ng gobyerno, uh, gaya po ng 
pinakita ngayon sa hearing na ito at sa mga presentations ng ating uh, iba pang resource persons. Um, kumbaga sa um, uh, ordinary leng leng na lenguahe po ay swak na swak. Yung describe ng international humanitarian law at international human rights po, doon sa na red tagging, doon po sa ginagawa ng ating mga military and security defense officials. Uh, just follow up, Mr. Senate President. With indulgence of Senator Crespo, who is number one on the list, and the rest of our colleagues, tanongin ko lang isa-isa yung mga resource persons natin nandito physically present. Simula natin kay Chief of Staff, General Gapay. Ikaw ba nakapag-red tag na sa mga nabanggit na mga personalidad? How sir, I sir. Secretary Speron? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have never red tagged them. Uh, but I am very clear about, about it that I have heard no less than Jose Maria Sison naming them as parts of the National Democratic Revolution, yung videotape kanina. Furthermore, Noong January 2019, uh, nagkaroon ng International uh, uh, League of uh, People's Struggles. Ito yung uh, chairman doon si, si Jose Maria Sison. Ay napublish na nag-attend lahat yung mga, mga organisasyon na nababanggit. Nandun sila lahat. At sila ay nagsasabing yun ay samahan ng mga people's struggles na sumasanib sa, o sumasang ayon sa communism. Kaya yung kanilang mga aksyon ay siyang nagre-red tag sa kanila. Hindi kami nagre-red tag. Sinasabi lang namin, bakit naman kayo nandun sa, sa, sa lamay ng namatay na CPP NPA na leader? Bakit kayo nandun? Eh parang yung aksyon nila, Mr. Chairman, ang nagsasabi na kung sino sila na talagang kasama nila yung namatay o yung mga sinasamahan nila ay talagang kasama nila sa, sa partido. May mga tulad ng isang nangyari doon sa Talaingod. Yung isang eskwelahan ay aming ipinasara dahil yun ay NPA school sa lumpungan. Ang sumaklulo bigla doon ay si Miss Franz Castro at saka si Sator Ocampo na kinukuha yung mga bata para dalhin sa ibang lugar. Samantalang alam namin na estudyante yung mga to, 13 to 15 years old, ginagawa nilang NPA. Kaya hindi kami, kaya mag hindi na kami mag-iisip ng malayo pa. Ang sinasabi namin, sila talaga ang nagpapa, nagpapatakbo ng mga eskwilahan na yun. Otherwise, sana ang inasikaso ni Miss Franz Castro na uh, na act uh, representative ay yung kapakanan ng mga teachers dahil alam natin na maraming tayong dapat asikasuhin para sa mga mag, mag, mga guru natin. Pero bakit nandun siya? Sinong pinaprotektaan niya? Yung NPA na nag, nagtuturo? Kaya hindi na namin kailangan i-red tag sila. Sila ang nagre-red tag sa sarili nila. Sa kanilang gawain at saka sa pronouncement ni Jose Maria Sison. Kitang-kita po, po naman natin. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Secretary of National Defense, uh, Del Lorenzana. Personally or officially, have you ever red tag any of the personalities mentioned earlier? No, uh, Mr. Chairman, but uh, I always, uh, during hearing in the, scene, in the, in the House, when uh, the red tagging term comes up, I always tell them, we did not retag you, you retag yourself. Thank you, sir. Secretary of Interior and Local Government, Secretary Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chair. Uh, sa part ko po, hindi pa po ako nakapag-retag uh, officially or personally. Sabi po na kanilang abogado na ang pag-retag daw ay pag-level sa mga organisasyon na left-leaning. Sa tingin ko po sila naman na makakasagot kung left-leaning sila o hindi. Uh, tama po yung sinabi ng Secretary Esperon na hindi naman po kailangan i-retag at hindi po kami na karoon ng policy ng retagging. Lieutenant General uh, Pinag. Thank you, sir. Sir, yung PNP po as a matter of policy, retagging is non-existent. As a matter of uh, police operational procedure, it's also non-existent. Uh, as a matter of, sir, of uh, doctrine, we operate based on evidence. 
and personally, sir, no. Thank you, sir. Under Secretary Lorraine, brother. No, sir, I've never uh, indulged in red tagging, but I've always told the truth. And I take my, my duty as a public official very seriously, which is to prevent, to defend and protect our children from, um, from terrorists. And sir, could I, um, could I also um, clarify something about Attorney Sarsa, her claim that red tagging comes from the IHL. Red tagging is not a covered provision under the IHL because it is not about armed conflict, and IHL is about armed conflict. Red tagging came from the CPP, NPA, NDF. There is no such word in any dictionary. This came from them. And it's a tool they use to silence anyone who tells the truth about them. Thank you. Deputy Director General Lopez. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I've never used in my official capacity red tagging anybody from the other side of the position. <clears throat> Next, Deputy Director uh, General Agdamag. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, in all my lectures and uh, advocacies uh, teaching our national security policy and strategy, uh, not even once did I red tag anybody. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Alex. Mr. Chairman, uh, as a matter of policy, we do not red tag. But as Nika, we know who is guilty of red tagging. And he is with us, Mr. Chairman, behind me. Uh, if he, the, the chair will allow, he is guilty of red, he will admit that he is guilty of red tagging. Uh, a former rebel, because the one who are red tagging are themselves and their former comrades. Thank you. We'll recognize him later. Ito, natanong ko na si Jal Parlade. Ito, hindi ko na kailangan tanongin si Yosek Malaya. Pero tanongin ko na rin, for the record, nakapag-red tag na ba kayo? Uh, good, good morning, Mr. Chairman. No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So, the floor is now open para sa pagtatanong. Senator Grace Po, uh, ma'am, you are recognized. Thank you. You may also ask uh, from the other source persons. Can you introduce them so they will be administered their, their oath? To sino sino? Para ma isang misana na lang. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ilan ba yung resource persons ninyo? We have uh, two former rebels. Uh, one is the uh, Kai Eric, uh, who is the author of this book, a former rebel who served with the CTG for 17 years. Uh, his real name is Jeffrey Sellis. And uh, we have another former rebel who is uh, alias Ka Shane. Uh, he's our Complete name is uh, Desiree Miranda. The chair directs the committee uh, secretary to administer the oath to the rebel attorneys present uh, this morning. So all of you kindly stand up. Sino ba isa? Ah, dalawa. Okay. Uh, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before the Senate hearing? Thank you. Thank you. Senator Grespo, is uh, recognized. You may now proceed, Senator Grace. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Before I ask my questions, I would just like to make a brief statement to begin, if uh, that would be allowed. Yes, of course. Please okay. proceed. So, magandang, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. I have always believed that we have to provide democratic space for ideas to contend for as long as it is done peacefully. I think that political discourse to be rich should represent all the colors in our flag, red, blue, yellow, white. We lose that rich diversity if politics is monopolized by one color only. While I advocate big tent politics, 
I, however, uh, believe that there is a price to pay to enter and behavior to be observed. And that is one that, and that is one should only pursue that ideology without resorting to armed means. One should not be penalized for harboring thoughts, but when one uses or endorses the use of violence to promote or enforce that thought on many, then it crosses the line of illegal. The problem with red tagging or whatever labels is whether one is automatically called a communist or a fascist is that it sweeps the message under the rug. Ang problema with identity marking is that it suppresses debate on an idea. Sarado na kaagad ang isip natin. It is an attempt to automatically disenfranchise people who may hold unpopular beliefs. And we should always remember our constitution extends protection even to minority ideas which we disagree with. Instead of debating, tagging is like painting the Star of David or the sign of the cross on the homes of persecuted Christians and Jews. So when you, when people call a person Stalin or even a general Hitler, then your personalities are reduced to labels which are unfair to both groups. And that is the unfortunate ecosystem we are in today. Political tribalism has created a culture of identification politics instead of idea politics. We look for the motive instead of the message. DDS yan o dilawan yan. End of discussion na kagad. Debates don't get elevated. More often, it is a race to the gutter. Pero ang problema lang kasi sa red tagging or kung ano mang label, aside from the examples I've mentioned above, it is often a dog whistle that is a prelude to acts of suppression. Parang ang playbook ay itag muna, tapos... Having cast that person as an outcast, arrest or detention follows. Um, parang cancel culture, Pinoy version. I will besmirch you first and having cast you a pariah, then you will be evicted out of the democratic space, either by social ostracism or worse, detention or the ultimate form of censorship, which is death. If the mere intention of red tagging is to marginalize, then that's par for the course. Pero if it becomes a clear and present physical danger to the tag, jan malaki ang mali. And that tactic has limits and often backfires. So, alam niyo po ngayon, syempre, yung mga nag, nagsasalita na kontra sa pananaw natin, madalas ay mabilis ang aksyon um, ng otoridad. Pero meron din mga banyaga na yung ating malayang mga isla ay um, kinukuha. Pero parang hindi natin masyadong tinututukan o pinibigyan ng pansin at pinapalusot. So sa araw na to, Mr. Chair, I just want to ask a few questions um, to verify if this was actually uttered. Uh, this is for General Parlade. Um, nandiyan ba si General Parlade? Nandito po siya. Okay. Uh, by the way, just some housekeeping lang. Uh, each senator will be given 10 minutes to ask questions. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair, pwede mo nang ibawas yung statement ko. Um, may ano man, sige, tawad mo yun. Tawad, um, pwede tawad yun. Sige. Thank you. Um, totoo bang uh, General Parlade na sabi niyo? Uh, Liza Soberano, there's still a chance to abdicate that group. If you don't, you will suffer the same fate as Josephine Ann Lapira uh, uh, of, U, of UP Manila. And then you followed up with another statement. The choice is yours, Liza, and so with you, uh, Catriona. Don't follow the path of Kaela Colmenares, uh, took in the, the underground and NPA Quezon. I'm sure Angel Oxine and Neri Colmenares will not tell you to do this. Na nasabi ba yun? Can I answer, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Sir. Actually, uh, I'd like to uh, to post my entire statement so that uh, I'll be un I'll be able to answer the question and the context of that question, uh, the, my statement. Can you flash the 
statement. Please. Go ahead, go ahead. Verbatim. I actually have two uh, statements, uh, Mr. Chair. The first one was addressed to uh, Congresswoman uh, Rosas and to the Gabriela, asking them if they informed Ms. Liza Soberano and Katrina Gray about the real nature of, uh, of Gabriela youth, specifically the Maki Baka or the Malayang uh, Kilusana Mga Bagong Kababaihan, which is the underground mass organization hiding under this uh, uh, Gabriela youth. I asked that question to uh, Congresswoman Brosas because I was already seeing the, the bashings of uh, Ms. Soberana and uh, yes, uh, Ms. Soberana was being red tagged already by the netizens in the social media. But since there was no answer from uh, Congresswoman Brosas, I directed my statement direct to uh, uh, Ms. Liza Soberano. Okay. So basically, General, ang sinasabi ninyo dun sa makabayan, sabihin ninyo sa kanila kung sino ba talaga kayo, na kayo ay talagang front lamang ng CPP and PA. Tama ba? Essentially, ma'am, I was uh, I wanted to ask Congresswoman Brosas whether they informed uh, Ms. Liza Soberano about the underground nature of this Gabriela youth. This is important because uh, in the past we have always uh, noted that many of these Gabriela youth uh, members ended up being dead. In fact, I cited uh, three incidents there. It was already presented in the briefing. Previously, the case of uh, Joey Lapira, Deputy Secretary General of uh, Gabriela Youth, was killed in uh, Batangas. And the recent killings, it was only last September 2020, of uh, Ms. Vargas, Gabriela Youth member, was killed in, uh, in uh, Mindoro. And uh, Ms. Ren Manalo, Gabriela Youth member, was killed in Brooks Point. Okay, so general kasi ganito, no? kasama sa legal framework, framework natin yung uh, Gabriela, yung makabayan flock, di ba? That is uh, the intention of uh, bringing them out to be part of the discussion in Congress. Now, what you're saying is, front lang talaga sila kasi sila, uh, they're involved in armed conflict. Yun ang sinasabi mo. That's the reason why uh, they have, they're, they're, you're actually trying to warn uh, certain personalities from joining their, well, uh, engaging that organization. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. In fact, okay. I was emphatic in my statement when I said that uh, there's nothing wrong uh, by being or part being part of these uh, advocacy groups defending women's rights and children's rights. Pero ito nga, Elnet, parang gusto mong sabihin ng makabayan block Sabihin dun sa mga personalities na yon, front lang kami ha, kasi actually meron kaming underground group. Parang ganun ba yung gusto ninyong gawin nila? Yes ma'am. In fact, we wanted them to be here this morning so that they can also take their oath. We took our oath, but if you've heard the statement, and I take offense from that statement, they are accusing us of lying in this uh, Senate halls. And I, I really don't think... Uh, that's, uh, that's acceptable because we all took our oath. We were expecting them to be present so that they can take their oath too. So okay. I really don't know, ma'am, who's uh, lying here or what? General, you know what? I, I, I know what your sworn responsibility is to the Constitution. Um, if there's any group that will pose a risk, especially a spouse armed conflict, it's your responsibility, of course, to suppress them. On the other hand, I think it's an unreasonable request to tell a group that's not been um the supreme court has allowed them to continue to run or, or or in our electorate system for them to say um to openly admit parang kayo na lang siguro magsabi noon or um miss soberano or kung sino mang personality alam ba niyo 
ganito sila pero i respect your your opinion uh, if if you want to advocate those advocacies you believe are worth promoting pero parang sinabi mo pa magingat ka um, kasi baka ano ba yan parang may mangyari sa kanya ganun ba baka ma masaktan siya Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Madam Senator. In fact, that was my intention because of the recent killings of these uh, Gabriela youth members who were supposed to be activists but ended up being killed while uh, wielding arms. So this is what we are trying to uh, explain okay. to the people. What, what, did, what did Liza Soberano say that might put her in danger or in jeopardy? Ano yung, ano yung sinabi niya na baka pwedeng patayin din siya katulad ng mga ibang activists? Did you say Liza Soberano, ma'am? Oh, well, that's a, there's a still chance advocate the youth who suffered. Yeah, if you suffer the same fate as Josephine and Lapira. So, ano ano sinabi nila na uh, medyo na na mililigro ang kanilang buhay? Baka mamiligro? No, ma'am. Uh, in fact, this is what we've been telling the, the, the public that the family of uh, Liza Soberano, through the lawyer, wanted to express their thanks for defending Liza Soberano from her bossers and from those who red tagged her. So they were actually thanking me and they wanted to send me a thank you letter for informing them of the real nature of this Gabriela U. Jeff Perlade, I don't think you're answering the question. Ang tanong ni Senator Grace po, ano ba yung nasabi na bigkas na pananlita ni Liza Soberano para ma-warningan mo siya na baka mag-end up din siya katulad ng mga ibang naipakita kanina sa video. Yun ang tanong ni Senator Grace. If I'm, am I correct, uh, Senator Grace? Yes, actually, thank you for clarifying, Mr. Chair. Ano, ano ba yung sinabi? Kasi uh, maaring sumama lang siya dun sa, sa forum na yon. pero baka naman ang sinabi niya, general, you know, ideological or support uh, for our women and children. Ano bang sinabi niya na maaring uh, maka, maka, makadulot ng, ng peligro sa kanya. In fairness, ma'am, she said nothing about uh, uh, being threatened or being in danger for, for uh, speaking in that, uh, in that uh, forum. But it's the, the netizens who are actually tagging her as a communist, as a terrorist, that is why they are asking uh, the supporters to to uh, to boycott her programs. Okay, so general, basically, her mere presence in that forum has incensed many netizens to bash her. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, so ganito siguro ang, ang magandang maaring nangyari siguro is um, you you maybe you could have just warned her to be careful because. Uh, as as you have, pero siguro um, hindi na hindi naman or, or pwedeng pwedeng sabihin dun sa mga netizens hindi naman dahil sa lungat sa inyong pananaw ay terorista na o kailangan ng uh, ibash ng ganon ganon you you could issue just a general statement she was just there in support of the idea kasi kahit naman um, anong forum eh di ba meron naman talagang mga uh, tayong sinasabi, not necessarily because we support everything that group is doing, but it depends on what the occasion is. If it if it's an event for women and children, um, I could very well uh, find many of my colleagues present there, even if we're not a member, or we don't espouse everything that a certain organization pushes for. Um, am I correct, sir? Yes, ma'am. And in fact, that's exactly what I said. If you just read my statement, that's exactly what I said. That there's nothing wrong expressing your support on uh, women's rights and advocacy uh, rights and children's rights. Uh, that is why I'd like to inform, I wanted to inform the netizens that it is unfair for them to, uh, to red tag Liza Soberana simply for being part of the webinar. Okay, in fact, Mr. Chair, with the indulgence of Senator Grace. Yes. Mr. Chairman, with the indulgence of Senator Grace. Yes, Senator Rizondeveros is recognized. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Grace. Just briefly on uh, one of the points um, replied by General Parlade to Senator Grace's questioning. I just like to make of record uh, a statement of Attorney June Lim, counsel for Ms. Liza Soberano, uh, in Facebook. He says, uh, Mr. Chairman, para sa kaliwanagan ng lahat, nagpasalamat ako kay General Parlade sa nag-iisang dahilan lamang at wala nang iba pa. Tahasan niyang sinabi sa akin na si Ms. Soberano ay hindi bahagi ng NPA at wala siyang kaugnayan sa alinmang grupong konektado dito. Dahil sa sinabi nito ni General Parlade, nalinis ang pangalan ni Liza na pilit na sinisira ng mga mangilan nilang irresponsabling personalidad sa pamamagitan ng red tagging na why matuldukan na ang isyong ito. Makakaasa tayong patuloy na maninitigan at ipapahayag ni Liza ang kanyang advokasya patungkol sa paggalang sa karapatan ng mga kababaihan at kabataan. Walang maaaring pumigil sa kanya sa paniniwalang ito. Salamat Mr. Chairman. Salamat Senator Grace. Thank you, Senator Ntobero. Thank you. Um, so, General Parlade, how does the NTF ELCAC verify or fact check statements before releasing them to the public? We we vet our statements. We uh, post our statements to the Stratcom cluster, and then we ask for their comments, including from the legal cooperation cluster. And then once that is approved, it's released. So that's the procedure, ma'am. Everything that we say there are official statements of the NTF. It's not my personal opinion. Okay. Um, how about uh, General Gapay? Uh, does the AFP have a protocol before its officials can make statements that General Parlade is uh, making? Yes, uh, Madam Senator, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honors. Yes, uh, we have a policy in the Armed Forces of the Philippines. And uh, as far as uh, public information uh, operations is concerned, uh, all statements are uh, passes through a uh, a group, a strategic, a strategic uh, communications group, where they also vet and uh, verify uh, information uh, uh, as to their uh, accuracy and truthfulness. And of course, uh, we only state facts as far as our statements are concerned prior to uh, release. So, and uh, we have designated the spokespersons uh, to, to uh, carry out and uh, speak out in behalf of our forces in the Philippines. Uh, down even to the units, uh, we have designated uh, spokespersons, uh, Madam uh, Senator. Okay, lastly, um, dun sa anti-terror law, and uh, we have the, uh, the authors also here in the Senate, you need a court order. Do you need, uh, you, you actually need a court order uh, before doing surveillance, am I correct? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, initially, we have to uh, request to the Anti-Terrorism Council, and uh, it has to be approved by the by the. So, so hindi naman courts. dapat. Uh, yes. So hindi naman dapat like you just take uh, matters in your hands. But if you suspect somebody, it has to go through the a council, and in fact, in some cases, merit a court order before a surveillance can be conducted. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am, we have to uh, prove uh, initially to the ATC, then to the proper courts. So uh, they, it's like a thesis we have to prove. And uh, we have to present evidence initially in order to, to get the nod and the go signal. If uh, initially the ATC says uh, you lack evidence, produce some more evidence, uh, uh, improve on the case buildup, and then uh, we have to do so, uh, Madam Senator. So uh, it goes to the stage at, uh, procedure uh, before getting the nod of, uh, of the ATC and even the proper courts. Just a way of clarification, you're referring to electronic surveillance huh? for you to uh, secure a court authorization. Of that, course, that, you conduct physical surveillance and that doesn't need court correct. authorization. Correct. Just to clarify. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, the um, you would know that law back and forth, and you'd know also if others are taking advantage of it, which we are, of course, uh, trying to clarify. Um, the, 
I guess I understand uh, the point and uh, Senator Lisa uh, clarified that uh, General Parlade has issued a statement saying that hindi NPA to mga personalities na ito. On the other hand kasi, uh, part of the statement that was posted by General Parlade said something like, baka matulad ka kina ganito. No? Um, Siyempre, I, I understand that you, I, I'd like to think that you are also concerned about the safety of individuals, uh, but it can also send out a message of, uh, uh, of fear to others uh, that Panta ba ito o, o ito ba ay uh, para sa kapakanan ko na sinabi yan? Siguro, mag-iingat tayo sa, sa susunod na mga pagkakataon kasi talaga namang maraming salungat ang mga pananaw sa atin. Hindi lamang sa gobyerno, minsan pagdating na rin sa reliyon. Ang importante sa demokrasya natin, lalo-lalo na pag military, ay manatiling ang patas sa issue. Uh, dahil pag uh, may banta sa ating karapatan na maglayag, eh, maghayag, eh, yan ang uh, hindi natin dapat payagan. So, definitely, uh, if there's, a, there's proof of violence, we should definitely uh, act against that. But we should also encourage the free market of ideas, especially if uh, stated peacefully. So that's all, Mr. Chair. If I have a follow-up question later on, and if there's still time, thank you. Uh, I will ask you. Kung meron po kay Attorney Sarsa, kasi nagpapaalam na siya, baka meron magtatanong sa kanya, unahin na yung tanong sa kanya. That goes through sa mga ibang kasamahan natin. Thank you. So now we recognize Senator Bongo. We'll, we'll go back to Senator Bongo. In the meantime, we recognize Senator Rizal Tibero. Salamat, Mr. Chairman. Uh, may mga tanong po ako para kay Secretary Esperon. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Senator. Uh, magandang hapon po, uh, Secretary Esperon. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Secretary, um, I participated in the peace process as a member of the GRPNDF panel on the side of government. So in principle, I agree with the whole of government approach to building a sustainable peace, including through initiatives at the local level. Even the executive order that created the NTF LCAC states that insurgencies are symptomatic of broader social, economic, and political and historical problems like poverty and social inequality. However, I'd like to get a clearer picture of how uh, this funding of the NTF LCAC will be utilized. In concrete terms, Secretary, ano po yung current strategy para tapusin na yung local communist armed conflict? At paano ito iba kung ito ay naiiba sa kung ano yung sinubukan noon? Kasi honestly, sa presentation kanina, parang sobrang 1980s ang dating, parang throwback Tuesday ngayon. And to implement this strategy, the current strategy, Secretary, anong mga programa ang i-implementa sa local level? Uh, Secretary, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, <clears throat> Madam Senator, Mr. Chairman. I am, of course, uh, very much aware that you are a member of the NP, uh, JRP panel. Uh, involved in the peace talks because uh, after retiring as uh, the chief of staff of the armed forces i was i was the president i became the presidential advisor of the peace process no so the matter of uh, peace talks with the uh, Nas national democratic front uh, philippines which represented the cpp np and df is uh, always something that uh, interests uh, me mm. and so uh you, the senator is asking if uh, uh, the programs of the National Task Force LCAP. First, the strategy, Mr. Secretary. What is the current strategy and how is it uh, different, if different, from what was attempted in the past and which actually had failed? 
Yeah. Uh, this uh, National Task Force LCAP uh, works on a plan, national plan, that is two track. One is the uh, political, uh, the socio-economic uh, portion, and the other one is the political, or that includes also the military. Mm -hmm. uh, left hand and right hand, you must have heard about that. Yes, sir. You must have also heard about the 1980s. Hearing, yes, clearing, uh, holding, consolidating, and developing. We all yes, know that. CHCD, uh, but uh, in the course of our in implementing our campaign plans, you have all, all of us almost left it all to the military and the police and the uh, other security forces to solve the insurgency problem, which is not a military problem. Mm. It is a political, a social, and an economic problem, as well as a military problem. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this National Task Force LCAP is now what we call a whole nation approach, because first of all, it is a whole of government approach mm. that also includes the private sector. Mm. So it becomes a it becomes a quick, a, just a quick intervention, excuse me, Senate, uh, Secretary Speron, and uh, with the permission of Senator Risa. Of course, Mr. Chairman. Now that you have discovered na yung peace talks pala, part of the revolutionary struggle, tutuloy nyo pa rin yung peace talks, at least at the level of the CPP, NPA, and DF, just at top level, tinutuloy nyo pa rin ba? Uh, no longer, not at this point yet, uh, Mr. Chairman. That's why we have the local peace engagement cluster. We... Uh, we engage uh, local, uh, the local level commands of the CPP and PA or, or other groups like the RPA ABB, which, uh, with, with whom we have just uh, signed an agreement through OPAP. Uh, and so we can engage the CPP and PA at the provincial level. So, lahat ng peace initiatives at the level of Joma season. Scrap na. Suspended. Uh, but Suspended. Although... Well, which reminds me, kanina si, uh, si Alex, ano? Gerald Lamont Aguno, he quoted Sun Chiu. If you know the enemy, di ba? Yeah. Eh, alam mo na yung ganun pala, yung peace talks, part ng revolutionary struggle. Why are you still pursuing We have suspended talks? it and we have terminated it. Uh, the president has terminated it as we have uh, realized that it is so that they are just using the peace talks to take advantage uh, to propagate yeah. themselves. But not at the local level. At the local level, we can talk to them yeah. because many of them are coming to us and they want to return to the polls of the law. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Risa. So we are, we, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And the Secretary, we, uh, just to make it on the record, Mr. Chairman, as a long-time uh, peace activist and also former member of the government peace negotiating panel with the NDF, I really regret that government has suspended or canceled even the national level peace talks. Dahil po, um, kahit na di tulad ng government MILF peace process na nagpakita ng sapat na good faith ang parehong parties to the armed conflict at the negotiating table. At kaya mayroong konkreto silang naibunga ngayon sa forma ng BARM law at yung uh, BARM mismo. Um, kahit na sa tingin ko po kulang pa ang good faith ng gobyerno at ng NDF sa negotiating table ngayon sa national level, ay uh, nire-reject ko po yung sinabi ng NDF na ang peace talks ay para lamang magsilbe sa kanilang armed struggle. And so I really regret na suspended yung national peace talks sa ngayon dahil dapat yan ay bukas pa rin na larangan na lalo na ang mga sibilyan, ang mga non-combatants ay pwedeng itulak pareho ang gobyerno at ang NDF na uh, magkaroon ng uh, kasunduan. But having said that, uh, Mr. Chairman uh, and Secretary, um, uh, I uh, thank you for the Secretary's responses about the national plan. In fact, in the middle of the pandemic, when almost every government department, agency, and office has had its budget cut, we're allocating 19 billion pesos 
uh, supposedly to resolve the long-running communist insurgency. I'd like an honest threat assessment, Secretary, Mr. Chairman. How great a national security risk is the longest running or the long-running communist insurgency led by the CPP, NPA, and BF. Uh, are the communist rebels a clear and present danger to the country? Is our duly elected uh, democratic government at risk of being encircled in the city from the countryside? Uh, Secretary, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, yes. Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, una -una, mm -hmm. gusto ko lang sabihin na ang pag-address, uh, pag-asikaso sa mga problema na dulot ng pandemic, COVID-19, ay binibigyan natin ng diin. Kung kaya nga ang Kongreso ay nagpalabas na nga ng bayanihan 1 and 2 upang talagang maagapan natin yung ating problema sa COVID. Karamihan hmm. sa amin dito ay halimbawa si Secretary Lorenzana, siya ang Task Force Commander ng National Task Force COVID. Pero hmm. membro kami ng Interagency Task Force. At uh, hindi lang minsan sa isang linggo kung mag-meeting uh, mag kami. At ang Pangulo naman ay lumalabas ng kada linggo upang, pag, uh, upang sabihin sa bayan kung anong ginagawa ng gobyerno patungkol sa COVID-19. We are aware that COVID-19 is a clear and present danger. Kung kaya nga... Pero yung communist insurgency po, Secretary... Sa 500 billion. 500 billion emergency. Ngunit, sa gitna ng lahat ng ito, mayroon pa rin tayong number one political security threat. At ang Yan po yung number na, one, Secretary. Ako, na rin mismo nagsasabi, at ang Pangulo mismo nagsabi, na ang number one threat, political security threat, ay ang CPP, NPA, and DF. Hindi Secretary, ibig po, bang, yes, ibig po bang sabihin na yung bansa natin ay humaharap sa mas malalaking risk mula sa internal kesa sa external threats? Uh, ibig po bang sabihin din na uh, yes. tingin nyo mo na yung ating militar ay primarily dapat nakafocus sa counterinsurgency mission sa 2021 and beyond? That is the dictate of the situation. How we wish mm -hmm. as a former chief of staff na inaasikaso ko lang ay yung aatake sa ating teritorya. Ngunit okay. hindi ganun ang totoong nangyayari. Unang-una, meron tayong insurgency kaya ang inyong armed forces ay nagtutuon ng pansin dyan. Ano naman ang sasabihin nyo sa amin kung yung armed forces at saka police meron na ngang patayan dun sa mga barangay kung saan-saan uh, mayroong assassination dito sa Metro Manila. Alam nyo naman uh, kung sino yung mga pinagpapatay dyan sa loob ng Quezon Memorial uh, Circle na mga top uh, leaders ng CPP and PA at uh, yung AP. Si Rolly uh, the Quintanar day. decades ago. Anong okay. gagawin po namin? Yung police ninyo at saka military. Sasabihin yes, namin na secretary. hindi ba yung bagay Sige po, pag-usapan uh, so natin ang insurgency. Yes, uh, secretary. So, by the situation. Let's, yes, let's talk about the situation of the insurgency. Um, secretary, nung kayo nga po ang hepe ng Armed Forces of the Philippines, uh, taong 2006 in particular, hindi po ba sinabi nyo noon na yung militar ay iwa-wipe out ang New People's Army sa loob ng tatlong taon? Hindi po ba sinabi yes. nyo noon yung yes. tungkol sa ating AFP? All right. And, and hindi nyo rin po ba... To, it yes? is never wrong to have some targets. Yes, some, agree. Some agree. Agree. And hindi nyo po ba sinabi noon na yung lakas ng mga rebelde ay drastically nabawasan uh, pasalamat sa off-plan na pin, uh, pinangala ng Bantay Laya? Hindi po ba? Totoo po yun. Totoo po yun. Nabawasan sila from uh, 6,000 naging uh, 4,000 plus. Ngunit Opo. may mga sumusunod hindi... pa rin mga na-recruit. Dahil uh -huh. nga ang nag-recruit ay mga iba ibang organisasyon. Okay. Yun ang gusto namin mapigilan at isiwalat dito sa hearing na ito. Tapos po, hindi natin nung... aawatin ang recruitment ay tuloy-tuloy hmm. pa rin itong ating insurgency. At hindi po ba din, Secretary, nung 2008 naman, sinabi nyo na uh, bubuwagin nyo, tear down ninyo yung labindlimang NPA front sa loob ng tatlong buwan? Uh, na meet po ba yung mga layunin na yan? 2002? 
Ah, Mel Secretary, ayon sa aking research 2008, na meet po ba yung mga layuning iyon? Labing limang NPA front sa loob ng tatlong yes. buwan? Yes, yes. They yes. were. They There were about 70 grilla plants at that time. Yes. So, okay. Bawas ito. So, dapat mga 55 na lang nung taong 2008. Mas recent, Sir, Secretary? Pa rin mga nabubuong bago In, okay. dahil nga tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang pagrekruta. Okay, Secretary. Uh, yun ang ating gustong pigilan. Dahil hanggat mayroong mga organisasyon na nagre-recruit mm. at sumusuporta sa New People's Army mm. ay magkakaroon pa rin ng mga armado na mm -hmm. ng mga estudyante na sa simula ay aktivista ay nagiging NPA. Alam po namin yan dahil ako mismo ay kasama sa first quarter storm po eh. Ha. Secretary, Pero, more hindi recent... ako ng armas. Opo, marami At pong ako, marami pong aktivista na hindi humawak noon o humahawak ngayon ng armas. More recently, more recently, Secretary, uh, nanumpa po ang Philippine Army na Kikilo siya double time para in-neutralize yung natitirang, uh, quote, 15 armed fighters of the New People's Army still running and hiding in the mountains of Leyte Island, close quote. In 2018, uh, sinabi po ng armed forces na optimistic siya na yung insurgency problem ng ating bansa ay mareresolve soon. Uh, at uh, tinukoy ng AFP noon yung na nababawasang lakas kung hindi man imminent defeat and I use the term imminent defeat sa aking um, brief opening statement kanina, Secretary, imminent defeat ng NPA at ito po ay pagkatapos ng surrender ng 326 na NPA guerrillas, tapos September 2019, iniulat din na may pitong daang uh, guerrilla na nag-surrender bilang National Security Advisor ngayon po Secretary, uh, do you stand by these assessments? Yes, uh, that was the assessment of the military in Leyte. Okay. I think 2018, yes. uh, tapos na yata mag-chief of staff si Secretary Anyono. Pero ganito, okay. Madam okay. Senator, so, Mr. Chair. Opo. Okay. Sinabi so, namin yon sa Leyte na tata, maalis namin yung NPA. Totoo mm. nga na maalis namin at yung barangay ay na kung saan nagpupugad sa mga guerrilla bases mm. ang NPA. ay aming mm -hmm. naklaro dahil meron kaming tinatawag na community support program ay na ngayon ay pinangungunahan na ng local government at ang kapulisan yung retreat community support program. Hindi na military, kundi so, combined okay. military. Ngunit, mm -hmm. maklear man natin yung mga barangay kung wala kang ilalagay doon na mm -hmm. development o para mm -hmm. iangat ang kabuhayan ng mga tao, ay babalik-balikan ng mga tao ng mga NPA yan. Kaya ngayon, Pero tell me, Secretary. Sa kabinete, uh, yeah. na maglagay kami ng development program at inaprobahan ng Pangulo. Nandiyan na nga sa budget well, ngayon, yung 16.4 billion for development projects in barangays. At nagtataka ako kung bakit ayaw ninyo ma-develop yung mga barangay na yan. Ah, no, no, no. Alam Mr. Naman natin, Secretary, Mr. Chairman, Thank ito po ay... Tayo, no, 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 no. Mr. Secretary, Mr. Chairman, oh, yeah. ito po sorry, ay pagtinig. Uh, yes, Mr. Secretary, uh, thank you for your apology. I accept it because for the record, Mr. Chairman, ito po ay pagdinig ng isang komite ng Senado at tayo po ay nagtatanong sa ating mga resource persons kasama na ang good secretary at hindi po ito larangan para akusahan nila tayo na ayaw natin ng ganito o ganyan na programa ng gobyerno na magtatrabaho nga tayo double time na habulin matapos ang isang budget sa 2021 na sinabi niyo pa rin na billion eh. Just Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm still addressing yes, the chair, Secretary. Tayo po. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, ang itatang ko sa Secretary, Uh, dahil kami po sa Senado ay we started on time, we kept our eye on the ball, tatapusin namin on time ang budget para sa ating gobyerno sa taong 2021 na COVID responsive, recession responsive at democracy responsive. So sa tingin, sabihin nyo, maaari nyo po bang sabihin sa akin, Secretary, do 15 rebels in the mountains of Leyte 
the remnants of an insurgency facing imminent defeat in ulit ko imminent defeat ang hinaharap nila sa battlefield para bang 19 billion peso problem sa inyo yon secretary oh, mr chairman pinag-uusapan na mr chairman may i know okay please, please yes please mr uh, i mean Madam please, secretary Senator, hindi lang po late ang pinaglalaanan natin ng 16.44 billion yes so fair enough. nationwide na 822 barangays Hmm. na inoperatean ng ating kapulisan at ang hmm. ating armed forces at local government. Hmm. Clear nila ito ng 2016 to 2019. Sinasabi niyo na kanina, clear na, na yun, pagkati kasama hmm. na dyan. Anong so, gagawin natin sa mga barangay nato, na, na ito? Iiwanan na natin para lumipat ah. na yung tropa? O Definitely gusto hindi yung lang natin ang development? Lalo no, na yung no, no. mga pobreng uh, barangay sa Samar at sa Kalete. Gusto niyo iwanan na natin? Precisely, Mr. Chairman, okay. Secretary. Kaya oh, ako sinabi na parang... Eh, ko, nine, Mr. Chairman? Hello? I mean, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Senator. Mr. Secretary, yes, Mr. Mr. can we wait for the Senator to finish her question? Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, you uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, kaya nga po sinabi ko kanina, Mr. Chairman Secretary, na parang uh, 1980s ang dating, parang throwback Tuesday. Dahil yung clearhold consolidate develop natin dati, I think yung isang naging leksyon natin ay lalo na yung uh, uh, consolidate at lalong-lalo na yung develop. Trabaho na yan ng civilian government. And the past many years, ganun yung klase ng budget na pinapasa namin uh, dito sa uh, Kongreso. So speaking of the clear and uh, lalong-lalo na yung clear saka yung hold na may, may bahagi pa rin doon yung uh, AFP uh, and then yung hanggang consolidate, nandyan yung PNP of course. Just focusing on the AFP, uh, Mr. Chairman Secretary, magkano po yung gagastusin ng AFP sa kanyang modernization program sa 2021 at dito gusto ko nang bigyan ng diin yung external defense natin magkano sa amount na ito sa uh, modernization budget natin ay para sa layunin ng depensa laban sa external threats uh, Mr. Chairman bago Secretary po, Bago po ipasa kay sa mga dapat na sumagot niyan ay sasabihin ko lang po sa inyo Madam Senator hindi po ako military retired po ako, civilian na po ako Opo Opo, Kaya but still, ang, dahil ay, national ay, defense ay, advisor. Ay, national Task Force LCAP, civilian po ako at ang kasamahan namin sa National Task Force LCAP ay government agencies. Isang cluster out of the 12 ang military at saka police. Whole yes. of nation approach ko ito. Opo. Kaya mali ko sa akin. Anong kinagastos ng armed forces uh, para sa depensa natin ay mas kinaalam ko yan. Palay ko mas alam ni Senator, uh, sen ni Secretary uh, Lorenzana at saka ni General General Gapay. Alright. Mas kinakalang ko yan, sasagutin ko yan. Pero uh, hindi na ako ang military, uh, Madam Senator. Uh, retired na po ako. Kaya pwede akong turmabaho ng civilian activities. Oh, definitely. And uh, kaya kayo ipapoint ng appointing uh, authority. Ye yes, so, Mr. Chair. You address the chair when you respond to the Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Chair. And certainly... Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. And and certainly, uh, this representation is aware that uh, our civilian officials are appointed by the appointing authority, as he is authorized to do by the Constitution. Pero in-exercise natin bilang bahagi ng Kongreso, yung oversight dun sa budget process at yung paggastos ng pera. Dahil uh, sa tingin ko lang po, no, uh, Mr. Chairman, bilang miyembro nitong Senado, overly... Uh, mabigat yung kamay uh, uh, sa loob ng uh, NTFL CAC sa isang programa which is actually dahil nga whole of government approach na sinabi ko sa simula ay sinusuportahan ko ay, ay mas properly iwan sa mga uh, um, national agencies na civilian, yung ating mga civilian a national agency. Nasabi ko rin po at naalala baka ito ni Secretary Anyo nung pagdinig natin sa budget ng DILG na uh, yung programa uh, ng NTFL CAC ay parang para nang whole of government program eh. At alam naman natin nandun na yung iba't ibang departamento kumikilos at nagko-coordinate na even before the NTFL CAC. Uh, para isulong yung, yung tugon natin sa roots of the armed conflict 
at i-develop yung mga area na na-clear na ng ating militar at uh, PNP. Yes, sir. So, we, yes, Mr. Chair. Just as a reminder that your time is up, so you may wind up. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Siguro, um, just by way of winding up, iput on record ko na lang yung mga huling tanong ko kung naisagutin either ni Secretary Esperon or ng ibang uh, resource persons natin um, uh, bilang pag think uh, bilang pag-isip pa rin dito sa ating hearing. So, why are we focusing on internal threats when a former chief of staff of the AFP has publicly stated that China will seize Philippine territory by force if a war were to break out between Beijing and Washington? At uh, ito particular, Sec Esperon, as National Security Advisor, do you think the Philippines has the capacity to project a credible defense posture against the most likely uh, external threats. Sino po ba talaga, Mr. Chairman, ang pinakamalaking banta sa ating pambansang seguridad? A waning insurgency or an external threat from a superpower country? At the same time, even this waning insurgency facing imminent defeat in the battlefield might still recover if we don't address issues of inaccessible healthcare and education, the uneven distribution of resources, and if we open our borders to China at the expense uh, of the livelihood of ordinary Filipinos. Masyado pong nakafocus sa Communist Party of the Philippines, Mr. Chairman, pero hinahayaan ang banta ng Communist Party of China. Marami pong salamat, Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat sa ating resource. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Would you like to respond, Secretary? Sir? Yes, please. Ah, tinatanong po ni uh, Madam Senator, Mr. Chair, kung sino ba talaga ang uh, mas malaking threat. Yung bang isang malaking uh, bayan na komunista o itong Communist Party of the Philippines? Ang tingin po, na, ang tingin po ng Presidente, ang number one political security threat ay ang Communist Party of the Philippines, NPA, NDF, because they seek to overthrow this, this democratically established uh, republic through armed revolution. At ginagawa na nga nila yan. Ginagawa na nila yan. Marami na, may NPA sila, armado. Meron silang mga prente na pinapatakbo ng mga underground uh, organizations. At mayroon silang mastermind. Clear and present danger din yan. Matagal na, 52 years na nga tayong pinapataog. Ngayon, kung tatanungin ninyo, kung may threat tayo na China, ang, sasa ang sagot ko dyan, mayroong bansang China at may mayroon siyang mga interest dito sa ating South China Sea o sa Pilipinas mismo. Ang panlaban ba natin dyan ay, ay pure military? Dahil kung gusto niyong pure military ang ilaban natin dyan, eh, ibigay niyo sa amin, ibibigay ba ninyo yung 4.5 trillion para panlaban, pang gera? Wala ba tayong pangangailangan sa COVID? Wala ba tayong pangangailangan sa ibang bagay? Doon ba natin ilalahat sa China? Samantala nakikipagkaibigan naman ang China. Ngunit, guardyado tayo. Dahil ang kanilang national interest at ang national interest natin ay hindi magkapareho. Pareho tayong may national interest. At lahat ng bansa ay may national interest, pati ang, ang Estados Unidos. Kailangan kausapin natin lahat yan. Ngunit itong CPP, NPA, NDF, alam na alam na natin na gustong pataubihin o ibahin ang democratic way of life ng Pilipinas, eh bakit pababayaan ba natin sila na ituloy nala ang kanilang armadong pakikibaka? Thank you, Secretary Mr. Mr. Chairman. Next is Senator De La Rosa. With your indulgence, uh, the Senate President would like to ask uh, his questions. Yes, uh, well, I was informed, uh, uh, Tama Tama, that uh, Senator De La Rosa has locked out temporarily. And uh, there were questions that he would want to pose to pose, uh, Ka Eric and uh, his companion. Uh, uh, now, related to that, I also have a question for uh, the intelligence community, sana, kila General Monteagudo, but mas mabuti kay Ka Eric na itanong, na samantalay natin naririto sila para maiwasan natin muna yung problema sa budget. Um, recently, there was a 17-year-old 
member child warrior ng CPP NPA who filed a rape complaint against their former commander. Sa mga pagkakaalam nyo, sa tagal ninyo doon, uh, ganong kabata ba yung mga nagiging uh, recruit? Magandang, magandang araw po, sir. Hi, Rick. Uh, mm -hmm. Senator President and uh, Mr. Chair, Senator Ping Lakson. Ako po si Jeffrey Celis. Uh, Ka-Eric po ang gamit. Jeffrey Celis, pero Ka-Eric ang tawag sa'yo. Ka-Eric po ang pangalan. Ang, ang, ang code ako, marami po kaming ginagamit na code. I will try to address directly first the question, and I will request the good senators to, to qualify some of my answers. Yung recruitment po ng kabataan sa CPP and PNDF, in my experience, based on doctrine, practice, and experience, nagsisimula po yan kung mga sa barrio ng mga kabataan, meaning sa rural areas, maaga po talaga, Senator, uh, Senate President, Sir. Kasi ang mga pamilya ng mga kabataan na ito, na tinatawag naming mass base, yung mga bata mismo as early as 8, 7, 6, before 10, kahalubilo po sila ng NPA eh. So, kaya nga sabi ko, ipokrito kami sa CPP, NPA, and DEF to assert international humanitarian law. Samantala mga granada at armas namin sa loob mismo ng bahay ng masa. At uh, kami ay nag assert ng CARIL, Comprehensive Agreement for the Respect of Human Rights and International Humanitarian Law, signed during the time of President Estrada, pero hindi namin sinasabi na ang aming mga granada at armas, natutulog kami mismo sa bahay ng masa. Pero pag sundalo at pulis, bawal matulog sa bahay ng sibilyan, sa chapel at sa mga schools. Dihado talaga sila sa amin. Kasi kami, we do not tie down our rules sa IHL. We only use the IHL and other humanitarian conventions and protocols of war when it is convenient for us. Halimbawa, landmine. Ayaw naming tawagin yan, Senator Winnyo, sa GPNP. As IED, gusto naming tawagin niya na CDX, Command Detonated Explosives. Because under the Ottawa Convention, in the Geneva Convention Protocol 1 and 2, gray area yan. Ang ipinagbabawal ay ang command detonated, uh, sorry, ang pressure detonated and automatic and time bound. But the pressure detonated or the command detonated na may switch gamit ang blasting cap at detonating cord, hindi siya outright na ipinagbabawal clearly sa Ottawa Convention and Conventions ng Geneva Convention. So, naikuta namin Sen. Uh, Soto, Sir, and uh, Sen. Ping. Sa tanong nyo po, paano na i-involve ang kabataan? Two ways. Kung sa barrio po, kahit hindi sila recruited dahil masa sila, mas base area yon. doon mismo kami nakatira. Doon kami mismo nag-organize, kasama namin ang mga magulang nila. So, the children are exposed to the horrors and dangers of war. Informal recruitment. Dalawang recruitment kasi ang kabataan, Sen. Soto, Sir, sa schools and universities, urban areas. And then the other side of recruitment sa mga barrio. Kapag schools and universities po, ang recruitment ay nagsisimula, usually sir, minor ka pa niyan eh. When I was recruited in the West Visayas State University, I was about to turn 18. Ang malala ngayon, nakita ko in the last 10 years. Papunta sana ako ng tanong dyan eh. Paano ka na-recruit? Saan ka nag-umbisa? Ano nangyari? Okay. Thank you, Senator Soto, sir. Na-recruit po ako sa... West Visaya State University. It is a premier state university sa Iloilo City. In 1991, ang unang organization na narecruit ay nagrecruit siya. Sino nagrecruit siya? Namatay po siya. Pinatay siya sa loob ng bus noong March 2019 last year. NDF consultant siya. Ang pangalan niya po ay Randy Felix Malayaw. He is also a good writer. Just uh, pareho kami mga college editors guild. Uh, he was arrested before on the case pertaining to the assassination of Congressman Rodolfo Aguinaldo. He was from Isabela. And uh, he, at the time of his death, nasa underground pa siya. Ako ay nag, nagtumutulong na security consultant to the government. Pero ang pag-recruit sa akin, I was not recruited directly to the CPP. Kaya natutuwa ako na nakikinig ako sa mga officials ngayon and the senators discussing things which are never known to public, even to the government themselves especially the military, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Sir, uh, Senator Soto, Sir. I mean, akala ko ang aming pagsama uh, sa aktivismo sa College Editors Guild of the Philippines, which is an open organization, ay laban lamang sa U.S. military bases. Kasi mainit ang talakayan noon sa pagpapata. The abrogation of the U.S. military bases 
91 ako na recruit eh. 1991. Oo, oh, so kasagsagan ng debate sa US military bases, transition from Cory government to Ramos government. So nang ma-recruit ako sa CGP, tuwang tuwa ako kasi these are things that I never learned in school. Ito mga itinuturo sa amin. But three months there after, Senator, uh, Mr. Chair, in-invite ako nila Randy Felix Malayao pagpalain sa ng kanyang kaluluwa. At na, hindi ko muna pangalanan yung ibang nag-invite kasi active pa po sa media. Mataas na rin ang katungkulan. We were students nung panahon na yun. Nang ma-recruit pa ako sa CGP, I was thinking, yun na yung pagiging aktivista. But three months into the recruitment, at least nakikinig ang buong bayan, ng buong bansa, mga nanay na nakikinig at kabataan, in-invite ako sa isang meeting sa boarding house, mga 12 kami. At sa meeting na yun, mga student editors, campus writers, at student leaders ang nandun, iba't ibang universities. Pagdating doon, hindi na pinag-aaralan ang US military bases. Pinag-aaralan namin ang libro ni Joe Masison. Wala pang, M wala pang MKLRP noon. Ang tawag pa noon, LRP. Lipuna na Tribulosyong Pilipino. In English, Philippine Society and Revolution by Amado Guerrero, the nom de guerre of Joe Masison. Yan ang, uh, yan ang Biblia. I can teach that without the book in one day, two days, three days, depending sa audience. And until now, memoria memoriado ko yung apat na portion. First part is national situation. Mayaman ang Pilipinas, kunit naghihirap ang sambay ng Pilipino. Second part, history. Ang kasaysayan ng pananakop at paglaban ng sambay ng Pilipino. Third part, tatlong ismo. Imperialismo, burokrata kapitalismo, feudalismo, tatlong salot ng lipunan. Yung fourth part ang pinakadelikado. DRB. Demokratikong revolusyong bayan ang tanging solusyon sa problema ng mamamayan. Dito ang radicalization. Akala ko, yun na yun. Manunumpa pala kami sa bandilang pula. Yellow ang nakalagay, triangle. May alibata siya. Alibata, everyone knows, is an ancient Filipino alphabet. Sir, President, anong organization ang pinasasapian mo noon bago ka na-recruit? Uh, si, wala, sir. I, I, I'm an ordinary, I was an ordinary student, Mr. Chair. I was a writer. I was part of the editorial board of Forum Dimensions. And I was recruited to the CGP advocating pong mga issues ng mamamayan. Pero nang manumpa po ako after that LRP session in a boarding house, Tago na ma-meeting yun, tago. We were, we were told that it was a CGP meeting, but it was not. It was not a CGP, CGP meeting, it was a meeting of Kabataang Makabayan, KM. KM was the organization founded by Joe Masison in 1964, November 30, when he was still part of the old PKP, Lumang Partido Komunista ng Pilipinas, sa panahon nila, Jose Jesus Vicente Laba. Joma was part of that. Joma is not the original CPP founder. The original CPP was in November 7, 1930, founded by Crisanto Evangelista. Every party member knows this, and the rest of the Makabayan bloc knows this. Yes, they're party members. We are the same. Sa tanong ni Mr. Chair, Mr. Soto, paano ko napunta sa CPP? KM is the first step to the CPP. From CEGP, you will not be recruited from open organizations direct to the CPP. There is no direct recruitment to the Communist Party. The recruitment will pass open organizations and then underground and then party. The underground is the consolidator for the armed struggle. It is the NDF. So the NDF is not innocent. It is a conspirator, enabler, collaborator of armed struggle. It is not a legitimate organization pretending to be legal, but rather it is an underground umbrella of all sectoral underground organizations, Senator, uh, Mr. Chair, like Kabataang Makabayan. In December of 91, I was again recruited, Mr. President and uh, Mr. Chair, I was again recruited to become candidate member of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Ako po'y dalawang beses na nanumpa sa CPP. 91 of December and May of 92. Kasi ang unang recruitment mo from the underground will be candidate member. No voting right ka sa loob ng partido. Pagka full member ka na prove na nila na hindi ka security threat at capable ka to be develop as a cadre, you will be recruited to become a full member. At doon ka i-recruit talaga at bibigyan ng pag-aaral. Sa panahon namin, ha, uh, kasama po yan sa summer immersion, I was recruited in the area of Ibaras, Iloilo. With uh, no less than... Uh, Yung mga regional party committee ng mga matatanda na mga 70s na nakita ko, sila mga instructor ko sa BKP, Batayang Kursong Pangpartido. Nabanggit mo kanina yung CEGP, College Editors Guild, di ba? Yes, sir. 
miyembro ka nito. Yun ang unang organization na sinalihan na, ko. Na salihan mo. Yes. So yun ang naging vehicle kung paano ka naispatan na ma-recruit. Because ang nagre-recruit at namumuno ng CGP are already cadre of the CPP. Which hindi nila ina-admit sa amin. We were thinking na pari-pariho kami mga writers. Nauna pong na-recruit si Randy Felix Malayaw sa akin. If you are asking for the historical reference of my authenticity, ang kapanahonan ko po ay si Teddy Casino. He was the national chair of C national president of CGP. I was the regional chairman of the CGP. Do I know him also to be to be part of the CPP? Hindi na po ako magpapakaipokrito, Mr. Chair, Mr. President. Yes, we were all CPP. They are still CPP. They are still part of the Communist Party. And worse, they deny it and they are not, they are not admitting it to the nation. That is why they are not here. I was supposed to meet him them here. Maganda sa nang nandito kami para lahat ng circumstances to be asked by Senate and to be known by the people ay masasagot. Mr. Chair, we are, I operated po sa dalawang mundo ng CPP na hindi po ito masyadong naiintindihan. From 91 to 2001, uh, Mr. Chair, Senator Ping, involved ka sa history ko. Ikaw po ang Chief PNP. Yun ang huli ko pong bahagi sa open mass movement ng pinatalsik namin si Pangulong Estrada. We organized, conspired, collaborated in a broad alliance to establish the era of resign movement. It is a known fact. It is part of history. It was a collaboration of the Communist Party, of the church leaders, of traditional opposition politicians na hinayaan ni Pangulong Estrada. At iyan po ay naging bahagi ako. I was a regional coordinator of era of resign movement. Nakikinig po sila ngayon. Papatayin nila ako sa lahat ng mga isinisiwalat ko. Hindi po kukuno ang buong araw natin sa lahat ng historical accounts ko na ito. Yan ang yung inaalala ko. Yung mukhang sa history mo, mabutin tayo maghapon. So, fast forward muna tayo. No? Doon sa main question ko kanina. <laughs> Dahil may 17 years old na child, former child warrior na, na kinasuhan ng rape yung commander niya. Ngayon, ang tanong ko, is this something that happens or that happened before? Ito ba yung mga... Uh, this kind of abuses and human rights uh, violations uh, done to the recruits, ah. or their commanders or leaders or the terrorist groups, nangyayari ba ito or isolated itong kaso ito? Uh, Mr. Senate President and uh, Mr. Chair, nangyayari po yan. Sabi ko nga, anong tatag mo sa Marxismo, Leninismo at Mawismo pag tinamaan ka ng prinsipyo ni Freud ng libido, malilimutan mo ang disiplina ng Marxismo, Leninismo at Mawismo. I, I confirm the uh, question of the Senate President. Nakaabuso ba mga way, kabataan sa babayihan? Yes. Uh, former Congressman Colmenares, ang request niya, kung pwedeng yung mga resource persons na mag-aakusa, dapat ito may personal knowledge. Tatunoyin kita ngayon, meron ka bang personal knowledge sa alinmang pangyayari na binabanggit mo? Ang, ang testimony ko po ay mayroon akong personal knowledge. And to Mr. Chair, with your, with your uh, indulgence, I would like to address also Mr. Nere Colmenares, my former comrade in the CPP. The personal knowledge required is only in the court of law, sa trial sa court. Kaya ayaw nyo kami humarap sa Senado at lumabas sa media kami mga kasama nyo because malalantad kayo. And in the court of law, of law in the judicial requirement, Mr. Senator, required kami doon na magproduce on the weight of evidence based on the rules of evidence ng korte, yun ang gusto nila. Itatali ang kamay namin. Sa tanong ni Mr. Chair, and Senate President, we have, do we have enough knowledge of the things that we want to testify before the people in the Senate? Yes, we have. Uh, depende po sa itatanong nyo at ibibigay nyo ang panahon. Sasagutin ko lang po, Mr. Chair, Senate President, ang pinanong oh, Kung uh, nangyayari ito before, hanggang ngayon nangyayari ba ito? Nangyayari po yan, uh, Mr. Senate President, matagal na. Uh, although, in fairness to the NPA, kapag ikaw ay nahuli na, na ng rape, pinapatay ka namin. Uh, that is death sentence. That is automatic death sentence. Pero dahil uh, yung ibang nagkukumit ng rape and abuse sa mga miyembro na NPA na kababaihan, lalo na kabataan, ay mga matataas ang katungkulan sa partido at sa NPA. Mr. Senate President, pwedeng itago po yan. At yan ang nangyari sa dalawang bata na magkakapatid sa Leyte ngayon. Ilang taon silang inabuso. And I am not at liberty to discuss that kasi right at the halls of Congress, right of Senate right now, siya po ay naging biktima din. But baka sensitive yan, hindi ko alam ko na sa television tayo. If you want direct testimony for that, nandito rin siya sa Senate ngayon. NPA siya, kabataan siya ng ma-recruit. 
at uh, tanungin niyo siya po mamaya I, I think baka i-suspend natin ang uh, ang coverage or rules sa executive session kung anong detalye pero sa sagot sa tanong ni Senate President yes the abuse and the the vulnerability of children and uh, mga minor na NPA na nare-recruit nangyayari nangyayari po ang, ang kinababahala ko Mr. Senate President and Mr. Chair in the last eight years on the recovered document from Big Ladlad the acting Secretary General of the Communist Party nang mahuli siya sa Novaleches proud na proud sila that they were able to recruit in three years ng walong libong kabataan muli in the underground movement at ang mostly senior high school from PUP UST FEU ito yung umiyak dito sa Senado they were not crying ladies for nothing they were grieving mothers like our mothers na umiiyak ng kami naglayas at nag full time sa NPA during our time nangyayari po ito ngayon dokumento ito ng CPP NPA in the last three years 2016 17 and 18 hanggang 19 more than 8,000 na kabataan senators Mr. Chair and, and uh, Senate President ang recruit nila from the from the document mismo ni Vic Ladlad nakuha ito at ang karamihan senior high school which means 16 and 17 years old and I share the concern of the Senate President right now yes um, it is really uh, alarming uh, na nangyayari nga pala pa pala ito ngayon uh, ilang taon na po ba kayo if you don't mind may ask him. Ako po'y pinanganak noong October 14, 1971. Libra pong so Jack Sain ko. Ako'y 49 years old. 1971. Medyo bata ka pa. Hindi ka... Uh, Ka-birthday ko po si uh, Mr. Joey De Leon, a very good artist. Ah, okay. Pero kalinya, hindi mo kalinya kami nila Senator Lacson at saka ni Librad, no? Secretary Del. Uh, medyo bata-bata ka pa. So, kasi bigla akong nag-alala at naalala ko rin, parang reminder sa akin, nung araw, Natatandaan ko kasi, pagka hindi ninyo alam, kaming mga edad na ganito naalala namin, na dapat talaga nag-iingat yung ating mga kabataan. Dahil nung araw, may mga beauty queens na sumali sa ano, sumanib eh. Ano, uh, nagbago ang buhay nila eh. No? Uh, kaya dapat sabihan nga talaga na medyo pag-aralan natin mabuti mga kilos natin, lalo sa ating kabataan. Na, hindi nyo siguro kilala si Maita Gomez, ano? Ah, si Nelia Sancho. Hindi, hindi ko, Nelia Sancho. Mr. Senate President, hindi ko siya inabutan, but I confirm, they were part of the CPP and PA. Oh, beauty queen. Maita Gomez, oh. si Nelia Sancho. Uh, hindi, yung iba po, mga magaganda talaga, sinabi ko, because ninyari ng negro, as magaganda yan eh. Oh. Marami magaganda sa NPA, kaya maganda ang asawa ko po. Kaya nga, may bali, paalala uh, natin Mr. yung... Mr. Senate President, ikaw ba'y nag-surrender, nahuli? Paano ka ba nakatiwalag? Very different po ang circumstance ko as Mr. Chair and Senate President, uh, hindi po ako na-captured. Hindi rin po ako uh, arrested kasi wala ako sa warrant of arrest. Pero nasa order of battle ako. Uh, Naglaylo ako, nag-awol ako. Ang last unit ko po from the era resigned movement, I was deployed in 2002, September. Yeah, September. So you were never a combatant? No, never deployed, ka naging combatant? Naging part po ako ng NPA National Operational Command. I was part of the N2. NPA National Operational Command. Kapanahonan so, ko po. Ito, water under the bridge, ano? total nasa kamay ka na naman ng uh, gobyerno. Nakapag-participate ka sa mga armed encounters? Uh, am I protected? <laughs> Isa po sa mga yeah. naging trabaho. Mga details, ano? general question. Meron po. Uh, yes, isa doon po. Don't isa... keep details anymore. Sir? Hindi ko kailangan ng detalye. Yeah. Yes or no lang? Yes. Nakapag-participate ka rin sa mga ambuscades? Yes, sir. Nakapag-participate ka rin sa mga depredations like uh, yung mga unarmed civilians? Yes, sir. Thank you. And, uh, sir, if you may, Mr. Chair, Mr. President. Uh, before you uh, you continue, baka tayo ba layo sa inyong sinasabi ko tungkol sa mga bataan. Papaalala ko lang yung sinabi ni Rizal. Naalala mo ba yun? Sinasabi ni Rizal na kapag yung paru-paru ay eh, na-attract sa kandila ano at uh, hindi nag-ingat maring mapahamak uh, go ahead uh, sir ang last unit ko po ay National Operational Command ng NPA buong Pilipinas po ako po ay napailalim sa N2 I did a lot of things under that unit na missing po yung mga kasama ko uh, sina Prudencio Calubid the legend of Samar 
and Leo Velasco. Yung asawa niya si Elizabeth Principi. Yeah, si Leo Velasco ay namising sa Cagayan de Oro sa Limkitkay. Sa, yeah, Limkitkay. Uh, hindi ko na po ina-refer si Noong Chief of Staff that time. Uh, <laughs> digmaan po yung sinumahan ko. Yung binabanggit kanina dito, yung Kamameshe Restaurant sa Quezon Memorial Circle. Yeah, si Romulo Quintanar. Hindi na po ako magdidetalye, pero redemption ko po ito ngayon. And I'm, I'm very happy, Mr. Chair, Mr. Senate President, for me to liberate myself, myself, ourselves, from the demons playing in our conscience for the many sins that we have committed to the people. Maraming salamat po, uh, Mr. Chair. Popoy so, Lagman. Sir? Popoy Lagman. Popoy Lagman was never assassinated by the NPA. I will not tell kung sino alam din namin. Pero hindi NPA. Hindi NPA po. Tabara, yes. Sa Fairview, SM uh, Fairview po. Arthur, Arthur Tabara. Yes po. Rolly Quintanar po. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah, si Rolly Abadilla. Yeah, Ro Rolly Quintanar was a major project. Yeah, Abadilla. Rolly Abadilla. Abadilla. Hindi po, sir. Rolando Abadilla. <laughs> Hindi po, sir. You will learn a lot from us, sir, pero ABB. Yeah. ABB. Uh, sir, uh, one minute, Mr. Chair, uh, if I may. I am very happy, we're very happy, maybe ma marinig din mamaya si Kashin. Mas younger siya sa akin, and uh, she has a lot of testimonies to tell. Baka mas mayayanig mamaya ang marinig mula sa kanya. Ang message ko lang is very clear. Napakagandang pagkakataon po ito upang mag-unite ang buong bayan at ang gobyerno, ang Senado, ang Kongreso, ang Executive, and even the Judiciary. For us to stand against the CPP and PNDF. Sa tanong, sir, from the perspective of a former cadre, anong kapabilidad ng CPP and PNDF? They cannot overthrow the government, but they can make Smart and Globe pay 200 million more every year combined. Is that not a threat? They can make 300 to 400 million from the NGO racket coming in. I'm telling you that's an open secret. Yeah, correct po. And they can make Triple A contractors na gumagawa ng mga airport, ports, mga yan. Again, that's an open secret. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 2% yung cut ng NPA sa mga intra. Naging 3 na ba? Oh. I confirm, sir, 2%. Uh, 2% but there is a document, sir, 3.5. So, sa lahat ng intra, walang under, lalo sa mga influence, kung walang 2% from the contractor. That's in addition to the 10% of the congressmen. Agree, sir. At ang source, sir, I will reveal... Not Secretary Villa. Some, some congressmen, by the way. I'd, I'd like to qualify. Yeah, that. some congressmen. At ang source po ng information namin, Senate, Senate President, Mr. Chair, kung paano namin nalalaman ang mga projects, saan ang location, magkano ang cost, sinong project nito, ang manager, DPWH. The information on the extortion, if there is one single biggest mafia-style, highly organized, most prolific extortion machinery to come before the face of the earth, it's the CPP and PNDF. At hindi yan napipigilan ng ating government. So, the, so papano din it? Sorry, Mr. Senate President, curious lang. Papano naririmit yan? At saan? Magkano na pupunta, o magkano, ilang porsyento na pupunta sa the Netherlands? Ilan yung nagagamit dito sa operation dito sa local? Ang sa Smart and Globe po ay bank remittance pero outside the Philippines. Yeah. Ilang percent? Alibaba, sa 300 million per year. Ilang porsyento doon o magkano ang napupunta doon sa The Hague? Okay. Ang policy po is pag-regional operations finance, 40% um, i-remit sa Central Committee, 60% sa region. It's 40-60. When you say Central Committee, yung Central Committee dito, yeah. ang tinatanong ko, from the 40%, ilang percent yung pumupunta sa Netherlands? Uh, hindi ko po masagot categorical, pero tama po kayo sa inyong uh, uh, very logical questions, Mr. Chair. May napupunta po sa Netherlands kasi nandun ang CPP International Department Nandun si Joma sa Barrio Utrecht, the Netherlands, sa Barangay Utrecht. At uh, tama po may napupunta doon. At ang napupunta doon, sir, ang naririnig ko na nandun dito pa ako, hindi po bababa sa 50% ng mga nakikita dito naririmit doon. So, yun po, that is very clear. At ang pinakamasakit po, the CPP and PNDF are able to circumvent the anti-money laundering council because we are able to establish web network of conduit NGOs that can that can channel funds amounting to 300 to 400 million coming from uh, partners from Belgium, Netherlands, 
uh, Europe, etc. With the further intelligence of the Senate President, Kusulay Porso, do you have a list of the NGOs naging conduit para to circumvent the anti-money laundering law? Yes, uh, I think you don't the... need to tell this committee right now. Pwede sabit na lang yan. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we will. We will do, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, Have guidance. you furnished the anti-money, or at least through Nika or whoever is handling you, nakarating na ba sa anti-money laundering council yan? Yes, sir. We will comply. Okay. I will not ask any further questions in that regarding. Thank you, Mr. President. Sig siguro na lang, just a manifestation uh, also. Na baka ngayon may intindihan ng mga nagtatanong. Bakit daw yung mga telcos mahilig maglagay ng cell site sa mga kampo, sa mga military camp? Ano? Yan ang sagot. Kasi pag hindi sa military camp, piperwisyuin. Buwumbahin, susunugin, wawasakin. Buwumbahin, susunugin, wawasakin. Mr. Mr. Hindi, President. Yeah, Mr. Pre Mr. Senate President, Mr. Chair. The Armed Forces and the Philippine National Police cannot be the private security guard of Smart and, and Globe. Oh. So yung mga nagtatanong kung bakit sa kampo, yun ang sagot. Hindi dahil gustong i-monitor ng China ang uh, military. Ano? The, the weaknesses of the government, security sector to secure, Mr. President, Mr. Chair, the facilities and infrastructure of uh, these telecommunications. Kasi under the law, bawal man maging security guard ng smart at globe at mga private companies, ang police at ang army at ang, ang armed forces. So the weakness of that, manipis at maliit ang ating armed forces, malawak ang area, they cannot really secure every critical infrastructure. It becomes yeah. favorable to the operations of the enemy. Right. With, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, uh, yung tanong kong original kay, ka, kay Jeffrey, <laughs> kay ka Eric, ay pwede ko itanong kay Ms. Miranda. Um, uh, ano po ba ang tawag sa inyo nung araw? Tanon po, Mr. President. Uh, ang... Talagang tawag po sa akin noon nung aktivista pa po ako is Lady Miranda. Anak bayan, chairperson po ako ng anak bayan, Central Luzon. Lady Miranda. Yes okay. po. Yung punta nung sa, sa kanya na nagkaso nag, uh, nag po ng rape yung isang uh, former warrior ng ano, uh, uh, warrior ng uh, NPA na, na babae, 17 years old. Chinarch yung commander niya ng rape. Nangyayari ba ito? Nangyayari yes, ba sa mga alam niyo? Yes po, Mr. Senate President. Uh, isa po ako sa bu buhay na patunay ng pang-aabuso sa loob ng kilosan. Not just once, but thrice. In, no, no, mga kasama ninyo o mga official? O officer po. Mga commander po namin. Eh, akala ko ba pinapatay yung ano, death penalty yung uh, mga rerit? Yun nga po yung masakit, Mr. Pre uh, Senate President. Kasi po, Ang paniniwala ko din po nung una is ganun. Akala namin, uh, protektahan ng kilosan yung mga kabab kabataan, kababaihan in terms of rights ng mga kababaihan, lalo sa violence. Pero yun nga pong masakit, inilaan ko yung buhay ko sa loob ng kilosan. From 14 years old po ako, tapos po 18 na ko nung nag-NPA. Doon ko po naranasan na yung Uh, napagsamantalahan po nung CEO namin. 19 years old lang po ako nung panahon na yon. Naulit po yon nung ako ay 20 years old. Tapos po, nung hindi ko na po kinayo yung depression dahil sa sunod-sunod na pangyayari na yon, pinaratangan po ako na nababalyo. At mayroon daw po akong PTSD tsaka pa polar tendency at sinabihan pa nila ako na parang may sex, dis uh, sex dis or disorder daw po ako. Sex addict daw po ako. Kaya yun yung naging reason ba't nila ako pinauwi. Kasi delikado daw ako sa mga kasal kasamang lalaki kasi baka gapangin ko daw sila. So binaligtad ang usapan. Ha? So at ito hindi lang sa'yo experience mo. Nakikita mo sa mga kasama mo, nangyayari din sa iba't ibang lugar sa Pilipinas? Yes po, Mr. Senate President. Uh, yung isa pong commander po namin na babae, dumagat po siya. Bagong sampal lang po siya noon, nung nirape din po siya, nung vice CEO din po nila. Kwento din po niya sa akin yun noon. Kasi po may talakayang babae po kami na nagaganap sa loob ng NPA. Doon po namin sinishare yung mga karanasan namin bilang mga babae, simula nung sibilyang kami hanggang nung mag-NPA kami. Kaya doon po nila sinare sa amin yung iba't ibang mga pang-aabuso din na nararanasan sa loob ng kilusan. Kaya nung naranasan ko po yun, mas doon ako naniwala na totoo pala. 
wala silang ginawa doon sa mga nang abuso na yan. Doon sa iba, pati sa iyo, wala silang ginawa. Giniilang po nila dahil mga CEO po yun, tinanggal lang po nila sa pagka-CEO. Um, 14 years old ka nung ma-recruit ka. Ano, sa, paano ka na-recruit? Katulad ng tanong namin kay Kairi, ano, nang, nang, paano nangyari? Parang ganun din po, ang kaibahan lang po, out of school youth po ako. Mr. Senate President. Uh, 14 years old po ako nung na-recruit po ako sa anak bayan. Ang recruiter ko po noon, yung, kung naalala nyo po, yung nakulong na dalawang UP student po sa Karanglan Nueva Ecija, si Gerald Salonga at si Jerry Ka, uh, Giller Cadano. Sila po yung mga recruiter ko. Si Gerald Salonga o si Kuya Jerry, siya po yung nag-recruit sa akin noon. February 2011, ni-recruit niya ako doon sa amin sa community. Out of school youth po ako noon. Inidiscuss niya sa amin yung tungkol sa karapatan ng mga kabataan tungkol sa edukasyon. Dahil nga po, out of school youth kaming magkakaibigan, madali kaming naniwala. At noong una, hindi po namin alam na uh, aktivista pala sila, yung anak bayan. Nalaman ko na lang po na aktivista sila nung, nung tatay ko mismo yung nag-explain sa akin. Kasi po dati din po yung father ko na nasa loob ng kilusan. Pero iniwan mo yung magulang mo, sumama ka sa kanila. Yes po. Uh, ang totoo po niyan, pinalayas po ako ng tatay ko. Kasi yung tatay ko po, ayaw niya mag-full time ako. Sabi sa akin ng father ko, pwede lang ang sumama sa kanila sa mga rally, ganyan. Pero huwag kang mag-full time. Kasi alam po nung tatay ko kung ano talaga yung nangyayari sa loob ng kilusan. Kasi saan mo kayong probinsya? Taga Pampanga po ako, Mr. Senate President. Thank you. Salamat. Uh, yeah, thank uh, you. Kalady. Senator De La Rosa, it's your turn. <laughs> Senator Bato. Senator Manny Pacquiao. Ayan. Senator Manny, are you there? Senator Kiko Pangilinan is recognized. Thank you, um, Sir Chairman. Um, maraming salamat at uh, magandang araw. Uh, I have a few questions for uh, some of our resource persons. Uh, um, ako po ay naniniwala na uh, tama lang ang ating uh, uh, Armed Forces of the Philippines sa kanilang concern regarding uh, internal threats sa ating bansa. At uh, dapat lang uh, bilang protector ng ating mga kababayan uh, under our constitution, uh, indeed, internal threats should be addressed and effectively uh, uh, confronted. Uh, by the armed forces of the Philippines. Uh, of course, apart from internal threats, uh, external threats too should be a primary concern and responsibility of the armed forces. We all agree that our armed forces has to be an effective fighting force to protect our sovereignty as a nation. Dangan nga lang, may mga ilang mga insidente o mga uh, mga pangyayari, uh, which uh, as part of our responsibility uh, as senators uh, and as a uh, co-equal branch of our government, uh, we act as a check. And I, uh, this representation feels that uh, there are concerns regarding this uh, latest uh, uh, red tagging or uh, um, the, the uh, linking of uh, celebrities, for example, uh, to uh, 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 radical organizations uh, and uh, what appears initially to be a threat to their security, I mean, threat to the celebrities, is a cause also of concern. Pinag-usapan uh, kanina yung red tagging. Ako ay naging aktivista sa UP nung panahon ng diktadura. Uh, doon pa lang uh, nararamdaman, nararamdaman na natin itong uh, uh, red tagging. In fact, si uh, Ninoy Aquino, Liberal Party Secretary General, inaresto ng pito at uh, nakakulong ng walong taon halos, nasintensahan ng death penalty kasama ang mga akusadong communi communist uh, rebels. 
sabay nga pa sabay nga sila nga uh, sinentensyahan ng death penalty ni Bernabe Buscay no who was uh, uh, NPA head as well as uh, Victor Corpus at ang sistema ng diktadura noon ay dinidikit ang oposisyon yung uh, opposition senators sa pagiging komunista uh, naging uh, Katakataka yung red tagging dahil uh, nung una si Senator Aquino, Ninoy Aquino ay binansagang uh, in collaboration with the communist tapos nung siya umuwi nung uh, August 1983 nagkaroon na naman ng red tagging dahil uh, ang pumatay sa kanya di umano na si Rolly Galman ang sabi ng uh, uh, Marcos regime ay isang communist hitman. Uh, itong pagdidikit ng uh, personalidad sa oposisyon sa mga komunista noong unang panahon pa yun. In fact, uh, uh, when General Parlad's name cropped up uh, with his controversial uh, post on Facebook, ay uh, naalala ko, it's the same General Parlade who accused the Liberal Party in 2018 of being Uh, in cahoots with the Communist Party uh, to oust uh, President Duterte in a plan called uh, Red October. But when we raised this issue with the uh, Secretary of National Defense and the, uh, Sec the Armed Forces Chief of Staff then in the budget hearing of 2018, uh, they both denied uh, and said categorically that the Liberal Party had no uh, involvement in this Red October plot. I, I raise all these points because precisely we in the Liberal Party have in many occasions in the past been uh, red tag, uh, accused of conspiracies, and uh, uh, even without basis. So ito ang uh, ating concern dito. Yung pag uh, re tag o pag akusa o pag uh, yung banta, kanina nabanggit ni uh, Senator Grace po, yung tanong kay uh, Mr. Uh, General Parlade, kung nabanggit nga ba niya yung you will end up or else you will, in fact will, hindi nga may, you will end up like uh, itong uh, aktivistang pinatay. Uh, you know, these are uh, serious concerns. And serious enough for uh, no less than our Secretary of National Defense to admonish uh, the good general. Uh, I really have no questions at this point. I can, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted the manifestation that we have to be very careful. The Armed Forces of the Philippines as an institution is a professional organization. Uh, we have to be very careful with the words uh, that we pronounce. Being spokesperson of this entity, of this uh, uh, task force, uh, carries a lot of weight. And to say that Liza Soberano should stop doing what she's doing, otherwise she will end up being killed like some, some other activist, uh, I, I think was, uh, uh, was uncalled for. Uh, also linking us, the Liberal Party, to ouster plots, publicly stated, opposition figures in the Liberal Party, we believe then was without basis and uncalled for. And thankfully, The AFP and the DND establishment is not a monolithic organization and that uh, this was immediately uh, denied and categorical statements from the AFP chief of staff then, uh, uh, General Galvez and uh, Secretary Lorenzana belied such accusations. Our concern is uh, we hope you know, that the uh, General Parlade will be careful in his uh, public pronouncements uh, This is not the first time that uh, a public pronouncement has created uh, quite a controversy in Easter. We really have no questions, uh, Mr. Chairman. We just we support the armed forces of the Philippines. We want the armed forces of the Philippines to be an effective force to fight both external and internal threats of, to our country. We understand and we believe that the AFP as an institution is a professional organization. And as a professional organization, we expect precisely uh, uh, that it conduct itself in a professional uh, manner. 
and that if there are uh, gaps or lapses, that we expect an organization like any other organization that it will correct itself and uh, will address these gaps. Um, we have no, no other questions, Mr. Chairman. We just wanted to make that manifest. Thank you, Senator Pangilinan. Uh, kanina sa briefing, meron ka nabanggit na three courses, ano, basic party course, imir, im, uh, intermediate party course, advanced party course. Ang tanong ko is, what transpire in each of these uh, courses? Maybe si Ka Eric or sino yung mas knowledgeable? Paano na indoctrinate? Gusto ko lang malaman. Yes, sir. The basic party course, uh, intermediate party course, and the advanced party courses can only be offered and uh, discussed to party members. Hindi po siya binibigay sa hindi regular party members. Ang ibinibigay po sa recruitment papunta sa underground at party members, PADEPA courses. Pambansang demokratikong paaralan. Ito po yung dating tinatawag na general mass course set. Noong 1998 po, nag-device kami ng tinatawag na PADEPA. PADEPA is both for the above ground open activist and open organizations na ninalanguyan aming mga organizers at kadre, like I mentioned, College Editors Guild, LFS, CGP, etc. Nakbayan, kabataan. In the underground, it is the same. You cannot proceed to BKP, IKP, and AKP, sir, if you are not recruited to the party. What are the basic uh, tenets ng tatlong ito? BKP, sir, medyo malalim na siya because it is the start of your theoretical, ideological uh, journey to the CPP. Ang pinag-aaralan dyan ay mga Marxism, dialectical materialism, historical materialism. It has around 10 courses. It will run 7 days. Ang IKP ay pangkadre. Ibig sabihin po sir, mag-assume ka ng leadership position. From party branch to section party committee to district pa taas sa national. Ang pinag-aaralan dyan sir ay mga Bakit ang China ay hindi na komunista? Bakit ang China ay umu nasa landas na ng modern revisionism? Ang Soviet Union, pagkapatay ni Stalin at pagpasok ni Brezhnev at Korchuk ay hindi na siya uh, komunista ang bansa. So malalim siyang talakayan. These are nuances on uh, the, the discussions farther from the basics of socialism and communism to the next degree. Ang pinakabanti, sir, yung abanting kursong pangpartido. Kung sa school, Ang BKP ay ito yung uh, college degree course mo. Tapos yung uh, IKP ay ang masteral course mo. At ang ang IK ang abanting course ng pangpartido, ang doctoral course mo sa CPP. It will take you years to undergo that. Okay. Sa security sector, since 1970 nung nung uh, natatag na yung NPA, ilan na yung sundalo na napatay? Sundalo muna. Sundalo kasama na yung pulis. On record. We do not officially. Mr. Chairman, we do not have the figures, but we can uh, submit, sir. 2,300 plus, no? Oh, uh -huh. mara, 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 sir. How about civilians? Mara. Mara. Saan so, is the mixer as I pay? Papano ginagan tempalaan yung mga nagiging victorious, yung nananalo sa. Sa, sa labanan o kaya yung nakapag-ambush? Meron bang merit system dyan? Wala pong monetary reward but rather you become... Merit, merit system? Uh, wala din po sir. Ah yeah, uh, in informally it can be considered as a merit system kasi you will be promoted to higher positions in the command of the NPA. I, was just, I would like just to emphasize sir that the Communist Party of the Philippines being the leader of the NPA, siya po magdedetermine. ng anong i-ambush, sinong i-ambush, saan gagawin, papaano. Because the, the CPP exercises direct and absolute leadership over the army. Including the informal merit evaluation. Lady Miranda, have you, nakapag-file ka ng rape complaint against doon sa mga sinasabi mong tao? Hindi pa? Hindi pa po. Pero Hindi kasi... pa yan nag-prescribe. Nag, nag -pre so pwede ka pa mag-file. Kung kilala mo naman, That's another legal offensive, ano? and probably with the help and guidance of whoever is handling you, then probably you can uh, make that approach because this is a personal experience that uh, is, you know, seeking justice, di ba? So kung ilan yung uh, incidenting uh, kinasangkutan niya, at kung ilan tao yung uh, liable, criminally liable, mas mainam siguro, iporsyon na lang, 
maski at large yung mga tao. I suppose buhay pa yung mga yun, di ba? Uh, Mr. Chair, yung isa po patay na po. Isa po siya sa namatay doon sa karangnan 9 Nueva Ecija po, noong 2017. Pero meron pa ang buhay. Meron pa po, pero yung naman. isa po kasi is nakakulong na po. Yung ano, isa na lang po ang hindi pa. O, maski nakakulong, pwede namang sampahan ng additional na kaso. Mas mainam ngayon kasi ang rape is an unavailable uh, offense, di ba? Just in case na isa lang yung kaso inaharap niya patungkol sa pagiging member ng MPA, kung murder man yan, kung ano, at least meron pang ibang kaso. You know, I, I just, I was just handed a letter from Gabriela, no? si Congresswoman uh, Arlene Rosas. Second paragraph, sinasabi rito again, sabi niya, we would like to put on record that Gabriela Women's Party is not an armed group. Meron ba nagsabi sa inyo na yung Gabriela is an, an armed group? None Hindi, was, di ba? Wala. Anyway, just for the it's record. A organization. And you confirm that it is not an uh, armed group. Di ba? It is not an armed group. Front organization. Yeah, front organization. And Mr. Chair, if I may volunteer, tinanong po sige. nyo kanina. Okay. Yung uh, killed in action na uh, sundalo sa kapulis uh, sa anti-NPA operations ay uh, 14,992 since 1975. That's uh, 14,000? Uh, regular uh, troops. Regular oh. troops po yan. Kasi sa record ng uh, yung mga foreign jurisdictions na nagtag sa NPA, CPPNPA, as a terrorist organization, no? nag-designate. United States, United Kingdom. Maliit yung record nila, nasa mga 2,387 yata. From But, 1975 po yun, Mr. Chair. No, this is from 1970 to date. Yun oh. record. Or, I think, uh, up to the time that they were designated by these foreign jurisdictions as a terrorist organization. Now, I'd like to belabor that point, ano? because the President issued Uh, the proclamation 374 uh, tagging or declaring the CPPNPA as a designated terrorist organization. And the basis, it seems, is uh, RA-10168, you know, yung de definition and designated persons. Particularly, I think, ang naging basis dito, yung uh, sa paragraph 1, any person or entity designated and or identified as a terrorist one who finances terrorism or a terrorist organization or group under the applicable United Nations Security Council resolution or by another jurisdiction or supranational jurisdiction. So dito, hindi limited sa United Nations Security Council resolution. Ang ginamit dito is or. But the point I want to clarify is, ang basis ng 10168 is HSA, Human Security Act. 9732, di ba? Which has already been repealed by the Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020. Now, if the basis of the of RA-10168, kindly educate me kasi gusto ko lang maklarify because this might uh, have a bearing on several petitions uh, filed before the Supreme Court. Uh, I hate to discuss that, ano, but Ito, academic discussion ito. Kung ang basis ng uh, other lawyers here, by the way. Ah, sige. Kung ang basis ng uh, 10168 is a repealed law, would that still stand? Kasi na-repeal na ito ng uh, 11479. 11479 ba yun? Anyway, ATA, Anti-Terrorism of, of 2020. Repealed, not amended, ha? At in the Anti-Terrorism Act, yung procedure ng pag-designate is spelled out. Whereas under the Human Security Act, wala. And under even under the uh, uh, under RA-10168, walang uh, procedure. Except na kinokot lang yung uh, probably yung Human Security Act. So ang, ang question ko lang is, would that stand? Would that be valid? Or would the uh, repealing law, which is the Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020, not render invalid the proclamation issued by the President, 374, declaring the CPPNP as a designated terrorist organization.
Good afternoon, po, Mr. President, Sige po. Mr. Chair. Um, this is just my legal opinion, po. Yes, sir. Um, if the uh, thesis of um, RA one one six eight has already been repealed, and there is already the Anti-Terrorism Act and the declaration of the president is uh, pursuant to RA 1168. Uh, um, it is my legal opinion, sir, that the declaration still stands po. Yes, sir. We have uh, some a representative from the OJ. Maybe we can, we can hear from him. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Um, Assistant Secretary of yeah. from the Department of Justice. Uh, Your Honor, with respect to your question, um, we understand that the Anti-Terror Act, the current Anti-Terror Act, actually has provisions for for designation. Um, moreover, Your Honor, the Anti-Terror Act also has a repealing clause as well as a saving clause. So on the basis of these provisions, Your Honor, it would appear that the President's designation under um, under the Presidential Proclamation that you mentioned um, can stand. Because of the saving clause. Um, and that holds, the true, same. that holds true also with the pending proscription case uh, in the Manila Regional Trial Court. Kasi under the Anti-Terrorism Act, Court of Appeals na yung magpo-proscribe. But under the HSA, kasi ang saving clause, uh, mm -hmm. the way I uh, recall it or I remember it, yung all cases pending action. So since the pros proscription case uh, is a case pending action by the Manila Regional Trial Court, it follows na covered sa ng saving clause. Am I, am I correct? correct uh, yeah. So, it's your opinion na pati yung, uh, yung designation by virtue of the presidential proclamation is still, is still valid, still stands. Yes, Your Honor. But under the law, it is only the Anti-Terrorism Council that can designate a group, an organization, or a person as a terrorist uh, organization or individual. Is that correct? Under the permit law, yeah. yes, Your Honor, yes. designation is performed by the Anti-Terrorism so Council. So it doesn't need a, uh, uh, an official action by the Anti-Terrorism Council to validate or to confirm, to affirm, or affirm the uh, proclamation issued by the president. No need. Um, you know, from from where we from where we look right now, it appears that there, there's no there's no necessity for um, for additional action by the Anti-Terrorism Council. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, General Binag. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, in response to your question a while ago uh, related to the atrocities committed by uh, CPP and PA, although hindi po ito yung nomero ng mga namatay sa armed forces saka sa Philippine National Police, we have this uh, joint committee on uh, legal action, AAP and PNP, and we were able to document, sir, the incidents perpetrated by the different threat groups from 2010 hanggang 2020. Sir, out of the almost 5,000, 90% po dito ang may gawa ko ay CPP and PA. So, ito na, pinagsama-sama na namin, uh, uh, Abu Sayyaf, PIFF, 90% uh, po nito ang CPP and PA ang may gawa. Kung ibibreakdown mo natin to uh, sa mga biktima ho, mga 50% dito, sir, ang biktima ho dito ay ang military. Okay, so, Halo-halo na uto, may namatay, may wounded. You know. Ang PNP naman, sir, mga 10%. Itong numero na to. Tapos yung civilian, ito yung mga pinapasabog nila, sir. Yung mga bako, yung uh, mga contract, uh, construction na uh, project. So roughly around, uh, yung, sir, mga 40%. And other government officials, siguro mga less than, ano na to, sir, mga uh, 1 or 2%, sir. So, uh, niround up ko na to sir. So, so ganito sir, talawak to yung kanilang atrocities na ginagawa sa buong Pilipinas to, hindi lang to sa isang region. So ang pinakamarami dito ang region 13, 1,175. Uh, hindi dito rin sir ang region 5, 449. 
So kung i-correlate natin to sir siguro sa poverty ng lugar, pwede natin makita yung impact ng ginagawa nitong mga uh, CPPNPA. Kaya lalong naghihirap yung mga lugar na to. So we have these numbers actually sir. And uh, what we did after documenting these incidents, then we filed these cases, case built up kami sa prosecutor, tapos yung iba umabot sir sa court, tapos meron na research search warrant, uh, meron kami nga uh, standing na 1,000 plus na search warrant dito sir sa mga uh, uh, CPPNPA members. So ito sir ang uh, uh, from the perspective of the police. Search warrant or warrant of arrest? Uh, sorry, warrant of arrest sir. Oh. Uh, warrant of arrest. Yun sir ang, uh, so sa perspective namin sir, Sabi ko nga kanina, we operate uh, based on the evidence. So, uh, we're building up uh, all these cases so that uh, we can uh, firm up yung, yung uh, campaign natin against them in, as part of the uh, NTFL concept. Do you have an estimate on, of the amount being generated due to progressive taxation? And would you know kung saan yung malalakas na base of operations pagdating sa progressive taxation? Because... The, I think a good way of, you know, yung tinatawag natin resource denial, di ba? Operations. Kasi kung walang resource denial, eh free flowing yung pondo. Yung pati pag-armas, pagpopondo, at pagre-recruit. Kasi if you don't have uh, that much effort pagdating sa resource denial operations, hindi kayo mananado. Referring to the CPPNPA, we're not referring to the United Fronts to the Legal Fronts. No? Let's confine our discussion to the CPP and PA in the meantime. Uh, may, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we actually have a, 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 we prepared a report. I do not have the copy of the report, sir, but we do have a compilation of the uh, uh, collection or the taxation, revolutionary taxation, extortion, actually, we call it extortion, sir. Uh, by the CPP and PA on, on, from different uh, uh, business establishments, uh, corporations. I, do not, I cannot recall the, the uh, exact figure, but one of the biggest is the telco, the two telcos, uh, a telephone company. Uh, from you combine 300 million per annum? Uh, at, at the least, at least, yeah, uh, uh, we estimate more, actually, uh, because in one in one island alone, sir. I again, I, I my memory is not uh, that good, sir. But uh, they demand uh, extortion per tower. They they do it per tower. So if you can imagine how many thousands of towers they have, uh, although. Uh, in some areas, they cannot impose this where they do not have some control, but in other areas where they have a uh, large presence of uh, new people's army, they're able to demand uh, 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 a rate. But this is uh, negotiated at the central committee. Uh, large uh, corporation, national corporations, uh, uh, nationwide uh, coverage are, are transacted at the national level. It seems, you know, it seems that we're losing the propaganda war. In spite of Yusek Badoy, <laughs> it seems that we're losing the propaganda war. With all the resources of, of government, that's the reason, don't know if it's a segue kung bakit gusto kong malaman, magkano ba yung resources na degenerate nila. Because sabi mo nga kanina, this is a battle for the hearts and minds of uh, the Filipinos, di ba? Kasi pag natalo ka sa propaganda war, paano ka mananalo sa hearts and minds? Yes, sir. Uh, that's why, sir, the... That is the focus of the national task force. Uh, we we admit we cannot move forward, sir, and we cannot improve ourselves unless we admit where we we failed. And one of the biggest failure of the government is in the information war against the CPP and PA. And thus, there is a a focus uh, by the task force to intensify its in uh, information operations. Uh, we are learning because we are 52 years behind. This, there was never an effort of the government to have a comprehensive and whole of nation, whole of government campaign on for information uh, operations. Now, only now, 
in the advent of the yung uh, yung LCAP, ano? Yeah. Are we gaining headway? Uh, okay. Sige. Very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, <coughs> the uh, Communist Terrorist Group are really reacting so much to the uh, to the National Task Force LCAP. Uh, they have come out with manuals to counter our retold community support program. Uh, they are being hit by our strategic uh, communications and information operations. Uh, we have put together uh, the agencies of government uh, under one strategic communications group, coordinated with our intelligence group or the situational awareness group, who also goes around informing the public. There is really a big effort in informing the schools uh, in the countryside, uh, different organizations, the whole of government. We go to the government, uh, led by our lecturers. Uh, when we started, there were very few who would take us. But today, uh, they are demanding that we go around, uh, led by our SACAM group, uh, Intel group, uh, with this uh, kinds of uh, briefing. And so they appreciate it so much. Uh, the CPP and PA uh, are really reeling from our from our pronouncements uh, because we are simply telling the truth. Uh, but uh, they have some means to block the budgets of uh, PCOO, uh, NSC, NICA. They would even try to block the budget of defense uh, just so they could get back at us. But uh, we said, budget or no budget, we will tell the truth. But in the end, uh, we know that the majority of uh, the members of Congress will understand us. And so from the House of Representatives, our budgets uh, reach the Senate. And we hope we get the same kind of support from the Senate. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in terms of uh, returnees, we have this very good program, the Balik, uh, uh, Balik Law Program, or the Enhanced Comprehensive Local Integration Program, or, and Amnesty Program. Napakadaming bumabalik dahil meron tayong binibigay na pabahay, uh, livelihood, firearms remuneration, and security. At uh, yung ibang social services tulad ng eskulahan. Kaya, Pinag-aaralan po namin lahat ito sa National Task Force LCAP at uh, pinag-uusap-usapan namin. Kung ano yung sabihin ng spokespersons namin, talagang pinag-usapan namin yan. Yung sinasabi nila ay nag-fact-checking kami, nag-verify kami at inaalam namin kung paano sasabihin sa public. Kaya po, pinatamaan sila ng katotohanan. Hindi kami nag-propaganda dito. We are not playing dual tactics. We are simply saying what is the truth. Tulad nitong si Yosek Badoy. Galing ng UP ito eh. Wala siyang, sabi niya, minsan eh, naloko pala ako ng mga to. Hindi ko sinasabing lahat ng taga-UP ay aktivista. Kasi kukunti lang naman ang aktivista dyan sa UP. Uh, ngunit, yung mga nakakaloko ay kukunti lang yan. Ganon din sa ibang organisasyon. Sinasabi namin, kukunti lang yung talagang membro, ngunit may mga naluloko sila. At uh, lalong-lalo rin ang kabataan. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, this uh, Barangay Development Program did not come from the idea of just one person. This came from the proposals of the local, of the local governments and the people who said they want these kinds of projects because these are the geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas. Na, talaga namang, we have to admit, napabayan natin. So ngayon, nadadalhin natin yung kalsada, yung eskulahan, konting waterworks at irigasyon, cortes of DILG, eskulahan, deep ed, uh, Department of uh, Agriculture yung kalsada, National Greening Project of DNR at iba-ibang project naka, ng lahat ng department. Ngayon na, dinadala ng LCAP yun at in one bunch to be more effective, 
nagtataka kami kung bakit ina mayroong mga umaayaw o uh, pinipigilan ito. Samantalang alam naman nila na mas kinawalang insurgency dyan, just look at that area and you will know na talagang napag-iwanan na yung mga lugar na yan. How much more na may insurgency na pwedeng bumalik ulit dun sa mga lugar na yun. Sa katunayan, Mr. Chairman, may mga na-clear kaming barangays noong 2010 to 2016. Napakakonti ng projects na nailagay dyan. Kaya yung iba, nabawi ng NPA at binabawi pa natin hanggang ngayon. Kaya itong paglalagay natin ng projects ngayon, sana ay maging totoo at uh, matupad sana, matuloy sana. Dahil kung pababayaan natin ulit ito, nagiging paulit-ulit lang yung cycle na pupunta kami doon. Magkakaroon kami ng immersion at titignan namin yung problema nila, idudulog namin sa nakakataas at umaasa na yung mga ating kababayan. Eh gusto nila, inaasahan na nila yan. Kaya dapat lang siguro naman, ibigay na natin. Otherwise, do not convince me. Ah, yes sir. You know, uh, baka may I'll, be I'll be defending the budget of the uh, DND next week in plenary. Yes sir. And uh, anyway, itemize naman lahat itong yung nire-request yung budget for uh, LCAC, hindi ba? Yes sir. So, anyway, 822 let's barangay. leave that behind and I'll just see you uh, next week on November 12. At any rate, on another issue, that's on the domestic front. Sa international, it seems na hindi rin tayo nananalo sa, sa battle, di ba? Yung propaganda war. For example, yung issue ng recruitment ng mga children into the ranks of the CPPNPA. Have you exerted or undertaken any effort to bring the matter up to the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child? Meron? May Mr. Chair. So, anong, uh, anong uh, feedback? Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, we have this uh, cluster that we call the International Engagement Cluster. Ito po ay kami na naman, uh, magkakasama. Yung unang trip sa Europe to do the information campaign was led how many, by Yusek Badoy. And how, how many cases have you filed? Or, yeah, Ilang reports ang nasa page sa United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child? Sir, uh, specific cases. Uh? We have, sir, but we don't. How can we be, could I say, say, say public, sir, sir? Because uh, that's our... Tatanong ko lang kung meron. But we have, sir, we have. Uh, in coordination with uh, uh, other agencies of government. Sir. Uh, cases like... Uh, yeah, uh, UK, lady, yeah. We, we use that, sir, for... Uh, filing cases against the uh, CPP and uh, against the we, we also even uh, 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 submitted reports to EU and funding agencies so that they will stop funding their, See, these Pasenko, we're always in, on the defensive eh? yes don't you notice that yeah lagi na tayong depend on defend lagi tayo Very ng true. issue pag binulaga tayo depend tayo ng defend so our hands are tied our hands are full defending ourselves or yourselves and this has happened before, even during my time. We, we are now on the. Bago. We are now on the offensive side. I mean, we are. Well, we I'm have learned that we that you have all these materials, and I hope you follow this up with some concrete action. Because briefings are good, but you know, if the uh, briefings you mag end lang dito, and not to the some mas uh, intended na audience, then baka sayang yung effort. Uh, if I may give a quick uh, look, sir, of for the chair, sir. Uh, we actually have sent uh, out indigenous peoples, uh, not we, but uh, uh, indigenous peoples were sent abroad in the U.S. and EU to engage the European Union Parliament itself and the U.S. government and the U.N. to debunk all the propaganda against us. And that's part of your resource, resource denial operations yes, or efforts, yes, right? Yes, sir. Kasi Malakas pa ba yung pasok ng, uh, ng uh, contribution or funding from foreign, it has been, uh, from foreign NGOs? It's still, meron pa rin sir, but uh, we were able to put a lot of uh, 
uh, we met with these funding agencies and we told them that 60% of the money they give goes to the CPP. And they do not understand how because they say they have a very strict co uh, uh, auditing procedures. And we explained very simply that what the an NGO of our front organization of the party does is they have triple funding. They write to three different funding agencies from three different countries. And so they can report the project is being complied as as program, but the money they get three funding sources so they can divert 60% to the party. And when they when they realized this, they said to themselves, actually this is the, the word they say, how can we check that? That's very difficult to do because we do not connive with the other funding agencies. So this is the weakness in the European funding agencies exploited by the CPP. And but when they found out about this, uh, these funding agencies actually, some of them put a hold to the funding, others instituted additional measures to prevent this from happening. And the other day, sir, I talked to a, a, our source from the, from the, from the inside. Uh, they're actually running out of funds, uh, some regional party committees. Yeah, around. but most of the funds are coming from here, no? in country. Uh, both mas malaki abroad, na yung nagagaling yes, dito kaysa yung foreign. Unlike before, mas malaki yung nagagaling sa labas. Yes, sir. But the local funding also, sir, because we when we prepared that report to the president on the funding sources, this uh, watch list of funding sources were provided to all our the PNP and the AFP. And there was an effort to talk to these funding sources for them to stop. Otherwise, they will be liable under Anti-Terrorism Act. Uh, so some of these funding, these victims, extortion victims, are, are, are holding uh, back and uh, not providing these funds. That's why we say, see some being attacked and being, their, their, their equipment being, being burned or maybe arson attacks. Uh, this is the most common challenge heard by the so-called United Front, Union Legal Front. Do you have direct or circumstantial evidence to bring them to court? Because that's contained in the letter of the congressman, former congressman. We already have a case against the uh, rural missionaries of the Philippines for terrorist of funding. Excuse me now. Instead of attending daw this hearing, public hearing, mas maganda pa, pailan nyo lang na lang daw sila ng, ng kaso kung meron kayo ebidensya. That's the essence of the letter of uh, former congressman Colmenares, which I received. Uh, we are building up our case, sir, and uh, in due time, there will be cases. Yes, yes sir. Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Secretary. In regards to uh, funding, uh, we have actually caused the freezing of uh, some assets uh, of the NGOs that seem to be very benign NGOs. And I'd like to relate the case of the rural missionaries of the Philippines, who turned out to be the funders, the, cha the channel for the funding, codwit of the funding from Europe, going into the Salugpungan schools. Can you imagine that? Uh, I thought, uh, I have so much respect, of course. We all do. Sa mga, sa mga matre, di ba? But uh, they turned out to be the conflict of the funds. And they happen to be presenting themselves to be a legal organization, when in fact, their organization have an expired permit with the Securities and Exchange Commission since 2003. And so these were all just, uh, well, we did not mind them uh, before, but now uh, we are going after all this. Uh, there are many NGOs through which funds are uh, funnel to the movement. Uh, admittedly, the funds uh, go to some projects, but 40%, according to the documents that we got, 40% of these funds go to the NPA. I think Eric has to do, has, can attest to that. Uh, by the way, Mr. Chairman, we have also 12 other former rebels that are now on standby. If you would uh, require them to talk in the second division, in the ninth division, and we have uh, Ruben Guevara, who is uh, founding chairman of the CPPNPA, on standby to uh, to, to testify, uh, just in case. Uh, Are they physically present or virtually? No, Mr. Chair, uh, medyo 
for security reasons, doon muna sila sa sa lugar nila. We, they can participate by Zoom. Uh, why not? We can call them. Uh, would you like to give get one? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, they're actually on standby. They're, they're, they've been given the link if you want to, uh, yeah. to uh, Go ask ahead. questions from them. You can uh, so. kindly uh, identify them or him or her. Who's he now? Sino mo una? Mr. Chair? Yes, Kai Rick. May I request uh, Ka Noel and Ka Amihan from Mindanao first? Uh, they, they are, uh, Ka I know Amihan and Ka Noel. Ka Noel. I think they're on standby now. Sige. Yeah. Oh, uh, meron din sa Mindanao. Uh, give it more time, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we can come up. We can bring them in with your permission. Yeah, Ka Noel is present now. Yes, Mr. Ka Noel. Ayun po si Ka Noel. Sige po, yung inyong uh, sariling karanasan, o paano ba binarik po, anong ginawa nyo nung nagsalob na kayo, paano kayo na paalis, sige po. Ang magandang, magandang hapon po sa lahat, magandang hapon uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, ako po ay narecruit sa isang paaralan dito po sa Region 12, particularly Midano State University po noong 1990s. Ako ay naging membro ng League of Filipino Student. Then after two years, I was recruited as a member po ng Kabataang Makabayan. Then after one year, naging candidate member po ng CPP. Uh, then 1996 and hanggang 1998, naging uh, full-time organizer po ako ng student sector. Dito po sa area ng Jensan at uh, sa buong uh, area ng South Cotabato. Then 1998, uh, nag-decide po ako na sumampan sa New People's Army. So I had been in the New People's Army since 1998 hanggang 2018 po. Uh, uh, January 2018 lang po ako um, umalis at uh, sumuko po sa, sa, sa gobyerno. So all in all po, uh, 26 years ako sa Kilusan. Anim na taon po yung white area experience ko at 20 years po ako na nasa armado po. Sige, ano pong mga naging activities niyo nung ano kayo sa Pilutan? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Um, nung nasa paaralan po kami, of course, uh, gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, when I was recruited as a member of KM, and later on, naging member po ng uh, CPP as candidate member, uh, nag-organize po kami ng uh, mga kabataang estudyante uh, hinihikayat po namin silang sumali sa kilosan namin. Sa totoo lang, uh, napakasimpleng uh, mga isyo lang naman yung uh, pinagpapatayan namin. Uh, isyo lang ng kakulangan ng libro, ng uh, paralan. Uh, medyo mabahong uh, uh, facilities uh, ng, ng paralan gaya ng mga palikuran. Kasi yung paaralan namin ng mga panahon na yon ay hindi pa masyadong uh, marami yung uh, infrastructure dun sa loob kasi nga medyo malikabok. Yun yung mga domestic issues dun sa loob na uh, ano namin, pinapalaki namin para makahikayat kami ng mga mag-aral na sumapi sa kilosan namin. Then later on, i-indoctrinate na namin doon sa sinasabi naming uh, uh, na national situationer na kung saan andun na naka uh, nakapalaman yung uh, pananaw ng kilusan hinggil sa gobyerno. Then later on, medyo palalimin yun. Um, bibigyan na namin sila ng initial na pag-aaral na pag hinggil sa Philippine Society and Revolution. Actually, yung main uh, ano namin, main preference book namin doon sa pagbibigay sa kanila ng uh, usapin, ng uh, usaping panlipunan at uh, revolusyon ay ang libro mismo ni Amado Guerrero na pinamagat ng Philippine Society and Revolution. Actually, nilalecture namin yan sa loob ng paralan, uh, ginagawa lang namin ng outline para mas uh, mabilis at madali naming uh, ma-lecture sa mga estudyante. Then later on, pag medyo okay na yung uh, mga mag-aral, medyo bay doon sila sa idea, uh, isasali na namin, pasasalihin na namin sila sa iba't ibang mga mass actions. Uh, and later on, dadalhin din, dinadala na namin sila uh, sa iba't ibang mga communities, communities ng Urban Poor, communities ng mga manggagawa, community ng mga magsasaka, 
uh, committee ng mga indigenous people. Pero yung mga committee na yon, yun yung mga committee na organized na rin uh, ng, uh, CP, ng uh, CPP no? sa urban areas. At yung mga magsasaka naman ng mga komunidad at IP ay organized ng CPP and PAE talaga kasi nasaka na yun na yun. Um, mayroon ng usapan uh, kami ng mga organizers sa white area at saka yung mga organizers doon sa mga komunidad kung paano yung handling sa mga kabataang dinadala namin sa komunidad. Kaya pagdating doon sa komunidad, doon sa tinatawag na basic masses integration, ang nangyayari noon, nasusupplement uh, ng mga masang na organize namin, yung mga pinagsasabi namin sa mga kabataan. Kaya nga, napakadaling makubinsi yung mga kabataan na paniwalaan yung narratives namin sa kanila. Kaya uh, may mga pangyayari na nasa pa, na makaigsing panahon, yung iba ay nagde-decide talaga na huwag nang magtakos ng pag-aaral at direkta nang sumampa sa, sa New People's Army. Um, yun po, pero yung iba na ayaw din pa na pumunta ng kabundukan para humawak ng armas ay ano namin, minimintay namin sila na maging aktibo sa loob ng paralan at doon sa tinatawag naming uh, urban work. No? Kaya yung iba, hindi man namin ma-recruit bilang uh, uh, mga kadre ng partido at ng New People's Army na madideploy sa kanayunan pero naging uh, mga kadre din sila at organizer uh, sa revolutionary urban work. Kaya na-assign sila sa hanay ng mga manggagawa, na-assign din sila sa hanay ng uh, mga maralitang tagalungsod, na-assign sila doon sa tinatawag namin pag-organize ng mga middle forces, yun pong hanay ng uh, mga professionals. And later on, kasi nga yung iba sa kanila na yung mainit din kasi ginagasgas talaga namin sila doon sa usapin ng uh, mass mobilization sa kalunsuran, kaya napag-iinitan din. Kaya yung ibang napapag-iinitan, ang nangyayari, kinukumbinsin na namin, ito na yung pagkakataon na pumunta na kayo ng kanayunan para direktang sumama sa bagong hukubayan. Kasi pag uh, tigil kayo dyan sa um, urban areas, uh, ang isang malapit na pinakamalapit na posibilidad ay may mangyaring masama sa inyo kasi pinag-iinitan tayo, pinag tayo ng state forces. Kaya yung direction pa rin, kahit hindi kaagad sumampa sa NPA yung mga na-organize ng mga kabataan sa paralan, pero yung direction pa rin later on, doon pa rin. Kaya after the nag-fall time organizer sa urban areas, uh, may mga ilang kasama kami na after 2 years, 3 years, 4 years, 5 years, ayun, uh, pumunta at pumunta din sa, sa NPA. E eh ngayon, nung nasa, ano na, nasa NPA na, ako naman, uh, nung 1998, uh, nung pag-akyat ko, Napakabilis ng promotion ko sa loob kasi nga uh, galing ako sa hanay ng kabataang estudyante. Um, naging, uh, naging dumaan ako bilang uh, political guide ng isang squad ng NPA, naging squad leader, naging CEO ng isang platoon, naging political instructor ng isang platoon ng NPA. Then later on, naging secretary po ako ng isang front. And uh, noong 2005, I was installed by the Farsat Mindanao Region na maging spokesperson po ng NDF para South Region. Yan pong region na humahawak po ng buong Region 12 at mayroong uh, dalawang probinsya na sakop po ng Region 11. Yan po yung AOR ng, uh, ng Far South Mindanao Region. And uh, noong 2013 hanggang 2016, uh, binigyan din ako ng isang task pa no, bilang isang regional political director ng New People's Army dito for sa Far South Mindanao Region and 2016 hanggang 2017 before I left the movement naging re head po ako ng Regional Peasant Bureau and I was uh, elected noong 2006 hanggang 2017 as Deputy Secretary po ng Far South Mindanao Region. So yung karanasan ko po doon sa loob ng Kilosan for 20 years na especially doon sa CPP in PA talaga Napakarami po. Napakarami kami napag-uusapan. Lahat po nang napag-uusapan kanina, uh, nung nagsimula po yung hearing, talaga napag-uusapan din sa loob. Yung usapin po ng uh, ano ba uh, itong uh, mga legal fronts. Uh, actually, hindi po talaga red tagging eh, kasi kami sa loob, uh, part talaga po ng party policy talaga, napalika, napalakasin yung tinatawag naming national, legal national democratic movement. Yan po yung uh, naka-assign talaga sa urban areas po. Kaya nga may tinatawag kami na white area orientation. Eh. Uh, ibig sabihin nun, uh, sa white area orientation, kailangang 
palakasin yung uh, pambansa demokratikong kinusan sa kalunsuran, lalo na po sa hanay na mga manggagawa, sa hanay po na maraltang tagalungsod, at sa hanay po na mga kabataang estudyante. Yan po ay integral part ng National Democratic Revolution. Hindi po maaaring manalo yung revolusyon kung hindi po epektibong mapapakilos yung mga sektor na to na nakatira po sa urban areas. Kaya uh, kasabay nun, yung tactics po na kailangan magtayo ng iba't ibang mga legal organizations, huwag lang magpatali sa isa. Kaya kung nakikita po natin, uh, dati rati LFS lang yan, dati rati NUSP lang yan, CGP lang yan, bagong aliansang makabayan lang yan, nung 1987 sa election, partido ng bayan. Pero lately po, nagkaroon na po ng uh, iba't ibang organizations gaya ng party lists. Kaya nga pumasok yung uh, yung bayan muna sa taong uh, 2001, then later on, idinagdag yung Gabrela, idinagdag yung Anak Pawis, idinagdag yung Migrante, idinagdag yung Act Teachers, idinagdag yung Piston, idinagdag yung Kabataan Party, Bangsa Suara, uh, Moro Party, at saka marami pang iba. So lahat-lahat yun ay creation talaga ng CPP. Uh, ginamit niya yung... Kanuel, Kanuel uh, gano'ng kalalim yung uh, kaalaman ng agenda? Of course, ang tanong ko susunod, paano niyo pinagtitiba yung link between yung underground, yung CPP and PA mismo, doon sa mga legal fronts na sinasabi niyo kanina? At gano'ng kalalim yung uh, kaalaman ng agenda doon sa mga legal fronts na binanggit ninyo? Sino lang ang nakakaalam ng tunay na agenda ng CPPNPA? I suppose hindi naman lahat ng miyembro ng Gabriela o, o miyembro ng ACT o yung mga napanggit kanina ng mga kilusan, mga, mga legal fronts, eh alam nila kung ano yung tunay na agenda. Hindi ba? Tama po, Mr. Chair. Um, dito nga pumapasok yung sinasabi namin deception. Eh, kasi sa totoo lang din naman po, hindi naman lahat ng miyembro ng Gabriela Uh, bayan mo na tiba pa ay alam to kaya nga yung uh, karamihan sa kanila ay ano uh, unwittingly eh, na disib lang talaga ng kilusan ang may alam lang talaga nito Mr. Chair of course yung yung uh, CPP no mula sa national leadership hanggang sa pinaka baba kasi uh, hanggang sa sanga ng uh, party branch party branches ng partido kasi napag-uusapan ito bilang isang uh, pulisiya at bilang isang programa ngayon, yung link talaga ng uh, CPP sa mga organization na to, part kasi sa organizational na policy ng partido na maglagay talaga ng tinatawag naming party group sa loob ng mga legal organization na itinayo niya. Kaya yung nasa pamunuan ng bawat legal na organisasyon, I'm sure po 100% ay mga party members yan. Kasi policy yan eh, at saka programa ng partido, hindi po sila maaaring mapunta sa ganong posisyon ng legal na mga organization na yan kung hindi po sila party members. Uh, malinaw po yan kasi nakasaad din yan sa party constitution po ng uh, partido. Nandyan po yan, may provision yan. Kaya sinusunod lang lamang naman po ng mga party members at kadre yung laman ng party constitution na bawat legal na mga organisasyon itatayo dapat mayroong party group sa loob. Yan po yung link, yan po yung nagli-link. Ano, another question, ano nagiging pasihan o bat batayan kung sino yung mapupunta sa armed guerrilla sa NPA at sino yung mananatili para dito sa mga kilusan na nakalutang? Mr. Chair, actually, uh, yung uh, CPP naman ang yung panawagan niya as much as possible kung sino yung ready talaga na mag-opt for armed struggle, talagang tinatanggap niya. Uh, may tinatawag na kami sa loob na ideological campaign eh. Dapat lahat ng uh, nasa white area, pagkatapos ng ilang taon, dapat umakyat na. Pero it so happen na mayroong mga iilan na ayaw talaga at gusto lang manatili sa sinasabi nilang parliamentary struggle. Kaya... Uh, naiiwan sila sa urban areas. Pero may mga pagkakataon din po na base sa assessment and evaluation ng party kung sino yung effective talaga sa sinasabi naming white area operation talagang pinagdidesisyonan ng party na maiiwan. Say for example, of course, 
yung uh, mga party list representative po na under sa Makabayan Black and uh, considering po sa kanilang uh, skills no at saka yung uh, capacity nila ay talagang uh, ano po sila fit na fit po sa white area operations ng Kilosan kaya diyan po sila inilagay ngayon yung requirement po para sa kanila in the first place dapat maging party member yan to ensure the the loyalty no yung kanilang loyalty sa party kasi nga uh, yung pagiging uh, representative ng isang party list napaka vulnerable po sa tinatawag naming cooptation eh kaya nga sa loob ng party pinag-uusapan din talaga sino yung maaring ilagay doon uh, so may requirements kaya nga gaya ng sinabi ko kanina uh, dapat party member yung magiging uh, nominee ng mga party list hindi lang po party member kundi uh, kinukuha mo na talaga yung loyalty niya uh, pagkatapos uh, hindi lang simpleng uh, membro kundi kadre talaga ng 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 partido yan. And specifically, yung task nila bilang kadi ng partido ay para sa tinatawag ng namin open legal mass movement including po yung mga usapin sa loob ng kongreso bilang mga representative po sila ng iba't ibang party lists ng CPP na created po ng CPP. Thank you. Si Kaamihan and Jan. Oh, pareho rin yung kanyang i-testify. Uh, Mr. Chair Kamihan is also from Mindanao, but like me, di doon siya na-recruit sa UP Visaya sa Iloilo. Maganda rin ang kwento niya, at uh, I think nasa online na siya. Yes. Kamihan, Kamihan, can you come? Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. Good afternoon po, Mr. Chair, and to all our honorable senators. Um, first and foremost po, uh, this will be my first revelation of my face and my identity. I am Kamihan. I am the former Guerrilla Front Secretary of Guerrilla Front 20 under the Sub-Regional Committee 1 of the Southern Mindanao Region. So sa kanayunan po, kilala po akong Amihan, uh, Che, din, Che din po yung isa kong koda, and this will be my first time to take off my mask in public. So ako po si Joy James Sagino, uh, na-recruit po ako bilang member ng League of Filipino Students sa UP, uh, sa Iloilo City Campus way back in 2007. Ang um, issue that time, Mr. Chair, was uh, 2007 was the first year of implementation of the tuition fee increase in UP and the revitalized uh, socialized tuition fee and assistance program or the SPFAP. So dahil po sa issue na yun, uh, syempre, sa part ko din na galing sa mahirap na pamilya, eh, sumuporta dun sa panawagan ng LFS at saka ng ibang progressive organizations na tutulan yung pagtaas ng matrikula sa University of the Philippines. Uh, after three months po of being a member of LFS, eh, naimbitahan ako sa isang sikretong pagpupulong. It was held sa likod ng auditorium ng UP Visaya sa Iloilo City. And yun na pala yung orientation at saka recruitment sa akin para maging member ng Kabataan Makabayan. I still remember the person who recruited me. It is the very person who personally attacked um, Mr. Jeffrey Salis. Uh, the person who recruited me sa uh, Kabataang Makabayan is Lian Porquilla, uh, the son of the late uh, Jory Porquilla, uh, a leader then ng, ng mass movement sa isla ng Panay. So when I was recruited po sa KM a year after, um, I've been active as the city spokesperson of the League of Filipino Students, chairperson din po ng LFS sa UP Iloilo City, tumakbo rin bilang... Um, of officer ng student council sa college management sa UP Visaya CM sa city campus and naging kabahagi rin ng National Union of Students of the Philippines kung saan yung pinanggaling ng organization ni Congressman uh, Sara Ilago. After a year, Mr. Chair, um, na programa akong pumasok sa isang uh, guerrilla front ng NPA sa Southern Front na kumikilo sa mga bayan ng Igbaras and um, Miyagaw um, San Joaquin, somewhere in the southern mountain range of Panay Island. I stayed there for three months. And then paglabas ko, uh, yun na yung naging program sa akin. I was uh, invited to become a candidate member of the Communist Party of the Philippines. I was given an orientation. I was also given yung tinatawag kanina ni Mr. Jeffrey Salis na basic party course. Uh, included uh, some Marxist, Leninist, and Maoist uh, inputs on the revolution of Europe, Russia, and China, etc. 
And that in 2010, uh, as a cadre of the Communist Party unit sa youth and students uh, sector sa Iloilo, uh, para po sa tugunan yung pangangailangan for the electoral campaign as a Communist Party cadre, I was assigned as the spokesperson of an Akpawis party list and particularly deployed to the province of Antique to become the electoral coordinator of Anak Pawis and Nakabayan Coalition dun sa, sa Antique para po um, mangampanya at uh, saka mamanage yung mga watchers ng Makabayan doon sa probinsya ng uh, Antique. And then after the election, I was deployed to the regional party group. Yung sinasabi kanina ni, ni Ka Eric, ni Laka Noel, na party group, uh, ako po'y na-deploy sa isang regional party group directly under the regional YS Bureau of the Re Regional Urban Party Committee ng Iloilo para mamuno sa anak bayan. And thereafter, I was assigned and elected as the regional spokesperson and the regional um, chairman of anak bayan for the entire Panay Island that was in 2009 until some time in the mid of 2010. And then I became a controversial uh, personality uh, during the um, city council session of the Iloilo City when I was arrested. Um, when we were having a protest, silent protest, inside the session hall of Iloilo City, so that was, I believe, October of 2010, dahil sa takot na naging sentro ng atensyon ng buong syadad ng Iloilo, I decided and asked sa mga higher organ namin sa organization na maglaylo ako. So instead of uh, at maglaylo at umuwi muna sa amin sa Zamboanga or kung saan po yung probinsya namin, instead of laylowing, um, I was offered to be redeployed kasi nangangailangan din yung buong rehiyon ng Zamboanga ng isang kadre para pamunuan yung recovery ng WMRPC, the Western Mindanao Regional Party Committee, particular sa siyadad ng Sambuanga at sa ilang bahagi ng Sambuanga Sibugay. So in the, uh, December of 2010 until um, 2011, I was the Anakbayan Regional Coordinator of the entire Sambuanga Peninsula. I, I was able to attend the National Assembly and National Council meeting of Anakbayan sometimes in May 2011 and I was elected as the national vice chairperson for the entire Mindanao of the Anakbayan National Executive Council. And after that, Mr. Chair, uh, December, I was invited na dumalo sa isang intermediate party course, isang pag-aaral ng partido sa isang, uh, in the hinterlands of Davao region, uh, particularly Sitio Cogonon, uh, Barangay Salvacion, Trento, Agusan del Sur, at uh, after ng pag-aaral, um, I decided to become a full-time NPA thereafter. And hindi rin matagal yung promotion at saka yung pagtaas ng aking posisyon, I became a party, uh, political guide ng isang squad ng NPA, kalaunan naging political instructor, naging political officer. And in 2016, I became the front secretary of the Guerrilla Front 20 at the same time, a deputy secretary of the sub-regional committee uh, under the SMRC. So nung nasa NPA po kami, um, hindi pa rin hiwala yung mga gawain namin. Um, we have a sub-regional urban committee kung saan sila yung nagiging legal uh, organizers namin for the peasant. So yung mukha nila ay mga KMP organizers. We also have a committee for YS. So we have anak bayan, particularly anak bayan Compostela Valley. And during election, kami talaga sa Guerrilla Front yung uh, nagpapatawag ng mga susing mga personality sa loob mismo ng Guerrilla Front sa kampo ng NPA para pag-usapan ano yung magiging role ng mga Guerrilla Front ng NPA sa panahon ng eleksyon. And there was indeed a time in 2016 nung tumatakbo si President Duterte, uh, hindi naman uh, ikakailan ng lahat na the entire revolutionary movement were supporting the President uh, Duterte in his uh, candidacy for the President. And NPA mismo po, kami mismo yung pumupunta sa mga barrio sa mga guerrilla base namin para ikampanya si President Duterte, ikampanya yung Bayan Muna, ikampanya yung Anak Pawis, and Kabataan Party List, party list uh, etc. So, yung sinasabi nilang red tagging, ako minsan natatawa na lang po, uh, Mr. Chair, kasi uh, para sa akin po, hindi po siya red tagging. Kasi ako po, um, as my first time revealing my 
may true identity sa, pu- sa public, especially here in the Senate inquiry ng ating Senate of the Philippines, uh, I really, really testify um, na there is no such thing as red tagging. Um, kami sa Anak Bayan, uh, the regional party group na namumuno sa Anak Bayan, a regional party group is a party group being, uh, of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Kami talaga yung uh, namumuno at saka nangihikayat ng mga estudyante. May program yan, uh, first immersion sa mga peasant communities, immersion sa mga urban poor and worker communities, until the time na makakapag-decide yung mga members namin na sumampa sa New People's Army. Gaya ko na na-program din at saka dumating sa point na nag-decide ako before na sumampa sa New People's Army. And these party list uh, groups na tumatakbo sa under the Makabayan Coalition ay mga party list groups talaga na we are leading. Even the regional party committees ng SMRC and all other regional party committees all over the Philippines down to its NPA unit have very crucial role in campaigning, in implementing solid votes, solid um Command votes. Command votes, ibig sabihin, all members of the underground mass organizations, members of PKM, members of Makibaka, members of Kabataang Makabayan na nasa loob ng guerrilla base, they are mandat- it's mandatory for them to vote for these uh, party list organizations na tumatakbo sa uh, Congress, Mr. Chair. Paano ka nagbalik loob? Anong nagbunsod sa iyo para magbalik loob sa gobyerno? Um, umalis po ako sa pagka-NPA Mr. Chair in 2017. Uh, if I remember it correctly, it was September 2017. Um, it was a complicated situation kasi before that, uh, yun yung simula ng pagde-declare ng martial law sa, Min- uh, sa Mindanao. Um, dahil sa... Uh, kahirapan na, na nagkakaroon ng kahirapan sa loob ng NP unit wala kaming gawain so i uh, i witnessed a lot of of things na na opposed doon sa personal ko na prinsipyo for example yung nagkwento ni Kashin about uh, violence against women rape against women eh isa rin ako sa naging sakse doon sa exploitation sexual opportunism ng aming mga commanders uh, sa loob ng aking guerrilla front mismo na may mga commanders, platoon leaders taking advantage of these new women recruits, mga kabataang babae na lumad na nare-recruit namin na one, two, or three months pa lang, kahit may mga asawa sila, ay they really are pick face na na um, ligawan, o iba naman talagang ginagapang. So yung mga bagay na hindi ko talaga makain na nare-realize ko na we are we, we have that stress stress also na tinatawag isa diyan ya yeah, stress also Mr. Chair yun yung um, policy of discipline ng NPA na nagsasabi isa doon uh, wag pagsamantalahan yung kababaihan but ang nangyayari talaga sa loob ng kilusan yung yung policy niyan is just a paper policy what really ha- is happening inside the movement these commanders these platoon leaders this NPA uh, cadres are sexual, uh, most of them are sexual opportunists. They take advantage of this new recruits ng mga babae na kahit may mga asawa sila ay pinagsasamantalahan yung mga kagabi, kababaihan. There were, uh, I believe that was in May 2017 to June, na imbes na pag-usapan sa loob ng, ng, ng committee namin ay papano harapin ng NPA, unit namin, yung martial law ng pamahalaan, ay yung parating na pag-uusapan namin sa araw-araw na meeting namin ay mga violation, mga violation, mga paglabag dun sa palisiyan ng NPA na pagsasamantalan sa kababaihan. And it is being tolerated na imbes na uh, sam- uh, bigyan ng ng karampatang disciplinary action hindi ang nangyayari redeployment to other places or demotion which i believe para sa akin it's not enough eh pag ganun eh na so isa yun sa mga nag nag ano sa akin na nagtulak sa akin na lumabas and second um i actually don't want to share this in public kasi may ibang mga uh, AFP officers natin probably might get offended um kasi I was included, uh, I, I was able to join an NPA ambush sometimes in 2016, I believe that was July, against forces of the 25th Infantry Battalion sa bukirin ng um, kilometer 56, Barangay Rizal, Mukayo, Davao de Oro, na may isang tropa talaga na sundalo na patay na 
nilaslasan pa rin talaga ng liig. So, sa, sa part ko, uh, syempre, tingin ko, napaka hindi makatao eh. Na, I, I believe this so, is... Kami in, Han, nandun ka mismo? Doon sa yes, Amos po. na yun? Hmm. Yes po, I was there. I was, I was a political officer of, of that unit who ambushed those 25th IB troops operating. And... Um, we we were we decided as as Tadri na we should withdraw. However, may may isang ano may isang platoon leader. I, I believe he was a platoon leader or a political instructor sa isang platoon namin na hindi siya withdraw na kami. Talagang nilaslasan pa yun ng leg yung patay ng tropa. So <laughs> napaka napaka inhumane. Ako ako I I, I understand uh, some some issues of the Communist Party and the NPA are legitimate. For example, landlessness, poverty. These are legitimate issues. But having this dead human being killed twice, in in the in the in the ganito yung gusto kong ano eh? Hindi 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 to yung gusto gusto ng advocacy. Hindi ganito yung gusto. Hindi hindi to yung principio ko. So yung nangyari, I I when we had a meeting, Mr. Chair sa loob ng sub-regional committee, equivalent po to ng isang provincial committee ng partido, um, pinag-usapan talaga. And I, syempre sa loob ng party, may death penalty. I really asserted for death penalty against that political instructor na naglaslas ng liig ng isang tropang patay na. However, some of our cadre sa loob ng SRC decided for a demotion instead of a death penalty. And I was very insulted kasi malaking ano eh, malaking violation yan hindi lang sa batas ng NPA even sa Geneva Conventions IHL etc tayo uh, NPA is claiming to be compliant to to this international humanitarian law to this Geneva Convention however yung kami din pala sa lagay kami din pala yung parang nagco-cover up dun sa mga violations so napagtanto ko Mr. Chair na these are all deceptions na yung mga sinasabi namin sa propaganda, sa social media, sa sa, sa media, etc. Ano lang to, ano lang pala to pagpapanggap na yung NPA ay mga hukbo ng mga mga mahihirap, yung NPA hukbo ng magsasaka. Pero hindi, ito ay isang ano lang um Huk, uh, NPA na walang prinsipyo, NPA na nangahasik lang talaga ng game for the sake of of overthrowing the government. And that's a thing I can't accept. Bilang ako, I entered initially the organization as an LFS member, believing that this is an organization that advocates for social change, an organization that advocates for uh, for government empowerment, etc. Pero hindi eh. Um, Kahit na sa mga rally sila sabi ng ano sinasabi na um, namin na yung mga pulis daw nag nag-initiate nag, nag para magkaroon ng mga riot etc pero hindi I, I was able to join Mr. Chair uh, a rally uh, in US Embassy I believe sometimes in 2011 kami talaga yung nagdadala ng mga ng mga cellophane mga plastic mga kabalot na mga tae mga kabalot na mga panis na mga pintura at kami yung talaga yung na-observe ko talaga na sa hanay namin na anak bay at LFS kami yung nagii-initiate para mag-create ng riot sa mga previous protest and that's a thing na tingin ko naman na hindi naman necessary dapat na ganun dumating sa kasi may nakulong na mga kasama, may mga nasaktan, nasugatan, iba mga nasagasaan at it's ano na parang labas na siya dun sa ano yung gusto kong mangyari that's ito yung dahilan ng search chair bakit ako nag-decide na umalis sa Kelusan but ako nag-decide na sumuporta sa government kasi I realize, Mr. Chair, na hindi pala, hindi naman dapat dahas yung paraan para makamit ng mga mamamayan ng mga mahihirap kung ano yung mga advocacies, ano yung mga demands ng, ng mamamayan. Kundi, um, the government is always there to listen. I, I was able to observe that. When uh, after I left the organization, nakita ko yung ano, nakita ko yung sincerity ng government to reach out to people who are vulnerable to exploitation and infiltration ng ang um, CPP and PNDF, Mr. Chair. Hindi ba mahirap umalis? Hindi delikado? Ano yung uh, risk ng pagtiwalag mo? Ganon ka simple lang na basat uh, nagawol ka tapos nawala ka na lang sa sa kalusan niyo? Actually, Mr. Chair, uh, after I left, uh, I, I hindi pa talaga totally na umalis sa organization. Umalis na ako sa NPA unit kung saan ako nang galing. Uh, Siyempre, balot po ako ng takot ng time na yun kasi it's my first time na umalis. Uh, yun, uh, unilateral yung decision na yun na basta ka lang alis, lilipat ka na lang ng ibang assignment. Alis ka sa NPA, magiging uh, political uh, organizer o 
Sabi mo, sarili, walang, wala kayong patakaran tungkol dito? Actually, Mr. Chair, meron talagang patakaran sa hingil dyan. That's why what I did was outside and beyond the policies of the party. Um, paglabas ko, kasi I was uh, operating as an NPA leader in uh, in Compostela Valley and in Davao. Tatanungin ko siya na, sana po sino yung uno mong kinontak sa gobyerno? Opisyal ba siya? Sundalo o kawani ng pamalaan? At paano ginawa mo? Sir, sir uh, naputol sir, maybe there's another first uh, former rebel uh, who can uh, I'd, I'd like to find that out simply because there might be others no, similarly situated yeah, na ayaw, gusto nang malis, pero hindi alam kung paano. Yes, Kairik. While waiting for the next... Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, kapag ikaw ay nag-prank ka sa CTP, NPA, NDF na aalis, hindi ka papahintulutan. Kakausapin ka muna kapag sa NPA ang kakausap sa iyo political officer. The function of the political officer or political instructor is moral booster. Kakausapin ka... Na huwag ka maglaylo, baka na problema ka lang. Hindi ka talaga papayagan. And then you will be, kung insistent ka, you will be put into camp confinement sa headquarters. Then you will be observed. And then, pero pag mag-insist ka talaga na hindi na ma ma mapigilan, sasabihan ka, sige, bumalik ka sa open organization at tumulong ka pa rin. The same way that happened to the sister of Angel Oxy, Ella Carminares. General Parlade, was not lying. Ella Colmenares, the sister of Angel Oxin, was an NPA in Quezon. Namit ko siya personally. According to Congressman Colmenares, hindi raw kapatid. Ah, pamangkin okay. actually ni Miss Angel Oxin, si Ella. Si, si Neri ang pamangkin, sir. Si Neri anyway, Colmenares. Anyway, anyway uh, si Ella Colmenares, sir, ay umalis yan. Hindi niya mapipigilan. So, bumalik siya sa open mass movement. Pero CPP pa rin siya. And she's operating underground. At uh, ngayon, ang alam ko, nasa Makibaka siya sa Gabriela. So, nangyayari yan. Pero, kapag umalis ka, kapag ginawa mo ang ginawa namin, sir, facing the government and the people and telling the government everything that we know, kaya umiiyak kanina then siya. Then you'll be Papatayin kami. You'll we, be are we dead man walking, sir? Yes. Ang wife ko ngayon, sir, inaharas sa Iloilo City. Pero it seems na yung pagtiwalag ninyo, hindi ganun ka-risky. Para Asa? madali lang kayo nakalabas, eh. Uh, like si Kaamihan. Ka Tumakas kasi siya, sir, sa loob. Uh, I, I think uh, pwede siyang magsalita tungkol doon. Hinabol pa siya sa labas. Ganon din sa akin, okay. sir. Nang magtago ako sa Tagaytay, nang bumalik ako sa Iloilo City after I talked to Secretary Raul Gonzalez, nang buhay pa siya noon. Hinabol pa ako at pinareport sa region, sa headquarters ng region, sa Igbaras, sa minimension niya. And I was made there to stay three months. Pag-isipan mo, Eric, dito ka na kumilos muli sa Panay. Hindi naman nila alam na nag-NPA ka. And now they're denying na NPA ako. So sabi ko, sige, pag-isipan ko. So the process of recruitment, sir, ang, ang pag ay, ay uh, mabilis. Pero yung pag-alis mo, napakahirap. Kapag talagang aalis ka, mag -aawol, like nag-aawal ako, sir. So pag-aawal ko, sinabihan ako na pwede ka ba mag-infiltrate sa city government so that we can have a base for the government employees more than 4,000 sa city hall. And to move forward, yun pong rason, sir, hindi na po ako magtatago sa inyo. The best way out is to contact first, to have a contact person first, who would take care of you once you're out, di ba? Agree, agree po ako, Mr. Chair. That, that should be. Pero, Sir, dahil sa matagal na panahon kaming pinaniwala na hindi mapagkatiwalaan ng gobyerno, papatayin kami, nag-aarangan kami. Ang nangyari sa akin, Sir, I have a personal friendship with Secretary Raul Gonzalez. He was part then of the core group for the Era of Resign Movement. And pa pariyo kaming ilonggo. I was able to penetrate. In fact, sir, maglalahad na ako, sir, confession time na naman ito. When I was with the NPA, National Operational Command, when Secretary Raul Gonzalez, ito nakikinig lahat, was DOG Secretary, our backstop ID, ay WPP, Witness Protection Program, pero NPA, National Operational Command kami. Saan ko pa kinuha? Sa loob ng Padre Faura. Pero sa isang undersecretary niya, nandyan din siya. So, ganun kalalim po mag-infiltrate ang CPP. Hindi ko to sinabi noon 
nakuha na rito sa akin. When I go to the airport, ang ID ko WP. So, hindi alam ni Secretary Raul Gonzalez na ini-infiltrate nyo pala yung DOJ? Alam niya na NPA ako. Yeah, alam, alam niya dati ka NPA kasi sa kanya ka nag-seek ng sanctuary. Eh, Pero eh. hindi niya alam na infiltrator ka pala ng DOJ at the time. That was ang cover mo is nasa WPP ka. And, NPA talaga kami, sir. Pero that was 2006, eh. 2007. At the time, you were not yet cooperative yeah. sa government. Hindi pa po ako cooperative sa government. We were using the DOJ access yeah. because my personal friendship to Secretary Gonzalez then to get backstop ID and access to the programs of WPP to cover our operations. We were NPA kami. That's, bakit ko sinasabi ito? Kasi ganun po kami kalalim, sir, mag-infiltrate, magkukunwari, manlin lang, manloko ng mga tao. Even the government maluloko namin. What's the logic of that? Ganun po ang panuloko sa Congress. When Amihan, Noel, and me, and the rest, hundreds of us now, telling the, Cong the Senate, right before you, Mr. Chair, Mr. and the, the people, Mr. Senate President, na kami manuloko, totoo yun. Saan ka nakakita sa Pilipinas lang na ang Congress natin, may party group ang Communist Party sa loob. May sweldo pa at may pundo na 68 million per, per year each one of them. And then ngayon, hindi sila haharap dito sa amin para magkonfrontahan dahil iniiwas nila ang isyo. Dalhin na lang daw sa korte. Sa korte, iba ang rules of evidence. Dito sa Senate, as a public opinion, ito ang tamang korte pertaining to this kind of modus operandi. And we're thankful for this opportunity. Not only for you, Senator uh, Ping and uh, Senate President, but this is for the people. Na, lantara na ito. Uh, hindi ko na po sasabihin ang ibang infiltration operations namin. Uh, precisely po, kasi baka makalimutan po ninyo bakit ko nagagawa ko yon. I was part of the N2 of the NPA National Operational Command. My work is to infiltrate into the Philippine Navy. No. Uh, marami pa kaming ginawa na nanggagaling sa inyo po mismo. N2 is intelligence unit ng NPA. The NPA has N1, N2, N3, N4, N5, hanggang N6. N2 is intelligence. Intelligence unit ng NPA. Kaya, Pareho rin ng military. N1 is personnel. N1 is personnel and training. N3 is uh, operations. SOG. Yan ang dalawang taton dati na naka full-time na... So, ginagaya yung armed forces, yung yun structure. Yun ang tumira sa kay Quintanar N3 yun. Ready na ba si... Sino may sunod? Si... Ay, si sir. Si ano, sir? Uh, si... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Jan Perlade. Mr. Chair, gusto kong balikan... No, I'd like to reiterate, ano. It is unfortunate that those that we invited from the militant groups are not here. Kasi una dito sila... Mas malaya yung talakaya natin and they are here to rebut, to disagree, no? and to justify or to disprove. Yan ang, yan ang malungkot dito. Wala sila, uh, it's, it's actually their loss ano? because they chose not to be here. Sige, General Perlade. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, gusto kong balikan, sir, yung issue on uh, uh, these celebrities. Uh, kasi importante ito dahil alam ni Ka Eric ito na gamit na gamit yung celebrities because this is one way of uh, convincing the masses that they are winning. Actually, sinasabi nila, kita nyo, ito, may makasama na tayo mga artista. Kaya sumali na sa... Sandali ah, baka lang makalimutan ko. Tingnan mo lang kung tama itong uh, yung nakasulat dito sa aking uh, Senate Resolution. Yung isa sa mga wear asses. Facebook account mo ito, no? Whereas on October 21, 2020, Lieutenant General Antonio Parlade Jr. posted the following message on the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict Facebook page. Ito yung direct quote, ha? Let us not red tag Liza Soberano. It's not fair to her. She's merely supporting advocacy for women's rights. She has to be protected in the exercise of her rights. Is she an NPA? No. Of course not. Not yet. So let's help educate her and the other celebrity targets of malayang kilusan ng bagong kababaihan o makibaka, the underground mass organization hiding under Gabriela Women's Party. So, and so forth and so on. Ito yung medyo masamang parte na open to misinterpretation or, shall I say, for lack of a better word, exploitation. Sinabi mo kasi rito eh. So, Representative Arlene Brosas and Gabriela, shame on you if you haven't informed your recruits about your hidden violent agenda. 
Now, Gabriela is claiming that it is not an armed group, which you have just confirmed. So, why right here, but mo sinabang hidden, violent agenda, and they are not an armed group. Okay, to proceed. Liza Soberano, there's still a chance to abdicate that, referring to Gabriela Youth Group. If you don't, you will suffer the same fate. Ito binabanggit ni Senator Kiko kanina as Josephine Anna Lapira. Bakit mo dinugtungan pa ng ganun? I have to uh, cite examples to make them realize that the threat is real. That there are so many ins instances already. In fact, that's why I cited the, the incidents, September incidents, because it's recent. And I have to cite those just to give them uh, an idea. That why, what uh, an idea of these activists against the terrorists. So you know, Fuser, but, just, yeah, but your problem is it's subject to so many interpretations. It may sound like a threat coming from you. You see what I mean? Yes, sir. Yeah. Anyway, that's for future reference. Anyway, sir, I also uh, mentioned there Ella Colmenares because it's really true that Ella is a, an NPA. I never said that uh, Angel Luxin is an NPA. But ito yun. Ang, uh, ang statement nila yun, sinasabi niya na hindi raw siya NPA. I never said that uh, she is an NPA. Angel Luxin is an NPA. No, sir. I never said that uh, uh, Neri Colmenares is an NPA. No. Ang sabi ko, CPP, si Neri Colmenares. Those, those are two different things. So now, we have so many witnesses, actually, who can, who can testify that uh, Ella Colmenares was part of the underground. Uh, it's not only Eric who, who saw her. In fact, uh, Diyan po sa tanay ngayon, they're, they're there and they're ready to be interviewed. If we can call uh, Mirna Paray, who's a member of the... I'm glad you mentioned that uh, in, in your own words, that Angeloxin is not an NPA. You know, I, I'll make a disclosure. The, her fiancé, you see Neil Arce, is a family friend. And so, as a matter of fact, pag kinasal yung kukunin ako ni Nino. So, you know... I'm just making a disclosure. Mabuti yeah. na yung kwentas claras. And I'm glad that you mentioned that she is not an NPA. Yes, sir. They're not. And, and they're... I hope she's monitoring para malaman niya na sa iyo mismo nang galing na hindi siya NPA. And I think uh, she will feel relieved coming from you na talaga hindi siya NPA. Referring to Angel Oxin. Yes, okay. sir. But sana hindi na siya magsinungaling na si Ella Colmenares ay hindi NPA. Dahil talagang NPA si Ella Colmenares. Or she may not know that, and I'm trying. I'm not trying to defend her. Pero she may not know that, and you wouldn't know that for a fact. Na hindi niya alam or alam niya, hindi ba? I, I know that she knows. Okay, Sige, I'll give it to you. So anyway, sir, uh, we came here, we took our oath, and we're not going to say any lies here. And that's the reason why we wanted them to come here also, para sagutin yung mga yung mga tanong nila kung meron silang mga tanong. But, uh, sir, uh, not si Mirna ba yun, sasabi mo? Yes, sir. Si oh, Mirna kung pwede yung ma-invite okay. natin. Thank you, sir. Yes. Mr. Chairman, can yes, we Alex. present another former rebel who is a former Kamataan party list? Si Chen Chen Sabado. Yes po, uh, good afternoon po. Okay. So ako po si Ray Christian Sabado po, uh, former member po ng Kabataan Party List at former member din po ng uh, Anak Bayan Polytechnic University of the Philippines po. Hello. Po. Yeah, proceed, proceed. Tuloy. Sorry po. Di, ako po ay isang estudyante ng Polytechnic University of the Philippines sa uh, PUP Main sa Santa Mesa, Manila, kung saan uh, recruit po ako ng sandigan ng mag-aaral para Bayan, ano, isang po ng mga student council sa Polytechnic University of the Philippines po. Then, uh, August po, nagsimula yung 
uh, pagrekruta sa akin sa Sandigan ng Mag-aaral para sa Sambayanan noong August 2014. Then, Uh, October 2014 naman po ay na-recruit na po ako ng Kabataang Makabayan uh, or KM na same, uh, same student kung sino nag-recruit sa akin bilang isang student council ay naging uh, nag-recruit din sa akin bilang isang KM. Uh, after a month po, November 2014 ay tsaka na po ako isinapi sa anak bayan under po ng College of Accountancy and Finance at naging organizer po nito at tagapagsalita din po nung uh, College of Accountancy and Finance bilang uh, ako po ay isang student council. Uh, naging candidate member naman po ako nung, uh, ng Communist Party of the Philippines nung May 2014, May 5 to be exact, 2015 at uh, inilipat naman po ako ng organizing from college namin, which is the College of Accountancy and Finance sa Polytechnic University of the Philippines, ay nailipat po ako sa Anak Bayan University-wide Community uh, Committee Organizing na kung saan po uh, yung particular na recruit namin o in-organize namin sa community ay o sa labas ng PUP ay itong mga anak din po ng janitor sa loob ng PUP o anak ng mga manggagawa sa loob ng PUP at uh, itong mga informal settlers na naninirahan doon sa uh, vicinity o malapit sa uh, campus o sa university po namin. Uh, July 2015, 2016 naman po ay naging member po ako ng Kabataan Party List, College of Engineering and Architecture, uh, kung saan po ang in Uh, per, ang task ko po sa Kabataan Party List ng panahon na yon ay ako po yung uh, padepa person o nag ensure po ng pambansang demokratikong paaralan na makakapaglunsad ng mga pag-aaral sa ilalim ng mga members ng Kabataan Party List. Which is yung binibigay po namin mga pag-aaral ay mga nabanggit na rin po kanina itong maikling kurso ng Lipunan ng Trebolosyong Pilipino uh, andyan din po yung special na kursong masa ng mga, mang, ng mga magsasaka, ng mga kababaihan at ng mga kabataan. Andyan din po yung uh, araling aktivista na kung saan hinuhubog namin yung mga bagong members ng Kabataan Party List upang maging isang ganap na aktivista at uh, uh, isang uh, aktivista na bat batay doon sa mga pag-aaral na nakuha niya ay later on i -re recruit na rin po namin sa Kabataang Makabayan. After po noon, uh, January 2017 po yung naging assignment ko na po ay napagpasyaan ko po na umakyat sa uh, kanayunan o sa kabundukan na kung saan uh, bilang isang member ng New People's Army. January 2017 po ito, uh, January 8, 2017 to be exact ay nakarating po ako dito sa kabundukan ng Northern Samar at Naging deputy, ang first task ko po nung panahon na yon ay deputy political guide sa isang squad o sa, is, na, sa isang uh, larangang guerrilla na kilikilo sa isang platoon. Then, uh, April 2017 po ay naging finance officer ako ng platoon na kung saan ako ay naging political guide. After po ay July 2017, July 5, 2017 ay naging full uh, full member na po ako ng candidate uh, ng Communist Party of the Philippines. At the same time, ay binigyan din po ako ng mga gawain. Ito ay yung dep bilang isang deputy political instructor at the same time ay political guide uh, at isa pong member ng uh, KT nung sangay ng partido sa platoon or party branch sa loob ng platoon. Then March 2018 naman po ay naging ED uh, nakasama ko sa party group ng sub-regional committee na ED staff na kung saan yung particular task namin ay magbigay o maging isang machinery para sa pagbibigay ng mga pag-aaral sa mga members ng New People's Army at sa mga uh, basic masses na, o base, at sa mga basing masa na uh, nalulubugan ng aming unit. Naging vice, at is, uh, kasabay po nung pagiging ED staff ko, sa sa CPP ay vice squad leader din po ako sa formation ng platoon na kinabibilangan ko at January 2019 na nga po ay naging secretary na po ako ng party group ng sub-regional committee 
na i-distaff at uh, later on ay naging ED secretary nung January uh, nung January 2019 ay naging ED secretary din nung uh, party branch ng Platon na kinabibilangan ko at uh, nitong nitong 2019 August ay naging ED secretary naman ng isang front committee at the same time ay deputy secretary uh, doon sa nabanggit na uh, front committee sa front committee 2 ng SRC Emporium dito po sa first district sa part po ng first district ng Northern Samar at uh, politic, deputy political instruct, instructor din po nung platoon na kinabibilangan namin na apprehend po ako o na huli po ako ng 28th Infantry Battalion sa uh, uh, kabundukan po ng Barangay San Francisco Las Navas, Northern Samar na kung saan po ay uh, uh, naging binig binigyan po kami ng mga uh, pangalan para sa, aming, para sa kanilang kampanya o ginamit yung pagkahuli namin para sa kanilang kampanya at kami po yung tinatawag na Las Navas 3 na kung saan ay binabanggit na illegal daw po at tinorture na inaresto ng 28th Infantry Battalion. Ito po yung mga binanggit ng Kabataan Party List, ng uh, College Editors Guild of the Philippines, ng uh, Anak Bayan, Ligo Filipino Student, uh, at nagsagawa pa nga po sila ng mga kilos protesta sa Polytechnic University of the Philippines sa Tacloban uh, upang parayain daw po ako dahil illegal daw po ako na inaresto na isang researcher sa area ng Northern Samar. Hello? Na-torture ka ba? Po? Tanungin lang, na-torture ka ba talaga? Ah, hindi po. Actually, uh, sobrang trinato po kami dito sa 28th Infantry Battalion. Uh, tat tatlo po kasi kaming nahuli. Trinato po kami nung uh, 28th Infantry Battalion ng napaka-accommodating uh, po. Binigyan po nila kami ng uh, damit, binigyan po nila kami ng mga pagkain. At later on po, uh, kinabukasan din po ay turn over din kami sa uh, PNP para uh, uh, i-proseso po, idaan sa tamang proseso yung uh, pagkahuli sa amin. Kung saan, turn over po kami sa Northern Summer Provincial Police Office, doon po kami in-inquest at uh, pinatakbo po yung kaso na kung saan ay uh, na-dismiss po at, na at naka-enroll po ako ngayon doon sa uh, Witness Protection Program po. Sige. Salamat. Tuloy mo lang. Uh, na umalis ako, uh, nagsalita ako again sa CPPNPA hindi da yung binabang hindi dahil sa kung paano kami pinalabas o paano yung ipinapalabas ng mga legal front organization example in torture kundi nakita ko yung pagkakaiba nung itinuturo sa amin simula nung aktivista pa lang ako hanggang sa naging uh, hanggang sa naging NPA ako dahil yung kamulatan na yung namu, kinamulatan ko na pagtuturo sa amin ay ito yung tinotorture daw itong mga nauhuli hanggang sa umamin after, later on ay papatayin rin tapos andyan din po yung uh, binabanggit nila na wala namang ibang ginawa yung mga sundalo o walang alam yung mga sundalo kundi pumatay dun ko po nakita yung uh, pagkakaiba dahil habang nakakulong po ako dahil hindi nga po libre yung pagkain sa loob uh, sa lock up cell nung uh, uh, police office doon sa lock, lock up cell ay simula sa umaga breakfast uh, lunch and dinner po yung nagahatid po nung pagkain sa amin ay yung Philippine Army po mismo yung 803rd Brigade at andun din po yung uh, lahat ng pangailangan namin sa lock up cell katulad na lang po ng mga toiletries at karag karagdagan na damit, ay sila din po yung nagpo-provide. Uh, dagdag po dyan ay uh, sila po mismo yung nag-ensure na matulungan yung parents ko para makita. Yung parents ko po kasi ay nilapitan din ng Hands of Our Children, pero hindi po siya, hindi niya po pinaunlakan yung Hands of Our Children movement. Pero uh, dahil nakita nung nakita mismo nung uh, no nakita ko po mismo na kung paano pinur pinursige po 
nung o pinagtulungan ng Philippine Army at nung uh, PNP yung pagpunta at pagkonvince sa nanay ko para mabisita ako dito sa Northern Samar habang nakakulong po ako noong panahon na yon ay doon ko po nakita yung effort ng Philippine Army na hindi lang pagpatay ang alam ng mga sundalo at ng mga kapulisan na hindi lang uh, uh, pagtutorture yung alam ng mga uh, nabanggit kundi andoon yung makataong pagturing nila sa amin, yung makatao na uh, pagbibigay ng pangangailangan namin at kahit yung security ng parents ko habang nakakulong ako ng panahon na yun kasi uh, dumating po sa point na meron na Binabanggit na po ng nanay ko habang nasa phone call na meron daw pong mga tao doon sa labas ng bahay namin, mga nakalbonet na tumatambay sa tapat ng bahay namin. Uh, nung moment po na may mga ganong pangyayari ay yung kinoor, binanggit ko po agad doon sa uh, uh, provincial director na naka-area kung saan po ako nakakulong at at nabigyan naman po nung agarang aksyon, nagbigay, nag-provide po yung PNP noon nung uh, security doon sa lugar namin na kung saan nagtataka na nga po yung mga kapitbahay namin na kung bakit nga daw po napakarami ng, napakaraming mga pulis na umaaligid doon sa bahay namin. Kaya uh, doon ko po nakita kung bakit, kung bakit ano yung pinagkaiba ng PNP na binabanggit at ano yung pinagkaiba ng uh, Uh, Philippine Army na binabanggit sa amin. Kaya doon, yung moment po na yun yung nakapagpabago sa akin at talagang uh, buong-buo ay nagbigay ako ng pahayag ko na, uh, na pagtulong o pagsuporta doon sa pagsugpo ng uh, komunismo na umiiral o yung sa ideolohiya ng komunismo na kung saan ay uh, nakikita, nakita ko kung paano at, na, at naging... Uh, kasama ako sa proyekto na kung paano mag-organize dito sa mga dito sa mga barangay o barrio na pinapasok ng mga New People's Army kung paano yung kakainin na lang ng mga magsasaka ay ibibigay pa doon sa mga uh, nagpapakilalang hukbo ng mga may hirap. Kaya uh, sa ngayon po hanggang ngayon ay andun yung andun yung andun yung isa ako sa mga uh, kinatatakutan doon sa mga barangay na meron ng mga Merong nag, nag, nagbibigay ng mga statement yung mga tao sa mga barangay na napuntahan ko na if ever daw po ako makita doon sa mga barangay nila ay talagang uh, ambush yung gagawin, sa, yung gagawin nila sa akin na hindi nila papayagan na makapasok ako sa barangay. May mga threat na rin po, na, may mga threat na rin po doon sa buhay ko para lang uh, liquidate at hindi na makapag-share uh, pa doon sa iba pang mga magsasaka na kung ano nga ba talaga yung Uh, reality na nangyayari doon sa loob ng CPPNPA. Dagdag na rin po dyan, ay naka, yung isa pa pong nakapag-convince sa akin na umalis ay yung binabanggit na nga po na uh, violence against women na kung saan nakita ko po mismo kung paano yung process nila doon sa case ng uh, rape sa loob. Tulad nga po nang binabanggit, yung rape po kasing kaso ay Uh, kamatayan po yung katumbas niyan. Pero dito po, ako po mismo ay may kasama nung isang komite na kung saan nagde-decide kami doon sa isang uh, platoon leader ng isang unit ng NPA kung saan ay may rate na nangyari doon sa uh, unit namin. Pero hin matagal hanggang laylo awul na lang po yung platoon leader at hindi na po na desisyonan yung ganong kaso at dagdag pa po dyan ay yung mismong ipinaglalaban namin ng ayaw namin doon sa korupsyon uh, ay nakiki, nakita ko po mismo kung paanong umiral yung korupsyon doon sa lugar na doon sa unit namin at kung paano yung korupsyon ay uh, kung paano kinakamkam yung pera na dapat para sa mga tao doon sa barangay pero hindi naman talaga napupunta sa kanila. Kaya yun po yung isa din sa mga nakapag-bigay uh, o isa sa mga factor kung bakit napili ko din na umalis at napili ko na uh, magsalita laban doon sa CPPNTA. Right. Um, salamat. Unless uh, meron pa itakam <coughs> si Chairman. No? Uh, sa madaling salita sa narinig ko sa iyo 
um, in the media lingo. Ang ibig sabihin eh, mali ang press release. Apo. So yung mga, yung mga press release po, naglabas din po. Uh, Opo, actually nag-press release din po yung Kabataan Party List, yung Kadamay, yung Anak Bayan, League of Filipino Student, yung iba't iba pong mga progressive organizations, tinatawag nilang progressive organizations sila, ay nagbigay ng pahayag at pagsuporta para pa pakawalan daw po ako o uh, paalisin sa, o pakawalan mula doon sa NSPPO dahil hindi naman daw po ako NPA. Kaya... Uh, Nakakatawa na lang din pong isipin na may ganun na may ganun silang effort to the point na magsagawa pa sila ng rally para lang palabasin kaming tatlo na mga nahuli nung uh, 20th Infantry Battalion po. Sure, thank you. Um, so General Paglade and uh, perhaps uh, any one of the, the armed forces or the PNP. Ang narinig ko ang deduction na narinig ko sa uh, social media ngayon sa naririnig nila rito ngayon yung mga celebrities sila, wala silang hinalaman doon sa mga underground organization ang nangyayari, sila ay nagagamit upang makapag-recruit parang ganun ang dating ano? now um, mapag-usapan yung recruit paano bang Pa, pa, paano kayong nare-recruit muna? Nare-recruit kayo sa, sa front organization muna, di ba? Patulad ng kwento nyo kay Eric. Okay. So, ngayon. Ano pa? Tapos, later on, uh, through some machinations, you become a candidate for member of the CPP. Correct po, uh, Mr. President. Candidate muna kayo, di ba? Okay. Pero dadaan muna, Mr. President, dun sa underground organization na ang unang kinatarget yung leadership mismo ng open organization. Yan nga. So, yung front organization yung siya. Yung process. Yan. Tapos yun ang proseso. Pagpasok mo rin, mapunta ka ng CPP, um, uh, magiging candidate ka muna, tapos magiging full-pledged ka. Okay. Full-pledged full member ka. Full-pledged member Parang ka. probationary stage mo yung uh, candidate membership. Uh -huh. Titingnan nila kung qualified ka na maging cadre uh -huh. later or ang yung security and loyalty to the communist party mm. will be proven enough kaya nga so in the, in this process wala bang initiation yan ah hindi siya parang kagaya sa ordinary traditional fraternity recruitment ang initiation mo will be done doon sa tinatawag kanina ni secretary anyo na immersion so mm. magi-immerse ka mm. or magi-integrate ka sa mga gagawa magsasaka o mga area ng katutubo or urban poor kung ikaw ay kabataan estudyante Kasi sa CPP and PNDF po, the primary role of the Communist Party is to develop a very strong workers' movement in the urban area and a very strong peasant movement in the rural area. Ang kabataan estudyante po, si Mr. Senate President, sir, ay nare-recruit sila para pag, pag magbibigay ng malaking tulong sa propaganda. All right. Propaganda. So, ngayon, uh, sabi mo, doon din natetest ang loyalty before you become a full-fledged uh, CPP member. Okay, paano nila tinetest ng loyalty? Ang process niya, uh, may tinatawag po kami, uh, Mr. President, na talambuhay. Form 1, Form 2. Ang sinasabing talambuhay, ito yung narration ng iyong buhay mula doon sa open organization. Before ka i-recruit, -re i-interviewin ka ng kadre ng CPP. Nanamumuno din ng open organization, for example, in my case. I was the chairperson, provincial, and regional coordinator ng College Editors Guild of the Philippines. Pero kabataang makabayan din ako. Underground yun sa sektor ng kabataan. And CPP na rin ako, uh, Mr. Senate President, Mr. Chairman. Ang gagawin ko niyan, pag may target ako, like si Lady Desiree, kukunin ko pa, papakilapin ko siya ng Form 1. Ang tawag niyan, Talambuhay Form 1. Para yun sa recruitment sa underground. Doon ko makikita ang kanyang history at iba pa. May pa, parang Form 168 kung sa DepEd, no? <laughs> Sa tapos, pag nag party member target siya after six months to one year, mag-fill up siya again ng talambuhay Form 2. So may Form 1, may Form 2. Uh, with your, your respect, uh, Mr. Chair and Mr. Senate President, hindi po totoong walang program ang CPP sa showbiz industry, entertainment, musicians, and artists. Nakalimutan ko lang pong banggitin. Maybe in the next session we can have. May tinatawag pong underground groups sa hanay ng mga artista at mga manunulat at mga sa showbiz Ang tawag po nito ay ARMAS. 
artista at manunulat ng sambayanan. Ang open organization ay tinayo ng CPP para magkaroon ng recruitment ground para dito na hindi mahalata ay concerned artists of the Philippines at ang musicians and artists of the Philippines. Nabuo ito mainly mga middle 80s, yung musicians and artists uh, of the Philippines ay think nabuo sa panahon ng era pre-sign campaign. From that open organization and loose organization of showbiz personalities, entertainers, musicians, composer, compositor at mga artists, ay nabubuo ang underground organization, which is one of the founding member, members of the NDF, hindi ako magkakamali, uh, kasama sa Christians for National Liberation sa church, armas is for the showbiz industry and for the entertainment people, uh, not mainly for, to recruit them. I can mention kanina, Mr. Senate President, like Maita Gomez, Melia Sancho, and many, many of them. Uh, iwan ko po kasi yung iba dito, national art, national artist na ba sa dalawang director na magagaling ay membro po ng ARMAS. Hindi ko alam po na process sila sa Communist Party. Hindi ko na po pabanggitin. Pabanggitin kong pelikula nila, Ora Pro Nubis. Maynila, sa ko po ng Aguila. Walang Himala. They were part of a very long tradition of infiltration and recruitment into the showbiz personalities. At ang iba ay active pa, but they are not NPA right away. But they are supporting the NPA indirectly or directly. All right, then balik tayo ro sa NPA. Nag-member na ng CPP tapos naging NPA. Uh, sabi mo parang ibang klase yung initiation, hindi initiation kundi yung talambuhay 1, talambuhay 2. Uh, Tapos uh, di ko makuha eh kung paano yung sinasabi ninyo mapuprove ang loyalty. Parang medyo mahina eh. Ah, okay. Mahina para maprove ang loyalty. Sa yung loyalty... Magiging Paul Blades, ano ka? Eh, yung loyalty sa uh, Mr. Mr. President, Mr. Chair, doon yun sa pag-investigate sa iyo. Na hindi ka nagsinungaling sa iyong security background, sa iyong class origin, sa iyong historical background. Number two, yung loyalty mo, itetest ka doon sa number of years na ilalagi mo Kaya ang full membership sa panahon namin, matagal-tagal, eh, mahigit siyang taon. Pero dahil mabagal, ang recruitment, tinitingnan ka doon. Uh, alam ko yung dulo ng, uh, I may, may be surmising your, your position, Mr. Senate President. Pwede bang ang test mo sa loyalty ay sumama sa ambush? That can be possible. Kasi pag nag-immersion ka sa NPA, kahit hindi ka pa NPA, doon ka natin test. Sa na yan. Sa immersion, maare, that can be... Maare, maare. Okay. Immersion. Uh, did you still believe in God? Do they believe in God? Sir? You don't believe in God? You... A -a kami, sir? Okay. Hindi po pinag-uusapan sa CPP, NPA, NDF recruitment, lang na sa CPP kung ikaw naniniwala sa Diyos. Pero ang paniniwala nila, ang lahat ng bagay dapat na iniisip kung may material na basihan, kaya dialectical materialism. Kung hindi mo ma-prove na Diyos, may Diyos dahil walang material na batayan, huwag mong i-discuss yan. The discussion about God and religion is not so much discussed inside the Communist Party, although you are not also disallowed or prohibited to believe in your God. Pero kapag may inkwentro na po, kami po ay napapaganon din kapag may mga military operations at natakotin mm -hmm. po kami. So, ang, ang God po is not a center topic for the CPP. As much as possible, your religion and your belief in God shall not be part na makapagpigil ng iyong revolutionary uh, commitment at hindi makasagapal sa iyong trabaho. Okay lang yan kung may Diyos ka. Pero, uh, correctly, hindi po naniniwala na may Diyos kung hindi mo ma-prove, never discuss that. So, iniiwasan yan sa loob ng CPP. So, so wala, sa bahagi ko ba po, ako ay naging atheist? Walang, walang nagtatry na mag-prove. Eh, napakadaling i-prove na may Diyos eh. Kaya nga, so that, that's the way they think. Ay, ultimately, tama kami, Sir, Mr. President. Uh, logically, ang CPP, ang isang komunista, ay mahirap maniwala sa Diyos. Kaya mahirap magtiwala sa isang organisasyong walang sentro sa Diyos. Is it logic? Yeah, kaya nga. <laughs> yeah, tama, tama po kayo, Mr. President, on that, on that notion. And on that effect, kami ba po ay uh, umabot sa panahong hindi naniwala sa Diyos? Hindi naman po, pero nagduda kami sa Diyos. Doon po magsisimula. When you're recruited to the underground, into the CPP, Magsisimula kang magduda na may Diyos. Pero sabi mo nga, pagka sa encounter, you make the sign of the cross. Oh, patago lang. Ah. So, totoo pala yung kasabihan ah. na uh, wala raw mga atheist pag mamamatay na. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, anything more? Sige. Hindi, meron lang ka-clarify, ano? Yung term na sekretary o kalihim, 
sa CPP and PA, sa organization. Hindi ito yung common understanding ng mga tao na secretary. Pag sinabing secretary o kalihim, puno ito. Iyan ito yung iyan head. head. Okay. The word chairman is only, is only used to the party chairman. Yeah. The, the secretary or kalihim is the head of the party of unit. the unit or organ. Yeah. Any organ. Hindi po siya record keeper. Okay. <laughs> so you are about to say something. Yes, thank you po, Mr. Chair and Mr. Senate President. The urban mass movement operations in the infiltration, sir, extends beyond government offices and religious community. Uh, right now, sir, ang pinakamalaking infiltration ay nasa UN, United Nations, European Union, and in the Filipino communities. Sir, uh, in the last five years, may na-recover po na document, ang title niya ay Oplan Walibay. Oplan Walibay is an underground operations of the Communist Party designed to infiltrate the international community. One, to infiltrate the United Nations to weaken the position of our government at the international community. Two, to establish broadest network support among pro-communist, pro-socialist, anti-imperialist workers' groups and associations. Three, to infiltrate favorable international groups such as European Union. And fourth, ito minabanggit ni Senator Nia, ni Mr. Chair, and ni Karina, sir, to generate funds through infiltration of big NGO partnerships. And fifth, is to develop a very strong support among Filipino communities and expatriates, building the underground organizations of compatriot, supporting the NDF. That is why in Hong Kong, the United Nations, uh, sorry, the United Filipinos in Hong Kong, Migrante chapter, and in US, in the Europe, they are operating in seven global regions, all with central, uh, with CPP units, party committee, even in the US, sir. Napakalakas po ng CPP infiltration sa San Francisco, Los Angeles, sa New York, and even in Europe, and then sa other global regions. In the documents there na pinabasa sa amin ng mga kadre, recovered last 2018, that Oplan Walibay shows that the government is including, sorry sir, huh? the security sector in the Department of Foreign Affairs are blinded for so long of how the CPP exports infiltration operation and radicalization abroad. And ito ay unchallenged. Default po tayo, sir. This is a very serious problem. Kung kaya po mga report ng UN, mga rapporteurs na i-infiltrate po ito, na influence And ito po ay very seriously undertaken, similar to the infiltration of Congress and government offices. Ano, uh, Kay Eric, isang question lang. Ha? You have reached the point of no return. Sigurado yan. Yes, sir. Baka after two months, three months, one year, ando ka na naman sa underground. May, may lesson pa ako, sir. I will not be going the way of Adorma Wanay. And so with uh, Lady Miranda. Uh, Mr. Chair, papatayin na po nila kami pag nagtanda kami bumalik. Siguro ganun din sina kaamihan. Si Kamir na lahat. Senator, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Meron bang, is, meron bang, ano, meron bang instance na yung isang nagbalik loob sa gobyerno, bumalik ulit? Kung hindi po siya ma-expose at wala po siyang ginawang kagaya namin, pero kapag ikaw ay naugnayan ng government, your worth and value to the revolutionary movement or the CPP and PNDF lessens, and you are be suspected again. If I were a kalihim, no, I would definitely retreat you back and reproject you to be our infiltrator. But that's me. Uh, pwede mangyari po yan, sir. Kaya yun ang naging basis ng CPP Central Committee sa pag-liquidate at pag-assassinate kay Quintanar sa Katay Tabara. They were viewed as that way. Hindi, iba naman yung kina, ano, eh, yun, mga rejection is yun eh. Ah, uh, part time, sir. Part time, yeah. eh, because Kasi, yung uh, nag-liquid sa Katay, di ba, yung rapier mess. Kaya ni isa, isa yan eh. Yes, sir. Uh, so, mayroon ba sir pagkakataon na nahuli pero bumalik? Uh, kung ikaw po ay kategorya siguro ng mga chamson, pwede sir. Pero pag mga ordinary categories sa mga kadre na hindi mga kategorya ng mag-asawang chamson, mahirap mo kunin ang uh, tiwala kagad ng partido. There will be at the so-called, kung sa atin sir may custodial debriefing or debriefing process, sa kanila there will be cooling and observation period. Ilalagay ka sa isang gawain na obserbahan kanila bago ka bumalik sa gawain dati muna po. Mr. Chairman, hindi nila maiisip yung naiisip mo dahil hindi naman sila naging official ng MISG. Bo 
Baka pwede mo sabihin, hindi sila nag-CPNP. <laughs> Diyan, Fernando. Mr. Chair, uh, gusto kong balikan yung tanong niyo kanina about the test, ultimate test, kung ikaw ay pwede nga mag-CPP. And I hope uh, Eric will uh, corroborate my... Well, as of now, ano ko lang, sir, haka-haka ka lang ito. But based on the revelations of former rebels, there's one common denominator. It's really lying. Lying ang isang na-perfect nila para labanan lahat ng narrative ng gobyerno. So, balikan ko, sir, yung kwento tungkol dito ka Ella Colmenares because this is very important, especially that we are talking of a celebrity. Ang celebrity, sir, ang daming na aapit niyan and we have to establish or we have to uh, debunk her claims na porke ikaw ay isang artista, palagi ka na lang tama. Porke ikaw ay si Darna, hindi ka na pwedeng magsinawaling. So gusto kong, uh, kung pwede sir, pakinggan natin yung, uh, yung testimony nitong tatlong uh, members ng main regional guerrilla unit dyan sa Quezon na nakasama nito ni Ella Colmenares just to put an end to that issue whether Ella Colmenares, kapatid ni Angel Luxin, ay isang NPA or not. So, may we have the, the yes. video of... Yeah, please proceed. Mga koda lang, sir, ang gagamitin nila kasi there are still active uh, operations uh, where this people... I would just like to inform you na in case the militant groups who failed to appear today in today's hearing, kung atin sila sa next thing, I'll give them the same opportunity. Eh. Fair is fair. Okay? And uh, it's up to you if you're willing to attend alongside yung mga ma kung darating sila. It's, it's all up to you, but we're going to, uh, to invite you nevertheless to attend that same hearing in case Mr. they'll be here. If okay. we get the invitation, Mr. Chair, uh, we will prepare immediately. Sige, okay. Webex sir, naka-Webex sila. They are on standby. Kung meron tayo mga tanong, they're in Tanay right now. Can our host uh, check the, the login? Yeah, kung nakalag in sila, start video na, end audio. While waiting, sir, uh, let me just explain that there are so many of them waiting to be interviewed. They're all over the country. There are nine in, uh, uh, six in uh, Tanay. Uh, sorry, six in uh, Bicol. There are 12 in, uh, in uh, Tanay. Nandito na ata sila, sir. Uh, Central Quezon sa bilang uh, kabataang mga bayan. 1990, 1990 na uh, hindi ganun pa-active ang kilos militar ng mga naong ito sa aming lugar. Uh, halos sa amin na tumitira ang mga kasama, ang mga ubo. Pagmulat pa lang ang aming mata, nandiyan sila sa aming harapan. Doon sila kumakain, maglalaba. Kung mga yung madali na sa aking na maorganisa, dahil araw-araw, yun ang naririnig ko. At bukod pa doon sa aking mga magulang, ay kasama sa unit sa Hay Pambaryo. Nasa parehas ang aking mga magulang ay membro ng Sangay 
na na-organize rin nila doon sa aming baryo. Ako bilang kabataan, naging grupong pang-organisa, itinayo bilang pag-grupong pang-organisa sa baryo, na nagpalawak ng uh, organization ng kabataan sa aming lugar. Saka sana po, target namin noong pagpalawakin ng mga kabataan, uh, para pagkaroon ng uh, pinang makakilala o kaya maintindihan ng, ng gobyerno kung anong pangangailangan namin bilang mga kabataan sa ganong libid na lugar. Ang aming mga pangangailangan, pangangailangan ito ay edukasyon, eskwelahan, walang makayos yung eskwelahan, walang, walang medikal, may health center, wala sa aming lugar. Doon kami di, ano eh, binayo. Kung baga doon kami uh, binugbog ng propaganda ng mga kasama, dahil totoong yun talaga ang nararanasan namin ng panahon yun. Kaya bilang ako na nakaranas ng ganong sitwasyon, uh, nahikayat ako na um, buuhin bilang sa isang grupo na nagkumpisa sa ilang member lamang. Uh, ako ang itinayong bilang grupo pang organisa na ito ay naparami ko sa iba't ibang sityo ng aming lugar. Na yung, na yung isa ang layunin, palawakin ang gratis ng masa, umulat ang, ano, ang pangangailangan ng mga, mga kabataan sa ganong klaseng lugar na napakalayo sa kabihas na. Nung pang ako, dahil ako elementary pa nung time na yun, naaaral ako, eh, sa mga kasama, parang normal na sa kanila. Normal na rin doon sa aming lugar kasi na may makitang may bitbit na armas kahit ang mga kabataan. Ako ay eh, Nung time na nung nag-aaral bilang estudyante, pumupunta sa school namin ang mga kasama, bitbit ang armas, ibinibigay sa akin na hinihintay ako sa aking paglabas at walahan. At upang isama ako sa pagpapaganda, pag-ikayat, pagbibigay ng pag-aaral sa mga kabataan at mga kababaihan. Doon lumikot ang, ang aking kabataan ng panahon yun, na kung bakit naman ako ay napapuntay sa edad na labing apat taong gulang dahil ang aking teacher ay merong karelasyong militar. Isinumbong ako ng aking guro sa militar na ako ay membro ng CPTNP dyan ng panahon yun. Nung time naman ako ay isinumbong sa, sa militar ng aking guro, wala ako. The, the audio is uh, out. Sir Chair, uh, mukhang nawala yung signal. But uh, maybe, the, maybe we can clarify to our resource persons yung tanong kanina, whether or not Ella Colmenares was an NPA kasi itong tatlo na ito sir puro yan members ng main regional guerrilla unit isang unit na nakasama ng unit ni uh, ni Ella Colmenares so pwede pong uh, resource persons kung pwede pakikwento po ito para matulukan na itong issue na ito thank you Alex uh, Mr. Chairman uh, uh, I'd like to uh, with the audience of uh, General Parlade, uh, 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 represent again uh, uh, oh. uh, uh, on the issue of uh, of uh, involvement of prominent personalities because she personally has a experience in meeting. Uh, underground meeting with uh, current congressmen, uh, sitting congressmen, uh, representatives now, and 
I would like uh, her to share that testimony to the chairman because uh, they all claim they are not member, but she can attest personally. Yes, yes, sir. Sige. Good afternoon po ulit. Uh, share ko lang po yung isang pangyayari na nagkasama po kami ni, ni Representative Sarah Elago po sa isang meeting sa College of Law sa UP Diliman, Quezon City po. Noong 2013, panahon po yun na mag, magkakaroon ng nomination for the Representative of Kabataan Party List for 2013 election. Uh, La, uh, isa po ako sa pinadala ng Central Luzon noon para dumalo doon sa pulong na gaganapin para palabasin na legal talaga ang Kabataan Party List. Pero sa totoo po, lahat po kami na mga dumalo doon is mga KMK Dar, mga CPP members na kami po yung kumakatawan sa bawat mga regional youth sector po na naka-under sa Regional Urban Committee ng CPP sa region. Ganyan po. Uh, NUSP pa po siya that time, si, si Representative Sara Elago. At ang nominee pa po noon sa pagkakatanda ko, hindi pa si Terry Ridon dapat eh. Si Ben Sertisosto pa po, ang anak bayan chair ng anak bayan national that time. Siya po dapat ang papalit kay Mong Palatino bilang first nominee ng Kabataan Party List. Kaya lang po, uh, dahil naghabol ulit yung Communist Party, dahil sabi nga nila, hindi pang kongreso si Vencer Cruces Tomo, kundi pang lansangan siya. Dahil mawawalan ng malakas na boses at matapang na muka ang kilosang kabataan sa kalunsuran pag ilalagay sa loob ng kongreso si Vencer Cruces Tomo. Paano mo nalaman ito? Nandun po kasi ako. Nung pilgo-usapan yun? Yes po. Nung na-desisyon na nila na hindi po pwede yung isa kasi panlansangan. Opo, kasi po ibinaba po yun ng party sa bawat region. Uh, nagbaba po yung uh, Central Committee ng memo. Tapos binaba po yun sa mga regional party committee hanggang po sa pinakamababang party branch at party group po. Eh, yung anak bayan po kasi merong party group po yan sa loob. Kasama po ako doon bilang KMK Dar po. Dahil po 16 years old pa lang po ako that time, 2013, Uh, isa po ako sa tinatawag na Youth Communist League. Kumbaga, KMK there po, na pagtungtong ng 18, full-fledged member na po ako ng Communist Party of the Philippines. Kaya, uh, so, ano, Paano sinagawa yun? yun? In-announce openly? Hindi po. Uh, ano po yun? Underground meeting po yun. Hindi po yun publicly. No, no. Na openly, I mean, sa inyo. Yes, Open sa inyong grupo. Nandiyan kayo, no? sinasabi na hindi po pwede itong si... Resource mo ba yan? Yes po. Uh, ibinababa po yung memo sa amin. Kung memo baga, lang ito. Hindi ito yung verbal na announcement. Opo. Memo po talaga ito ng party. Magpapataw na pinatawag po kami ng mga collective po namin. Binaba po hindi ito. Hindi ba ba na ba yung memo na yun? Wala po kasi po ano po yung internal documents po. Hindi po kami binibigyan. Basta basta nyo. Uh, uh, mga sino kalihim nung, po yung nagtatawag. Sino nangangalaga ng mga dokumento na yun? Mr. Chair, that is one aspect that the government finds it very hard to file cases legally in court. Because there is the nature of compartmentalization, strict code system, and the once you ask questions pertaining to violations done sa security protocols, you will be suspected as a spy. Kaya iniwasan po namin yan. If you're not entitled and allowed to hold documents, magpagdududahan ka po kapag nagkuha ka ng dokumento. Meron kayong uh, document security? Very, very, ano yan, very strict. And then we do not ask uh, permanent uh, questions related to names, circumstances unless you are a higher organ. If you belong to a higher organ, like Regional Party Committee, you will be entitled to know down below. But who's keeping all the records? The, uh, the, there is a, the person known as uh, Deputy for Organization. Deputy and of course, for Kalihim. Uh, deputy, uh, Pangalawang Kalihim. Pangalawang Kalihim. Uh, for Organization. Siya yung caretaker. Siya yung party officer for personal records, finance, uh, security. Siya lang ang merong access yan. As fast as possible sa computer files. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. According to level, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Yeah. Senate President, according to, to, ka, pababa lang. according to security clearance and, clearance and authority level. So if regional party committee down the line, but uh, it, it's not up. If you're real front level or district level, you cannot have security access up. And the security sector has not gotten hold of any similar document? Uh, related to this testimony? Yeah. 
Yeah, yung sa sabi niyang dokumento na may mong binababa, because that, that's material, and that's material evidence. If you don't have that, then you don't have any evidence. Di ba? Aside, of course, from testimonial uh, or testimonies, testimonial evidence. Pero kung yung testimonial evidence will be supported by the documentary evidence, meaning probably yung memo na binababa, if you have not gotten hold of that document, then you cannot prove, no? at least you cannot uh, convince the court na meron talagang link between the party list groups and the CPP. In, the, in that note of, the Mr. Cha of Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Senator uh, Ping Laksan and Mr. Senate President, we have documents, uh, I think, hindi lang kaya niya present dito, uh, I will give a hint. What kind of documents? Central Committee document order related to the campaign for implementation of party list. Yes. You have that? We have. Uh, captured enemy materials ito during encounters. Uh, with the why MPP. can't you share that with the committee? Or why can't you discuss it openly? Why? Uh, it, it needs clearance, uh, Mr. Uh, clearance from, from the whom? Security clearance from the armed forces because they have to process that first. If well, you, will, you will ask me the document I have this seen, a, yes. This is a vital piece of, uh, of evidence. Why keep it from, you know? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, actually, we have declassified a lot of uh, documents. Uh, maybe for this one, uh, if we can also do the same. Just wondering why you will treat that as a classified document. Why uh, not put it into good use? Uh, that was actually a... That could actually convince us, the Senate yes, President, myself, yes. and the other senators, that what you're saying all along, totoo. Yes, sir. Di ba? Uh, Kasi as of now, talagang puro words yung narinig natin, testimonies. Of course, I'm not saying that we're doubting them because galing sila sa loob. Pero, di ba, what more could convince us kung merong document that could buttress, di ba, yung testimonies na pinapahayag dito. Yes, sir. We'll, uh, sir, if I may, with the chair. We will, we will. Mr. Chairman, uh, we, we uh, have the document. I am yes, very and sure. And even, must in the form of submission to the committee. Anyway, a security clearance namin, mataas eh. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mga senador. We will uh, discuss that and I'm sure the outcome would be, we will submit it to you uh, if required. We will submit the document if required. Kasi nga, ang challenge, yeah. as contained in the letter and even in media, and challenge prove <laughs> you you provide the document the, the evidence that would show that yung mga party list, yung mga legal fronts ay eh, talagang affiliated or under ng uh, in, ng CPP at least no? okay. yeah the, the, the I, I affirm sir Mr. Uh, Chair Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair we affirm the documents that you are pertaining to come from the central it's a national party list consultation held in 2018. And the document would directly link the party list groups to the CPP. Because it's a, it's a document right, so of the CPP uh, coming from their own laptop from the leaders. Yeah. yeah, so please uh, submit to the Committee on National Defense Secretaries. We will do that, uh, Mr. Right. President. We'll do yes, sir. Uh, subject to the forensic uh, preservation and... Uh, just some advice to the sources so that we will not uh, compromise them. Yeah. We will uh, comply, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. What else? <laughs> Kaya siguro kayo natatalo. Yung mga importante dokumento, tinatago nyo pa. Uh, actually, sir, that's the lesson we learned uh, for so many years. The intelligence community has been keeping unless it is an ongoing intelligence project. Yes, sir. But since it's out in the open anyway, na bangita ni ka Eric, there's no more reason to keep it uh, classified. These are recovered. Uh, actually. Yeah, I know. Yes, sir. How about the chain of custody? Uh, that is well established. One, one, well, that is one actually of the problems or uh, on the legal uh, aspect on the chain of custody because. Uh, uh, Baka naman, some of the procedures were not, were not uh, followed before. Some of the documents. Baka illegally obtained yan, Alex. Baka hinak nyo lang. So, kayo pa makasuhan under the... 
uh, RA for Australia. Yes, right. <laughs> it's a it's a really a challenge, sir, in the between the investigation. Yeah, whom we covered in a uh, in a raid covered by search warrant. Well, that's oh, evidence. Yes, sir. Diba? Covered in search warrant or kung nakuha nyo by virtue of a court authorization applied by any of the uh, units ng armed forces or the PNP, then it's valid. Unless ongoing pa yung monitoring ninyo. Some are over the court authorization. through special projects which of course uh, will put the access agent in jeopardy if we reveal. So that's why there are still some information that may not be yeah, understand, sir. Yes, Ed. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would just like to share my experience as an intelligence officer. Uh, we have a lot of uh, captured documents, but these documents are actually unsigned or sometimes signed under pseudonym. But they are legal documents being followed by by uh, the party. Talagang hanggang pagbaba ng party groups, ito yung mga document like, for example, uh, documents issued by uh, uh, Julio Ceron, uh, the one who replaced Benito Champion after his capture, uh, kung paano magbuo uh, ng mga chapter ng makabayan. And these are documents that are being followed. And we will talk among ourselves how to submit these documents to, to, to your committee, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Because that's the essence of the hearing this morning. <laughs> See my point? Mr. Chairman, uh, we have learned uh, some lessons there. Uh, there is now a better tendency to share information rather than to keep the information to ourselves. Pagka kasi nabilasa yung information, it becomes useless. Yeah. And uh, our, inform our information campaign is actually our way of uh, saying that uh, we are now ready to come up with the, with evidences that are with us. Mr. Chairman, well, uh, also connected to that uh, so that uh, everything will be transparent. There was a, um, a Jeffrey Sellis that uh, used to be a spokesman for Mayor Jed Babilo. You, do you know him, uh, Kairi? I am the sp I was the spokesman of Mayor Jed Mabilog, and I was also mentioned in the narcolis of the president. But I can explain if you will allow me. You were in the list of a narco narcolis ni president Duterte. In 2016, because of uh, circumstances. Why? Why? Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Go president, ahead, uh, I was expecting for you to ask that, as if I was already expecting that you assume that you already know about me. Since hindi pa pala ninyo yan nalalaman, ako na ngayon ang harap sa buong bayan and the Senate. My inclusion to the narco list to the President in 2016 does not negate all the truthful circumstances related to my involvement with the CPP and PNP. That's number one. Number two, my inclusion to the narco list was part of a government project. And that circumstances emanated from my being part of an interoperative. Matagal pa ako naging interoperative ng NPA. Pwede ba dito yun? Lahat i-discuss? Baka marami kasing tatamaan dito pag yun ang anggulo natin. I was included in that list because it was part of a government project para lumansag at lansagin ang sindikato ng droga sa Iloilosi. It should not come out instead. But why did I de decided to take the risk to face the Senate in the entire world? Kasi po sinunog ako ng mga kasama ko that the source of ntfl and the source of General Parlade is an Arcolis uh, personality mentioned by the President. Kaya nga ako ay Eric Almendras sa matagal na panahon. I use the cover kasi po I am working in many instances in covert operations. At kasama po yan Hindi ko alam kung dito yan, but the inclusion to the list, the Director General... I, I cannot yet reconcile. Ano? Inclusion sa narco list, anong kinalaman doon sa movement? Ah, wala na. Wala na ako sa movement nang nandun ako. Okay. Wala ka na nga, pero bakit ka kailangan isama sa narco list? Ah, okay. Anong cover ang, uh, 
ang pinoporso mo, pinoporso nila ng gobyerno para sa sarili, para sa'yo, para isama ka sa narcolist. E eh, kung okay. natokhan ka. Okay. Yung point po, sir, uh, direktahin ko na po, nag-infiltrate pa po ng drugs. Not related. Kaya, kaya, kaya sir, buhay ng pamilya ko ngayon na nakataya kapag yan ay kakalkalin. Pero bakit lumabas yan? Sinunog po ako ng CPP and PNDF to discredit me and prevent me from coming out. Hoping that they can prevent me to testify all these things. Because matatakot ako. Sabi ko, no. And I think... And your handler was what you need. Never mind the name. Nika. Idea. Nika. Nika po, sir. Why? Is Nika involved in uh, drug operations? You can ask the Director General, sir. Ay, umalis eh. May <laughs> CRS, sir. <laughs> and, and I request, sir, kung mga detalye itong call dyan, sir. Well, if I were to assume, ang assumption ko rito, Nika has been, or had been coordinating with PIDEA or DDP. PIDEA, particularly. Kasi without coordination with PIDEA, tas pinroject nyo ito, nasama sa narcolist, nag-project kayo sa... I'm just wondering, bakit ni ka papasok sa... Of course, all-encompassing naman yung intelligence work niyo, di ba? Kaya di confirm what he said, that the that his handler, yung project uh, handler ni ka. Kasi lumayo na eh. This is a uh, ISO, pagkatapos na haluan na ng drugs. Uh, the, the, actually, sir, may, we have partners with the AFP. You don't have to answer, ah? Yes, sir. Is that inclusion or the project part of the cover-up para ma-protection na si Eric? Uh, Is no, it the other way around? Or the other way around. You really protected him for a particular uh, intelligence project? It's the, 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 when the president took over, sir, his priority is drugs. Uh, that's why it's really drugs, uh, illegal drugs. But you've never been an addict? No, sir. Well, how could you pass off as a, uh, as a drug? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chair and uh, Senate President, kung gusto niyo na pong lantaran dito, personal po kami magkakilala ni Boyd o Dikta ng maliliit pa kami. I, I, I grew up in Hilero City. The, the Dikta group is the, per, the particular. Yeah. Pinapatay yeah. sa ano. The project is about them. Uh, oh. Hindi ko po isasabi yung buong project na yun kasi maraming madadamay dito ng mga para. Okay. So the, it, was, it was blown out accidentally, Mr. Chair and Senate President. The NPA, no? ay nasa na, may tawag ni Pangulong Duterte ang pangalan ko sa oh, pero bihira lang yung nakakahawak ng narcolist ay hindi sir ito sa public uh, pronounced with the president ah okay August 2016 ang buhay mo igalis <laughs> no, baka kung saan pa tayo mapunta sir ma'am maraming witness, uh, may stand by sila. But, yeah, uh, we can save it for later. But we can... Uh, anyway, we're just hoping that those who were invited today will appear in the next hearing. At least si Congressman Colmenares committed to appear in the next hearing because ang kanyang number one reason, he wanted to spend undas with the family and is uh, out of Metro Manila. So, and the others, I don't know. Maybe he can convince them to attend because in fairness to them and i promised and i promised them right here openly that i will give them the same opportunity the same time the same space that the committee has given you today you know as yours may be ko sa kanila sir chairman may nagpadala po ng picture sa amin nasa quezon city sir ah meron pa ah uh, nandito na si mr mr colmenares nasa quezon city may nag may nagmagandang log na nagbigay ng picture sa amin <laughs> and let him spend uh, on dust with the family. Oh, okay, okay lang. Baka, baka nandiyan ang kanyang mahal na sa buhay na namatay. Tama rin naman siya. Di, uh, we can respect that. Pero ba, sarado yung cementerio, di ba? 
sa IATF. Okay lang. Uh, anyway, maka, sige, let's gusto niyang umatras, eh, hindi kami <laughs> aatras. Well, never mind that. That's off the record. <laughs> so we will suspend the hearing uh, today, this afternoon, and we'll just notify you when uh, the hearing will be resumed. Is that fair? Is that okay? Mr. Yes, Chairman. Uh... So yung mga busy, sina Secretary Anyo, sobrang busy itong mga taon po. Pwede na kayong mag-skip, but uh, we need at least the major personalities here. Of course, Secretary Speron cannot be excused because he's the main man here. <laughs> uh, and Mika also. In fact, uh, we will thank you for uh, inviting us again, uh, if you would. Yeah, we will. Uh, this is our fight. NTF uh, LCAP was designed for this. So, darating po kami, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very Maraming much. So, po sa mga sumabaybay, uh, makikita namin, ang daming nagte-text po, uh, live. Sinundan talaga ito. Baka naman puro retired officers yung nagte-text sa'yo. <laughs> Hindi po, mga taga, ano, mga taga Mindanao, uh, nakikita ko lang sa mga, ano, napakarami. Mga fans niya, mihan. <laughs> Okay. So, with that, ako, meron din ako stories to share eh. Yung sarili ko experience when I was still uh, in the previous life ko. But anyway, uh, there's time for that. So, okay. This uh, hearing is uh, suspended. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.